I need some inspiration. Let's go get it. One of the things you got to do is you got to celebrate your successes along the way. All those small victories, all those wins. And I'm out here to do that. Get my feet wet. Blessed to be where I'm at. You know, I used to live in my car and I used to come here and be in that parking lot over here. And I used to wish I was in the spot that I'm in to this day. And I'm not where I really want to be right now. I'm definitely blessed and fortunate to be where I am. But I would say about four years ago, I wish I was doing what I'm doing today. And that's a victory, man. What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back. Back in here with another YouTube live stream. Shout out to the Coach Gang. And that's you. For being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. And welcome to The Wake Up Show. Part of the Free Agent Lifestyle Podcast here on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. You in here with the Bruce Wayne of this ish. The King of Kings, the King of Content, and the Speaker of Truth, yours truly. The notorious one, new, 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 new a.k.a. Mr. Coach Alini, better known as the prognosticator, Coach Adamus. And you're in the desert storm bunker with none other than EWF. That is every woman's fantasy, also known as the whole effing show. Better known as the Morpheus of the mating matrix, the chocolatey Confucius, Gregorio Greybeard, the Black Moses, the deliverer, the undebatable. The unbinder, the undisputed best edutainment here on YouTube. And you also got to know that I'm the CEO, nigga, row of Fixes Binds LLC. Better known as the 10 time demonetized champion of the world. CGAC got a lot the 10 time demonetized champion of YouTube. And we're going to tell you why Mr. Third Leg Greg and Senior No Trabajo is back. New, 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 new world. We're going to tell you why. Shout out to you, man. The King of Kings is back. But anyway, we got a great show for you today. The Simp Epidemic. Why men should not. And this, we're going to go back to the Bible for this one. A lot of y'all this has got to go to the Bible. Why men should not work that hard to get Women, all right, this is going to be one of these things. We tell you, I know I think uh, that we were going we're gonna to talk about an interesting development that I just heard about from one Rolo Tomasi, all right, and he's talking about this. It's been making the rounds around social media about Fresh and Fit and Andrew Tate and others in this sphere, probably including myself, that a lot of us have been trying to tell men to try to better themselves, be the best version of yourself, and so forth and so on, and we've been targeted. We've been targeted. We've been targeted by the usual suspects, and this should not come as a surprise. But one of the reasons why is because we're telling men not to be part and partial of the simp epidemic. Yes, indeed. We're telling you to not be part and partial of the simp epidemic. 
We're telling men to clean themselves up, get themselves better for the most part. I know there's some entertainment and some debauchery along with it. And yes, is it a perfect message? Well, not everybody can be perfect. Not everybody can be CGA. So everybody's message is, is not really perfect. But at the same time, there's some men out here, they want you to be misguided and undecided and under the leadership of the gynocracy, under the leadership of people who are mis- they're lost, confused, misguided, and undecided about everything they want to do. You see, Destiny out here was cheerleading for the gynocracy, cheerleading, cheerleading against the red pill. He was on a one-man mission to destroy, and he got his ass in a bind itself. Yes, in a bind. he got his ass in a bind. That's because you put your leadership in the hands of the fallible, the foolish, right? The misguided, the undecided, the headed nowhere. They don't know where they're going. They're loyal to their feelings. And he lost out on a really pencil neck geek, if you will. He, he lost out to a pencil neck geek. But we got to understand where to put our strength. And um, a lot of people here are trying to find their way in this world. And a lot of men are finding that women is the easiest path to validating themselves. Yes. Yes. Women are the easiest path to validating yourself. Forget hard work. Nah, the white man holding you back, but not against these hoes. See, they know they can't overcome that. That takes true, it takes true strength. That takes true ingenuity. That takes true dedication and commitment. Nah, don't start no business. Nah, don't be no nine to fiver. Take the shortcuts. Pimp these hoes or live off an older woman. O older woman's gonna buy you a PS5 or not an older woman, a fat woman. <laughs> See, the weakest vessels out here, and I call them the simps, these men can only achieve one thing, and that is their validity through women, right? They're going to validate themselves through women. But I think that is the shortest cut in life. Obviously, obviously, many men are having trouble with this. And you might even run up on some of these guys in your show. They might have a show, or they might be in the comment section. And they may tell you, your worth is wrapped up in women. But I'm going to tell you, that is a foolish position to put yourself in. And we're going to talk about why that is later on in the show. I'm going to show you examples of why that is later on in the show. All right. We also got Straggle and Sniggle Theater coming up. We also have why when a woman says you're not ugly, you're just poor. And she's talking to women. But really, is she only talking to women? All right. She's talking to women. There's several women here that are going to say we're not ugly. We were just poor. And some of you men are in that same position too. You're not ugly. You're just poor. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not rich either. So we're going to talk about that as well. We have Elon Musk wrapped up in a ridiculous custody battle. We're going to talk about that for the men wrapped up in custody battles. Henry Resilience probably here and he's still going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I get it. But custody battles, you're not immune to it. Even Elon Musk is going through a custody battle, and it's ugly. We're going to talk about that. Why men are frustrated out here. There's some frustrated men we're going to talk about here because there's some sucker for love ninjas out here. There's some sucker for love ninjas, and there's some sucker MCs. Shout out to the sucker MCs out here. All right, there was a sucker MC in here yesterday. I had to finally lay him down. All right, because, you know, they were trying to distract the show. All right, and it says right here, don't give women your energy don't give women your energy right you, they have to earn it and i find that you know the simp epidemic is often wrapped up in this one thing men give 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 something that they really don't give back in return the roi is not there we have a man that's going to talk about that later okay and then you give your energy you give your money you give and then you don't expect anything in return you get a pat on the head and you get frustrated men are frustrated out here okay so do me a favor do me a favor. <laughs> so, Maury's in the building. No truer words have been spoken. You're not ugly. You're just poor. Okay. A woman's going to tell women you're not ugly. You're just poor. Okay. All right. But, but she might literally be talking to men. But is it, is it only the man? Is it only the money? Are you mad about the money? All right. Shout out to Deion Sanders. Anyway, to contribute to today's show, dollar sign, the notorious CGA on the cash app, Venmo, Coach Greg Adams TV, PayPal. It's paypal.me backslash Coach Greg Adams. And that be pinned to the top of the live chat on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel, or it will 
and you can super chat on the notorious new 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 world cga order. channel all right um yeah let me do this i gotta type something in i gotta type something in but i want you to understand that you, you won the race all right shout out to uh eddie murphy eddie murphy he's probably coach gang yang coach gang yang eddie murphy <laughs> I, I, I wish eddie murphy was coach gang gang all right, but uh, we know uh, some big-time comedians are Coach Gang Yang. They watching me at home. All right, they watching the replay right now. Hold on for a second. I have to see. All right, but we got, we got some major A-list celebrities that are Coach Gang Yang in the building. We got to give you yeah, shout out to y'all. Yang. Maybe Eddie Murphy watches, but Eddie Murphy once had this line. We got to win this race where he's talking about Elvis. But you won the race, Ninja. All right, you can really take this life for granted or you can actually get the best out of it that you possibly can because you ain't coming back, you bitch ass bitches. Mm. None of y'all coming back. I really, you know, miserable people. I call them pity parties of one. Hey, your table's ready, pity party of one. We have a lot of pitiful people here. We have a lot of people that don't know what to do with their time. There's a lot of time and y'all waste it. But there's a lot of people that really don't know what to do with their life. There's a lot of people that really don't want to be here. They are a waste of space. You know what I mean? They just waste in space. They waste an opportunity. You know how many people, uh, you know how many people could have born, be born in your place, but you take life for granted. And you walk around with that cloud above your head. You're an Eeyore. Eeyore, Eeyore. Okay. There's a lot of things to be miserable about. But never let a miserable person drag you into their misery. Okay. There is a lot to get up out of this life. Now, the unfortunate thing is it's all been capitalized, right? It's all been capitalized. You can't just travel where you want to travel. You can't just go where you want to go. You can't just get free water and free dirt. There's some, there's some people out here. God intended us to have the water for free and the land for free. There's these people out here, like we going back to somewhere to the tribal land, to the tribal times. That is ended. We are an industrial complex. Everything costs money. It ain't coming back unless you get where the powers that be, and that ain't going to happen. Last time that happened, everybody learned. So big war was waged. That was the French Revolution. That was the last time something like that was toppled. They were like, we're going to get the king and the queen. Never going to happen again. They're going to ain't letting that shit happen again. (laughs) But these oxygen thieves, these knuckle draggers, these ham and eggers, and the goddamn NPCs, normies, You guys got to understand, man, you guys just wasting your life and wasting space out here trying to be miserable. Yeah, the people going to get people waiting for the 40 acres in a mule. Shit ain't going to happen. They're just waiting to get back to the tribal circle. All right. I mean, this is crazy. All right. But anyway, man, that's the day. That's the day show. I'm going to get to these earlier super chats, earlier super chats. And, um. That'll be that, and then we'll get on to the show here. It is Flatback Friday. It is Flatback Friday, and then, you know, what What better Flatback? That, you know, we got to go back to the Flatback Supreme here. Um, let me make sure my volume is turned Love down. Love putting on. Well, let's go to our Flatback Supreme. Wait a minute. Wrong one. Why they, if you guys wanted to know, I had it ready to go right there, raring to go. Hold on for a second. They showing the wrong, they showing the wrong thing. <laughs> they showing the wrong fee picture collection. All right. Oh, they, boy, I tell you, man, I'm going to tell you, uh, the um, Stream Labs is messed up this morning. All right. There it is right there. Our Flatback Supreme on a Flatback Friday. Oh, sucky, sucky now. <laughs> All right. There we go right there. All right. Why, why not? All right. Why not? I have a vision of love. All right, man. Here we go right here, man. Let me tell you something here. Do I got some music? Well, I'll just keep playing the Flatback Supreme out here. Yeah, that brother's starving. All right, where's she at? Let me at her. Let me at her. All right, let me at her. All right, here we go right here. Flatback Supreme extraordinaire. Livy Dunn. I don't know, man. Poor ninjas will be like, she too skinny. Yeah, man, I don't know, man. She a little too chipper and jipper for me. I, I'm with it. <laughs> there we go right here. Can they can they make a several versions of this one? Where can I get? Where can I get it? Let me add her. 
All right, what are we doing here? Let me add her. All right, here we go. Flatback Supreme herself. Oh, yeah, I'll take some bloopers, too. I'll take some bloopers. Yeah, there we go. All right, that's definitely some flatbacks right there, man. Flatbacks and right there. <laughs> it just said Princess. All right, Princess Livy Dunn is coming up. She got her feet out, too. Oh, my Lord. Oh, her feet ain't out. Those are socks. All right, but it don't matter. Look at them flatbacks. Oh, man, this is crazy. <laughs> all right this is crazy all right one more one more one more for the t- one more for the road there we go right there that's what i'm talking about yeah there we go right there we we yeah that brother's starving it is flat back friday flat back friday right there brothers here we go hey y'all want to keep up flat back supreme herself i mean you can't lose on that one can you lose you can't lose, man. And you don't know she don't even need to talk. <laughs> she don't even need to talk. Uh, some of y'all then just want your flat back Supremes looking like Brock Lesnar's daughter. Yeah, Brock Lesnar's daughter. But anyway, <laughs> let's get back to the show. All right, super chats. Shout out to Albert Wesker says leverage and options. We'll do the work for you. Hashtag level up, level up, level up at leverage and options. All right, a lot of guys are really salty about this leverage and options pursuit, but it's going to change the world. It's going to change the world. Uh, uh, remember, I'm going to just tell you something. Most every concept that I've come up with, but, but let me just say this. Most ever, every concept that I've come up with has come to pass, right? So I've said things, and two or three years later, here it is. Like, for instance, uh, de-evolution, right? The de-evolution is going to, we're going to be in this situation economically. We're going to have certain economic conditions, right? And uh, it's going to be the end of feminism. Feminism is going to fall on its face. I said this at a time where people thought I was crazy. All right, people were thought, that's nuts, coach. You're out of your mind. But here we are. The free agent lifestyle, all right? Also, building yourself, right? Going on a monk mode, and then I said, watch me in three years. But people want to evaluate me today. They were like, nah, man, it ain't working for you because you tried this and it ain't working. I was like, just wait. Just watch me in three or four years. And it came to pass. And now, now people have found me and they're like, oh, you, you've been successful all your life. I was like, no, people were calling me loser three years ago. People thought I was crazy three years ago. Now people are saying, why are you rubbing it in our face, coach? What's the point? What's the solution? Now you asking me what the solution is. It's too late. I already told you, it's no going back. Not only that, I also came up with the blue chip mindset. Now people are running with that. And I also said leverage and options. I, oh, by the way, I also said the dating marketplace will be monetized. I said the dating marketplace will be monetized. Like, like I, I took you through the steps. I took you through the progressions. I defined it before it was definable in the mainstream. I was like, it's going to be fully monetized. Like, everybody's going to be monetizing. The last straw of proof was the Cheesecake Factory thing. I was like, the dating marketplace is monetized. It's, it's, there's no getting around it. <laughs> there's no getting around it. Now it's here. And then I told you leverage and options. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Leverage and options are going to be, oh, by the way, money, energy, attention, and time. I said that at a time everybody was like, nah, nah, nah. And now people are saying it. They're running with it. The marriage will. Undefeated. I said, this is how marriages go. Now everybody's seeing it. You can see it plain as day. But I say it early enough, and I define these things, and I come up with the little uh, names and the staples, and it comes to pass. Leverage and options is going to be the future. Leverage it. New, 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 new world order. Leverage it. And it's all, like some of these things have already always been. But I'm defining them. And now you're seeing everybody else kind of define and use the same definition. Leverage in options is the future because everything's monetized. Ninja, you no longer can just take land and grow veggies. You have to do what? You have to buy the land. You have to go through all the red tape, the bureaucracy. You got to make the down payment. You have to have the interest. You got to get a loan, right? These day, the old days are gone. The 1990s are gone, guys. Okay. And it's not coming back. We're going into a future. We're going into the future. So a lot of guys are still, not everybody, but people are still trying to argue me down 
in about three years, many people are going to be priced out of everything. You're going to be priced out of everything. And I actually talked about that. I was like, man, forget about owning a house for most people. It's a, it's a wrap. People thought I was crazy when I was saying that. Remember, remember I was saying buying a house is not going to be it. And I was like, you, first of all, there's just, you, you can't afford one. You really can't afford. Remember when I was having these conversations and people were like, no, nah, you crazy. Look today. And here's these guys. Not if you have cash. Of course, moron. That's part of leveraging options. People are so dumb. I don't even know why I look at these people's comments. You're so stupid. Of course, if you have cash. Most people don't. 90% of people don't. You know what? I'm kicking your ass out for that shit. I can't stand when people do that. Again, these, these red herring conversations are getting ridiculous. <laughs> All right? when, people, when people try to argue my point, you know, moron, not if you have cash. Of course, you dumb ninja. People are so stupid. People are so dumb. Why would you even take the time to type that in? You know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> but I was telling you about the housing market two, three, four years ago. People were arguing me. And I was like, watch. And look at where we are now. People complaining about not being able to buy a house. And I was like, I told you. <laughs> told you. It's just too obvious right here, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. Stop arguing me. And then that was that ninja's argument back. Not if you have cash. Stupid. All right, anyway. <laughs> All right, anyway, I can't stand people. All right, anyway, Daniel McGee says, work hard to get a woman, and it has a low return of investment, free agent lifestyle for life. Daniel McGee says, what's up for the weekend, Coach Graybeard? What's up? What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? Anyway, shout out to you. Greg says, Coach Hafiz Handler Adams. Pause. We in the building. Shout out to you, Greg. Elijah says, hey, Coach, give me the buzzer. What happened? What happened? Why am I giving you the buzzer? I gave that other guy the buzzer. <laughs> All right, Hambino Gambino. Today at Starbucks, a Kaylee walking out saw me going in. And stood waiting for me to open the door for her. She had only, uh, she was only holding a coffee. I walked in and didn't act like a doorman. She was big mad. <laughs> big mad. And uh, that's the things that I would do that too. All right. And by the way, if you would have held the door open for her, there was a 60% chance she would not have even said thank you. That's just the, that's just the age we live in. So, I will take the opportunity. Sometimes I'm very, very, I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman archetype. But, yeah, sometimes I know some of these people wouldn't even say thank you. John Ellison says, you've been cooking them this week. Finally caught up. You are the only real one. The real one, he says, but I'm only coach gang for life. He says, I can't express how much you've helped me. By the way, YouTube is auto-correcting all the words to make this chat look crazy. Oh, man, shout out to you, man. Dang, thank you for letting me know, and shout out to the Detroit Lions. Shout out to the Detroit Lions. Hit the like button in here. We about to cook. We about to cook. We got uh, Preston. Says possible topic. Feminists who want relationships, they all do to an extent, whether they're lesbianist, or they all want relationships in the end. He says, ever notice how teens are babies when it comes out? Let me see here. He says, ever notice how teens are babies when it comes to sex, but adults, when they skitty pop, 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 and a boom, boom, brr, boom. Yeah, actually, there was a case. I want you to notice this case that I covered where the, eight, where the student, the male student was clapping cheeks of the teacher in the car, and the mother discovered her 18-year-old son clapping the teacher's cheeks. I've read some comments on those threads and people were saying, well, he was 18, so it don't matter. It was 18, so it don't matter, right? They've also went on to say the mother was nosy. The mother was, shouldn't have been uh, tracking the kid. The mother is a, a, a cock blocker and so forth and so on. Now, this is crazy because if you think about it and flip it, Cassie was 19 years old. And they act like this bitch had a pacifier in her mouth the entire time she was with Diddy for 11 years. They act like that bitch could not 
even add two plus two. They act like that bitch was in preschool. Yeah, I said bitch. And she was 19. Now flip it back to the dude that was 18 clapping the cheek. Uh, teacher's cleat, uh, the teacher's cheeks. All of a sudden, they was like, it's fair game. He's 18. Mm. <laughs> like, what are we doing? So it's okay for an 18-year-old student to fuck his teacher. But Cassie could not figure out how to get out of Diddy's bind at 19. Mm. Her frontal lobe hadn't developed yet. But the male student at 18 could clap the teacher's cheeks and the mother shouldn't interfere. Mm. (laughs) Like, what are we doing? Like, this is why I can't stand. I'm not dealing with this. I have my philosophy and I'm running with it. I have my philosophy. I'm nobody going to kick me off. This is why I tell you, do not try to debate me on here. I do not have a debate platform. I just kick my shit and I keep it moving. That's my platform. I ain't trying to argue with you rusty knee ass ninjas. I'm not trying to argue with you poor pieces of trailer park trash. I'm not trying to argue with these strags and these straggles. I'm not trying to make my point and try to discuss you for you. If you don't understand, keep that shit moving. This is how my platform works. You're not trying to buck me off your confusion and shit. All right. You're not trying to buck me off. I've been here way too long and I know what I know. I just kick my shit and I keep it moving. Y'all can go to somebody else's platform and try to debate they shit. If you want to take my video and chop it up and edit it out of context, have fun. Knock yourself out. All right. But I ain't going to respond to your shit and I ain't going to invite you on your platform. I ain't going to go on your platform to debate what the fuck I said. I said what I said. I'm going to keep that shit moving. Ninja, you can agree to disagree or you can agree and cheer or you can say I can't listen to this shit no more. You can do whatever the hell you want to say. I don't give a rat's ass. I come on here and pop shit and I leave. Mm. (laughs) All right. I ain't trying to debate and get viral on some bitch. Try to argue it with no goofy ass simp. Ninja, I pop my shit and I keep it moving. (laughs) That's my platform over here. Just be warned. This is not a debate platform. This is my show. (laughs) That's what it is. This is my show, and I say what the hell I said, and I keep that shit moving. Unless you want to pay a ninja for me to show up on your platform, I ain't got a shit to prove to nobody out here. <laughs> right? Anyway, that's how it worked. Ninja, I'm going to show you what it is, and I'm going to just keep it stepping. Everybody understand. I don't have to debate. I don't have to, I prove my point throughout the show. Then you want to come on here and act like you didn't see what I just proved. All right, but, 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 you saw what the hell I did. (laughs) All right, you saw me make my point. Don't act ignorant. Just, uh, just disagree and move it. But you ain't changing my mind at all. I don't take debates. I don't take, I don't take, uh, I'm not coming to your rusty ass platform. (laughs) All right, anyway. It is. Juco says, thank you, coach. You're my favorite African-American. Uh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. All right, last one, and I'm going to get the show going. Stiliano says, people try to stop me at every turn of CGA. They can't. They can't. In this world, there are a lot of speed bump people out here. Most people are speed bumps. You ever see speed bumps? You ever go through a neighborhood with mad speed bumps? You can't really pick up no steam. You can't even really accelerate. You go through a community. Speed bumps are vital. They want you to slow down. They want you to take your attention off the gas pedal. They want you to watch out for other people and shit like this. All right? But most people are speed bumps. You're annoying. You have a purpose. Your purpose is really to slow me down. But really, I ain't trying to get slowed down. All right? And so if I see a speed bump and I have... (laughs) And I don't care about my transmission and my uh, shocks and struts. I just jump over that. Some cars could just be like. But most people are speed bumps. They ain't going nowhere. They just land in the middle of the road trying to slow you down. And I have to acknowledge the fact that a lot of people that want to disrupt me, they're just speed bumps. They're just laying there. The only purpose is to lay there and slow me down. 
you don't got no other purpose in life. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to be laying there for 10, 15 years. You're going to be stuck in the same place. You ain't going to do shit. So why would I even stop? I will find a way to go around your ass. Or I'm going to just run over your ass and keep it moving. But I'm not about to stop and have conversations for speed bumps. You a speed bump ass ninja. <laughs> right? You a speed bump ass ninja. All right? Most people are speed bumps in your life. Most people are NPCs in your life. So I'm not about to stop, have conversation with the NPCs and the speed bumps. All right? But if you like being a speed bump, be a speed bump. But I'll just run over you and keep it moving. All right? Anyway. Try not to rip up my whole damn transmission and engine underneath and shit and bust my axle. All right, I got over you. Keep it moving. All right, anyway. Let's get into this show. I'm going to get back to these contributions, man, but I want to thank you for being here all weekend. The weekend is here. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? The weekend is here. All right. Um, This is interesting. Let's get a little doom and gloom CGA for this one. Doom and Gloom CGA, we got this interesting report. It was shared from me from the platform Rolo Tomasi. Um, Rolo Tomasi is a content creator in this space. Uh, for a long time, he has written the book Rational Mail. Me and him have not seen eye to eye for a long time since the beginning, but that's water under the bridge. What's important to note is that I made a point about people in here trying to debate each other within the sphere is pointless because from the outside looking in, we're all the same. Now, we might think we have some minor disagreements. This is why I didn't engage in debates with people for a long time. But I said, you think you're better than me because you have a different approach or style to your platform. But from the outside looking in, everybody lumps us all together. And this is an example of that. According to this platform, which is BX right here, and they got this ripped from InfoWorld. Info Wars, which is the Alex Jones platform. Listen to this. Massive, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security paid nearly $700,000 to, to a counterterrorism NGO to, quote, intercept and divert Twitter or X traffic away <laughs> from specific <laughs> individuals in the manosphere. At Rational Mail, at Cobra Tate, it's Andrew Tate, and at Fresh and Fit Pod, among others, were specifically named as targets. The DHS... TVTP grant funding was given to Arizona State University, home of the McCain Institute. The purpose of this grant was to design a native tool to be used on Twitter to effectively suppress individuals in the manosphere by diverting their audiences away from their content towards counter-messaging content, websites, podcasts, and creators curated by the McCain Institute to counter, quote, hate speech and misinformation. The U.S. government has named the, quote, manosphere as one of the biggest terror threats facing the U.S., they claim this broad network is the main cause of, quote, extremely isolated acts of incel-related violence. The, uh, conf uh, the conflation of incels with the broader manosphere as a justification for targeted counterterrorism ops, which can include aggressive surveillance and censorship, is part of a disturbing trend. The ever-broadening definitions of terrorism and extremism put forth by the U.S. government poses a very real threat to the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens. Let me stop it right there. Let me stop it right there. Now, shout out to the lawyer content creator. His, he, he goes by Dennis Sperling. Dennis Sperling called this out probably about two or three years ago. And he said, people in this space all have files with the Alphabet Corporations or the Alphabet Investigation Agencies. Don't be surprised. And I actually warn content creators, if you want to get into this game, Please understand that you're going to become, make yourself a target. Now, they said, and others. So, Kevin Samuels, probably you can say. Then you can say others. Is it CGA? Well, I'm going to tell you, during this time, I've experienced some very weird things, not only in my life, but with social media platforms. I've been canceled and banned and demonetized on just about every single one of them in one form or fashion, in one form or way or another. So this is not a surprise to me because some of these things are inexplicable. I'm like, why are they doing these things for me? And I see other things going forth and forward, like women and showing their ass and titties. Now they got the whole nipple out, and some of them got the roast beef meat right, meat right on the screen. 
None of, none of those countermeasures have been taken against them. So I've been I've been knowing that this is the case for a long time ago, but there's no more conspiracy here. There's no more conspiracy. If, in fact, this Department of Homeland Security, in which I believe Myron at one point worked for them, if, in fact, this is true, that they have given money in the form of a grant to the McCain Institute so that they can target and counter message, meaning that they shadow ban a group of people over here, demonetize and shadow ban a group of people, and then suggest to you counter messaging in order to prevent this message to go forth, you have to really figure out that there is some reason why. And you have to know what that new, is. New, 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 new world order. All right. You have to know what that is, if that's true. So the people that were named on this list, it says right here at Rational Mail, and we know him to be Rolo Tomasi at Cobra Tate. We know him to be Andrew Tate in that Fresh and Fit pod. We know them to be Myron and Walter Rogers Fit and Fresh, Fresh and Fit. They're going to have donated nearly $700,000 to a counter-terrorist NGO to intercept and divert. This is just Twitter. You can certainly say Instagram, Facebook, Meta, and then certainly you got to include the tube in here. But uh, this is not a surprise to me. This is just now what I call official. This is officially be done. People say lawsuits. This is, again, these lawsuits. Um, th these are, the again, that you have to look at. Because I've lost millions of dollars, millions. I will lose millions of dollars doing what I do, uh, trying to overcome the measures that have been taken for me that are inexplicable. It's, you can't explain it. Like, why? Tell me why. I know people are not uncomfortable with my message, but also, you're not, uh, are people really comfortable uh, with this type, of, uh, this type of content on a daily basis? You're comfortable with young women doing this, Okay. You're comfortable with young women presenting themselves, selling themselves on the internet, basically becoming prostitutes. We're comfortable with this. Yeah, we're become comfortable. Oh, that's okay. All right, that's empowerment. That's some shit like this. But if we talk against it, we're on a list. If we talk against it, shadow ban. If we talk against it, and yeah, Elon's exposing him. So that's why that Elon owns Twitter and X. So now they can actually pull this data out, right? So you said Elon's exposing them. Elon's exposing that. There's nobody on this, these other platforms that can expose this. This is all secret. So there's no, there's no doubt about what's happening. You have to ask why. You have to ask why. Right? Like, what is the real reason why? Now, they're going to say there's counterterrorism and stuff like that. But um, I've been knowing about these measures. They're, they're watching my show now. But I haven't been knowing about these. If you know anything about the counterintelligent pro, uh, counter intel program, what they would call the COINTEL Pro. All movements, all messages, all philosophies get a counterintelligence program. And uh, COINTELPRO was run by one J. Edgar Hoover in the FBI against the Black Panthers, right? And the Black Panthers was a very small group at the time in Oakland, California. And they had counterintelligence. The, S, uh, the SCLC had counterintelligence, all right? Um, this is all always going to be run, and they're not just going to let people like these people that they mentioned, just go run freely to be able to gather and, and corral and organize a group of people like men and women that watch shows that are on here. They're not just going to let the, that go by freely. They have a means and a message that they want to give people, and we're not, we're not part of it. We're not part of it. So anyway. New, 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 new world order. Anyway, that's your doom and gloom segment. I believe for the day, is that it? That is your doom and gloom segment for the day. Shout out to you. All righty. All right. All right. Thank you for being here. Do me a favor. Hit the like button. You're only going to hear this here. Hit the like button. We had almost 2000 people already for this show. And we have a lot of people watching me. We have the uh, paralegal or the paranormal investigator for people hired against me to watching me right now. They're trying to figure things out. Welcome to the show. We have the haters in here. We have the people supporting our channel. We have the, my competitors are here watching. You cannot help it. All right. And we have uh, people in the people trying to make uh, a name for themselves in this space. All right. By basically taking points and videos that I post. And making videos for themselves. All right. New, new, we got new, everything new in here. Shout out to Macaroni Tony. Title is true. 
even in service. The repair shop clerk told me, I can tell your pockets are deep. And he says, and I don't even dress flashy. And you know why, Macaroni Tony? Number one, you're a man, you have age on your side. All right, and old, older men who are aged, probably they look like different than young older men who have age and don't have shit going on, like old pimps and Max, because they don't have teeth. You know what I mean? Like their teeth have fallen out. You haven't used and abused drugs. You're not a slobbering wino and alcoholic. You don't look tired and fatigued. Your skin looks good. As you age, as you age, people can tell that you've taken care of yourself. You're probably somewhat fit. Your, your hair ain't nappy. See, these are the way, these are the things that people really know. I don't care. There's a, there's a movement going on where you're supposed to dress poor. It don't matter what you dress like, especially if you're an older man. Ninja, if you look, your skin look healthy, and you don't have dark circles around your eyes, and you ain't all fat and shit, and you are looking, you got your teeth. <laughs> people know you've taken care of yourself. They know you haven't abused drugs and alcohol. They're like, okay. It don't take much. And then you can afford minor services and then you pay the bills. Yeah, your, your, your gums ain't black. Uh, you, There's a minor service. Your lips ain't all black from smoking weed. Oh, that catches up to you. All right, that catches up. But you can pay for services and you don't, you don't act up, right? Like they'll be like, oh, the cleaners, your cleaners come back. And they'll be like, that'll be $100. People who haven't taken care of themselves or somewhat are really, you know, some people are frugal. You paid $100, you keep it moving. They're like, okay, this person, this person's different. This person's different. It's the people who freak out. And they're like, how am I going to pay my rent? Like they look, guys, there's also, there's also a thing where, uh, where I tell people, he said, your nose ain't running. Uh, women can sense desperation, right? Not only women can sense desperation, we can sense desperation. A person comes up to us, they're trying to sell something, and we say, nah, no, thank you. Or let me get your card, I'll call you. They got to sell you now. They're desperate. People can sense desperation. People can sense when you've taken care of yourself. Look at me. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I got a little bit of bags under my eyes, but that's because I have been staying up a little later than normal. My eyes ain't yellow. I don't have wrinkles on my forehead. My skin is shining, looks healthy. I have a well-manicured, maintained beard. My neck ain't all ronkled. Look at my neck. Now, I'm pulling it down, but that's what it looks like. Look at my neck. Ninja, my shoulders is, I got bolder shoulders, Ninja. <laughs> Taking care of myself. I can take care of myself better. Yeah, when you shit on auto pay. See, that's the reason why people can say and see what you are. They don't sense that you all messed up. My lips ain't black. Look at my lips. <laughs> my lips ain't black from smoking dope for 50 years. You know what I mean? Stress. You know, the only stress I've really had in my life is either kind of pursuing goals and my ex-wife. That's it. <laughs> Maybe my children. Maybe my children. You know what I mean? But children should be stressful. But this is the thing. This is how people get things. This is how the rich get richer. You have to take care of yourself out here. All the cool guys, they, 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 they don't age very well. Cool guys don't age very well. Here we go right here. He says, ankles ain't ashy. It's a real thing, man. And men have to pay attention to these things. All right, anyway, let me get over here. Kalen Ferguson is in the building. What do you have to say, Kalen? What's up, coach? I think it's safe to say that any marriage that lasts beyond 10 years in today's time is a miracle. Any woman who has a husband needs to keep him because it's only going to get harder to get anyone else or another one. Actually, I'm going to have a woman talk about that later. That's actually a good point. All right, that's a great point. Uh, a woman's going to speak on that. <laughs> All right, I still have the gains from when I worked out like a maniac. From 2013, 2012 to 2019, I was a maniac. Now, I haven't done that from about 2019 on. And this is the remaining of the gains. I lost 90% of it, probably 80% of it in terms of the size and the definition. And um, I've gained weight like 
not not muscle weight. And then I've also like, but all I have is the remains of gains of shit that I did. But I was a maniac from 12 to 19. Like I worked one one time a day, two times a day. I lived in the gym. I worked in the gym. I was always lift. So these are just the remains right? <laughs> right here. I'm like, I'm like, just wait till I start back up. But I don't want to start back up because I don't want to get back into that. I'm not a maniac anymore. I was crazy about it. I was crazy about it. Larry C. proudly wearing my CGA Warren Durst shirt today. Every day this statement applies more and more. Thanks for the wisdom, Coach. Take me out with my favorite African-American, please, and thank you. Uh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man, I know what you're talking about. Indeed, shout out to you. We do have a couple more, and then I'm going to get back to the show. We got Straggle and Sniggle coming up here. Let's say here. Uh, shout out to Clay. Real question, coach. He says, you said that you act differently outside of these streams. I know you're multi-talented, but is the juice worth the squeeze? You've been married, divorced, and have kids. If you can go back in time, would you not do any of it and do it differently if, if so what? Well, here, here's the thing. First of all, I, I do have kids, so I, and I love my kids, all right, unconditionally. And uh, but they also have to, a duty to perform. All right. They're they're your kids. You want to put them in a good position, but you don't want spoiled kids. They have a duty to perform. With that being said, I cannot go for I cannot go back in time and put kids back in vaginas and then put them back into the Milky Way or send them to heaven and give them another family. So if I erase one of those, I erase my beautiful children, which makes the question difficult, although I Love them. I would say I would never get married again. I would I would not have done that. All right. That that have that has been a detriment to me more than a benefit. Now, anybody says, well, you got two kids out of it. That's dumb. <laughs> All right. Although it's true. It's true. That thing has caused they're, they're not free. Kids aren't free. <laughs> they don't pay you went along the way unless you make them internet internet celebrities. When they're two. There are cost to them. They're, they're, we, we, call them um, we call them lovable liabilities. You can't just say, well, you got two kids out of it. Shit, sometimes you get two kids out of it or three kids and never see them again. <laughs> right? Sometimes the mother keeps them from you. So that hasn't worked out to my benefit at all either. But the reality is you can't put them back. So I wouldn't have got married. That, that would have been a life changer for me. But the reality is also... Me getting married and divorced earlier has allowed me to know never get married again. So I know there's people out here that, especially when I hear the lead attorney or I see people, men that are in their 40s that never got married, you're curious about it. Okay? You're curious about it. What you're doing is you're saying, man, I wonder. The lead attorney, shout out to the lead attorney. I know he watches from the sky. Well, the internet sky. He's always like, mm, um, um, uh, but he's been married again. He's been married before, but I hear him every now and then be like, mm, maybe I'll get married. And I'm like, you bozo respectfully, you know, good and damn well. <laughs> and I say that as an internet friend, you know, good and damn well, that would be a dumbass decision. You, you already know, Ninja, how this shit is going. And you are an attorney, Ninja. Get, get this Ninja clamp. You a divorce attorney. <laughs> tell, me the, tell me the hope strategy. Tell me the hope strategy without telling me you're the hope strategist. Respectfully. All right, and that's no diss. We're not shooting shots at our brother here, but I'm telling you, Ninja. And that tells me if... If, if he's willing to do that, then men that get to this point in their lives, you get lonely, bored, you got more time and money on your hand, you don't know what to do. Y'all need, just need to get some hobbies. <laughs> All right, get some damn hobbies, Ninja. You actually really, you actually really asking for it, Ninja. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> All right, Lee's taking the Kevin Samuels approach where they could be like, well, Kevin go, Kevin Samuels believed in marriage. Mm. Really? Was he married? Nope. Well, shut up. 
<laughs> he was not married at the time, so kiss my ass. <laughs> right, but I'm there. I'm not shooting shots. I'm just this is how my brain works. I'm not dissing anybody. I really I didn't plan to diss. I'm not trying to diss my brothers, Kevin and Lee. All right, but the react hey ninja, the truth is the truth. <laughs> the truth is the damn truth. All right, anyway. Shout out to Jacob says, since I realized that 90% of women are just another bill, I work less and worry less about them. For facts. I know Ninja's gonna say though, you tricking. All right, you tricking. Hey man, women are bills. I don't care how you go around it. They are debt. <laughs> it's going to cost you something. A lung, your heart, your soul. What, what do you want, man? It ain't free. Rest in peace to KS. Sean says, hey, coach, I had, a, I had to have surgery, and I was awake during the procedure. The doctor allowed me to use my headphones, and it was a tough surgery. You got me through it. Damn. Thanks, coach, and take care of your health. My goodness. What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? My goodness. I mean, I've never had this happen. My man's going through surgery, and he's listening to me. <laughs> All right, hold on for a second. Shout out to you. Oh, the humanity. My. I feel important now. <laughs> I feel important. My man said, hey, man, here's some uh, surgery for you. You're going to be awake. What do you want to listen to? CGA. Wow. Oh, I mean, I feel important now. I definitely feel important. And hey, I'm on I'm on here long enough. It gets you right through the surgery, right through outpatient. Then you're right back home in his wheelchair. All right. Four hours. The whole damn surgery. Shout out to you, man. Good Lord. All right. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. All right. Let me do two more and I'm gonna get back to the show. I promise. I promise. All right. Um, he says the laughter helps. Okay. Wowzer. Shout out to Miles. He says, uh, I appreciate everything you do for us men, coach. An underrated truth you say consistently is that most married guys are simps. He says, I've noticed that dynamic in most marriages. I refuse to be conquered, free agent lifestyle for life. In fact, um, the part of being married is to be domesticated. Part of that requires you to enter into your beta zone. Now, I don't say beta as a diss, like, because people use beta as a diss. But in order to be a domesticated male, you have to become beta. Now, that doesn't mean that you, just because you're home, you're domesticated. Like, I'm an introvert. I'm not a guy that just goes out just to go out. All right, I kind of go out for a purpose and come back to safety. Bruce Wayne of this shit, right? I'm the Bruce Wayne of this. But in order to stay and maintain a marriage, you have to enter into your beta. You have to become domesticated. And there's further domestication things that happen to you. You got to help around the house and the chores. And these are all forms of domestication. These are all forms to betaize you. Yeah, you're helping and help is necessary. But these are all minor tasks that distract you from major tasks. But you're responsible for protection and security, which is a major task. But a person, a speed bump in your life, a wife, might be focused on micromanaging you, and she micromanages you with minor tasks, which can be alleviated with money, with just her doing it quicker instead of complaining about it, uh, hiring someone. These are minor tasks that beta eyes you. You reach into your beta to complete them. Now, for me, I, I focus on major details and I oftentimes flush the minor details away. Like, I, I don't get distracted by minor shit. Like, if it's just not important to me, I'll ignore it. Even at my peril, <laughs> right? Mm. Even at my peril. Like, it's, it's something that, it's a, it's a thing that I've done in life for a long time. It has cost me, and it has cost me friendships and, and family and all that. But some of these things are minor for me, and I just... Like answering phone calls and emails and tech messages and checking the mail. Those are all minor tasks. I ain't got time for that shit. Most of the time it's people trying to sell me something, begging, junk mail, um, and, and bullshit and muff collection agencies, child support, attorney. It ain't nobody calling me like, hey, I just want to talk and see if you're good. Hey, um, I, I just want to send you $10,000 because I love you. It's never this. It's all people just bothering me. And this is all minor shit that I'll let two months of mail pop up and pile up. I'll let two months of mail pop pile up. Like I don't check my, I check my mailbox once time, one time a month, maybe two times, maybe, maybe once every two months. But when I go to that motherfucker, ain't nothing in there anyway. So 
I go in there and I throw all the junk mail away, throw all the catalogs away, throw all the bad mail that went to everybody else that was supposed to go to somebody else, throw all this shit away. It's four envelopes in there for me. In a month, four. And most of them is begging me for some money. <laughs> he said, damn, you can miss opportunities. I don't miss opportunities. I don't miss opportunities. If somebody wanted me bad enough, they would find me for, they would find me. If somebody wanted me bad enough, they would find me. Now, somebody's trying to give me, hey, I reached out to you, I sent you a DM. And that's all they, if that's all their attempt was, they didn't want me bad enough. <laughs> they didn't want me bad enough. They wanted something from me and they tried to get it. <laughs> Try to get it. All right. So it's, it's kind of how it works. I can miss out on the, the, a beautiful woman. Okay. <laughs> they'll find me, motherfucker. If they want me, they'll find me. They ain't just going to send me a DM and then that was it. Oh, man, I tried to hit you. <laughs> they would find me. They, be, they, would, they would reach. I'm going to tell you. Um, like uh, Pearl Davis. Pearl Davis. Let's talk about Pearl. And other content creators. In this space, I always say this. A content creator in this space on YouTube should not have difficulty finding another content creator's phone number. And Pearl is an example. Pearly Things wanted to reach out to me. Shout out to Pearl. She talked to one other content creator, and she had my phone number within minutes. Then she called it, texted me, and said, this is Pearly. I happened to look at the phone a few days later, and I saw. And then I reached back. Boom. That fast. That fast. If they want you, they'll find you. If they really want you, they'll find you. It ain't that fucking hard. They'll find you. Other than that, <laughs> right? And it, that's happened with other content creators. I think AMS did the same thing. AMS wanted to reach out to me. He probably DM'd me. It didn't go nowhere. He talked to one other content creator in this space, and there's like three content creators in that space that has everybody's number, everybody's number. We all can be reached at any point. This is the, this is the network. All of us can be reached. We're like three degrees separation from, I'm three degrees separation from Abbott and Preach. Like I can get to them if I wanted to. I can get them on the phone right now if I wanted to. Within probably a day, I can have their numbers, both of them. That's how, that's how quick. I don't care if a person has a million subs, I can reach them on the phone within a day. If they want you, they can have you. AMS was like, hey, how do I get a hold of CGA? He talked to this person. That person said, this is his number. Boom. Text. Hey, this is AMS. That fast. If they want you, they're going to find you. But if they trying to just get something from you, they just going to th throw their little effort out there and be like, well, I was going to give you $50 million, but you didn't answer my mail. You know what I mean? Other than that, I find that much of this shit that you worry about, this micro shit, is a, is a distraction. <laughs> it's a major distraction. It's a major distraction. You ain't missing out on shit. A lot of people have FOMO, fear of missing out. So every day you trying to check in your DMs, check in your comment section, check in your mail, check in your voicemail. Man. That's micro shit to me. That's that's distraction. That's all distraction. The network is where your net worth is. Your network is where your net worth is. Okay, that's where it's at. <laughs> anyway, not not checking the mailbox. Ain't nobody sending me no mail trying to get me to be a millionaire tomorrow. <laughs> My, there's no million dollars in that mailbox. You know what it is? There's a debt of $100,000 in that mailbox. <laughs> but don't have that FOMO shit. Focus on the two or three things in your life. Focus on two or three things in your life and make that shit happen. You'll be successful rather than waiting for a miracle in your mailbox. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> man, voicemails. I, man, I, look, all my phone's voicemails are full. You can't even leave a voicemail on my phone. You can't even leave a voicemail on my phone. It's all full. You call that bitch and it's going to say, voicemail box full. 
anyway, can't even leave no voicemail on my phone. Because if I look at the voicemails that are in my phone, that is that that got it clogged up, ain't nothing in there. <laughs> it's just spam and people trying to get me to take debt and uh, uh, people trying to uh, give me, a uh, you know, to, to, to buy a house, collections, child support. <laughs> That's the only thing in my mailbox. Old women that I messed around with. Oh, I don't even remember her. Ain't nothing in there. I ain't got no time to be thinking that. That's all FOMO. Subpoenas. <laughs> Attorneys. Ain't nobody trying to catch me on there. I don't even answer the phone. That's all distraction. All right, anyway. <laughs> uh, but anyway, y'all be out here with FOMO. Ain't, no, ain't, ain't shit out here, bro. You got to make your opportunities out here. But if they want you, they'll find you. Anyway. And they're just trying to show, get me to show up to court. That's the only thing on my voicemail. All right, anyway. So anybody that want to have reached me, emails, same thing. People are like, I sent you an email. I'll be like, so? Like, who sits around checking their email? Not me. <laughs> I don't sit around checking my email. Cause I get that I get hundreds of emails within I get thousands in a, probably a day, uh, a week thousands of emails most of them ain't shit. So if you send me an email, that shit is lost in space. It's completely lost. <laughs> but my attorney be like, "Hey, I sent you an email. When?" And they be like, "Look it up." Like they're like annoyed with me. They're like, "Look it up. I sent it August fourteenth, and it said this." I'm like, "Man, I ain't looking at that shit." <laughs> <laughs> I, there's a thousand emails that I get in a week. A lot of menosphere stuff, a lot of things pinging me, these things soliciting me. Uh, you know, my YouTube channels are big. So there's a lot of marketing emails. People just barrage the email. I'm like, I don't check no, I don't check that shit. I ain't waiting around for nobody's email. <laughs> I'm not. But I'm a little bit different because I just get barraged nonstop. I get barraged nonstop. So it's kind of annoying. I don't even have the alerts on my phone. Or email like it don't even come up on my phone so i would have to go to the computer pull up the gmail siphon through i don't know what's going on ads spam so i just like whatever <laughs> send it again while i'm on the phone send it now what what do you want me to look at anyway it's crazy crazy but a lot of people are ain't like that y'all a lot of people don't have shit going on but my my shit is out of control. So if you want me, you got to pin me down. You got to pin me down. Where's my Gmail right quick? Uh, let me see here. Uh-oh. <laughs> look, I don't know if you want to look at the screen here. I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of what my Gmail looks like here. Just so people don't think I'm joking. But it, it, it's been looking like that for years. Let me see if I can pull it up. Look at, look at, my, G, look at my Gmail. <laughs> Yeah. You see that? You see that? Ju junior college can get a hold of me. You see that email? <laughs> Bitch, I don't know. I don't know what's in there, bro. You send me an email, that's as good as sending a goddamn carrier pigeon to me. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Hey, I'll send you an email. I don't know what's. Anyway, <laughs> it's crazy. Again, man, if you want to find me, Naji, you got to go hold me down. Find me and say, yo, this is what it is. 55,000. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to find your email in there. What is it? What is it? All right. He said that would strip me out. You thought I was joking, weren't you? <laughs> you thought I was joking, wasn't you? I, didn't, I, ain't lie, I don't lie to you, man. I don't know what's in there. I don't know what's in there. You, you got to find me. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the show. And I'm not fronting on y'all. I'm not fronting on y'all. Yeah, you got to find me. You got to find me. If you don't find me, I'm a, I got more important shit to do than what you got. All right. Anyway, because I'm too busy doing some other shit, man. Like what? What? Okay. What? <laughs> he said, that's unread. Yeah, that's, 50, that's 55,000 unread emails. That's, imagine the ones, the five that I read. 
and this is not me bragging. I'm, this is just me going, I'm really focused on a whole bunch of other shit. If you want to get me, you got to get me. And if, if you're not, if you're outside of my circle of influence and you, you're not in my trust circle, you're on the ignore button. Like if I put you on the outside of that, that means I don't even want to hear from you. And that can include like, you know, like my ex-wife, she outside on the trust circle. So whatever she doing or whoever she has contacted me, they on the outside, like they're irrelevant to me to them for the most extent. Like all, all y'all trying to do is trying to uh, steal from me. So you can't get a hold of me. I'm going to make it so you can't get a hold of me. All right. But anyway. <laughs> All right, somebody says, I need to make a space in my voicemail just in case someone's trying to t- tell you about an inheritance or something. Man, <laughs> why would I worry about that? <laughs> Again, like these things are pipe dreams. You guys worry about some shit that probably not going to happen. Knowing my family, it ain't going to happen. I don't have nobody that's going to die that's going to leave an inheritance. So why would I do that? I'm focused on my shit. I can make what they're trying to send me an inheritance back if I focus on my three things. These things are pipe fucking dreams you're worrying about. Now I got to be barraged by people just so I can wait for an inheritance voicemail. What is the inheritance going to be? I'm trying to get you men focused. What possibly can the inheritance be that I cannot make by just focusing on my shit? This is, you guys are worried about the wrong shit. (laughs) For real, man. You guys worry about the wrong shit. Like, I don't, uh, look, people come to my door. I don't even answer the door. Like, ninja, my doorbell ring is off. All right, because most people that come to my door are solicitors and People trying to serve me court papers. Doorbell is off. <laughs> Even if I might see the doorbell has rung. If, if it ain't Uber Eats or Amazon delivering my groceries, shit ain't going to get answered. <laughs> I'm going to just look at the camera in the film. And if it, I'm like, okay, that's a process server. Okay, that's a solicitor. Okay, that was my groceries. Okay, that was me. And then I look at the video. Oh, that my neighbor stopped by. And then I'll go to my neighbor and say, hey, I see you stop by. <laughs> like just because you look guys listen just because you rang my doorbell just because you sent me a letter just because you call my phone just because you saw my email or send the email doesn't mean i need to respond to you he said sound like you hiding yeah i am hiding because people ain't get, what who do i need to talk to <laughs> right again Nobody is coming to my door and giving me something. Everybody's coming at me and you guys, first of all, you're not me. So that's a part of it. Most people who come at me want something from me. But the people who I know in my circle of influence that I want to talk to, they can find me. They know how to get to me. Nobody's coming to my door with some important shit unless they're dropping shit off. Otherwise, what, what is the, I open the door. It's a solicitor. Hi, you want to do solar panels? Man, no. I don't want to do solar panels. You need a new sprinkler system? You need a new landscaper? You need some home, uh, 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 home cleaning? No, 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 no. Why would I go answer the door when every call, every door is that that's what the that's what's at the door <laughs> you guys you guys distracted by oh i need to see who's there i need to see who's on the phone i need to see who's nobody's dropping off shit that i want <laughs> nobody's popping by it's jehovah witnesses mormons these are all distractions you're waiting for the one person to come in and say, you want to, you got a million dollars. I know it ain't going to happen. I know I'm not going to get the phone and say, Hey, I want to send you a million dollars. It's always people wanting something hand out, hand out. So I just say, I'm over here. If you want me, if you're the three people that are important in my life, I answer everybody else is beggars. 
They're beggars fucking begging me. And I ain't got time for it. <laughs> I don't make time for it. So people don't understand this. It's, these are major distractions in your life. To me, these are distractions. <laughs> All right, so that's kind of how I do it. I open the door for the JUCO. I open the door for the JUCO. And, but they tell me they're at the door, <laughs> right? But I just have to be able to have my phone so they can tell me they're at the door. And then when, they're, when I see they're at the door, I open the door. But again, you guys, uh, you know, you can live your life where you're constantly being distracted and taken out of your focus um, to answer this and answer this text and answer this email. I don't have time for that shit. Now, somebody else can do it. I'll pay somebody else to do it. Uh, but those are minor to me. They're all, uh, everything is all minor. 99% of the time, it's a distraction. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to answer the door or answer the phone just because that 1% chance somebody calls me for an inheritance, <laughs> right? Mm. Right. Anyway, it's kind of, it's kind of one of those things like I'll roll the dice, but a lot of people don't have this philosophy. I, I actually do. But what I tell you is. I have these philosophies, I live by it, and I, I die by it. I live by it, and I die by it. I live by it, and I die by it. Like, but that's the only way I can do it. But it kind of gives me peace of mind. It doesn't distract me. It maintains my focus. But that's my philosophy. Some people will have the opposite philosophy, but you're kind of always never re really able to really focus on what you're doing. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> Anyway, let's, I'll come back to that later if we want to discuss it. But, uh, yeah, man, most people, ain't get, most people have nothing to offer you. Most people who want you have nothing to offer you. And if they really, really want you, they'll find you. And if they don't want to find you hard enough, well, so be it. I, I won't even know what I missed anyway. I won't even know what I missed. But I know what I did miss. <laughs> All right, anyway. I can tell you what I did miss as opposed to what I didn't miss. My network, my network is my network. Not, not random people trying to drop in and, and give me an inheritance. That's not, I'm not going to get rich like that. And I'm not going to wait to get rich like that. My network is my net worth. So I network with the people that I know. I meet with them. I collab. I meet with them. I'm available to them. Everybody else is on the outside till you get to that inside. You got to get, you, listen, I'm the VIP section. I have a velvet rope. In order to get to me, you got to be VIP. Ninja, I ain't going to go, I ain't going to the same bathroom as you. I'm in the suites, Ninja. I got my own bathroom in the suites. In order to get where I'm at, you got to be in the, on the inside. And if you were on the inside and your ass on the outside, you on the outside. <laughs> right? Mm. You on the outside till you beg your ass back in the inside or pay the admission fee. But, okay, right here, you know. A lot of people, y'all out here distracted and shit, all right? Don't get too distracted about these things. All right, anyway. Uh, anyway, those are some blue chips for you right there. <laughs> Another thing right here. I have two phones. I have two phones. If, if you have this phone number, you on the outside. <laughs> you got to have this phone number. And you don't get to that red phone till you get through time on this black phone. And this black phone don't go with me everywhere. That black phone stay. I, I check this black phone every now and then. All right, so I'll leave it at home. I'll leave it when I go on a trip. I'll leave it when I go to football games. That shit don't go everywhere with me. So that's where the junior college is. That's where my attorneys are. That's where my baby mama is. That's where the new people I meet are. That's where content creators are. That's where they at. Everybody in here that I don't need to answer immediately, you're on the black phone. On the red phone, you are important. <laughs> you're important once you get over here. And not that many people got this one. <laughs> I have a system, Ninja. I got a system. <laughs> here we go. I have a system. So that means I can get rid of your ass. On the black phone. You can't Google shit on here. Like if you got this number and you Google it, nothing going to come up. 
the Bruce Wayne of this shit. You Google this number, nothing going to come up. This one, that's the important phone, the hotline. My kids got this phone. My mama got this phone. Any woman that's positive in my life got this phone. So if I don't want to hear shit from you, or if you're not that important, or I could, you're not, it's not an emergency to respond to you, you on the black phone. All right, you guys got to have a system, man. <laughs> anyway, but people don't got no system out here. Y'all just letting all kind of shit distract. I'm trying to help y'all today. Y'all don't want no help. I see. <laughs> y'all don't want no help. All right, anyway, telemarketers, you go to the Apple store, you go to any store, can I get your phone number? Okay, here it is. And you must give it to them. They get the black phone number. So that they not bu- blowing up and texting and, 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 and all of that shit on my, on my hotline. All right, anyway. <laughs> all right, anyway, what do we got here? Hit the like button. I'm giving y'all game here. And some of y'all don't have to do this. Y'all want to be nosy and shit and worried about what y'all missing out on instead of making opportunities? Have at it. All right, what are we doing here? <laughs> Let's get back to the show. Are we only on Straggle and Sniggle Theater? Uh, anyway, Straggle and Sniggle Theater. Let's go. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me. You can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky. Come get high with me. That's a deal, right? Ride. Straggle and Sniggle Theater is back. Let's see what's going on here. What do we got? We got um, Straggle and Sniggle Theater. This says right here, a woman explains why she gets defensive when men call them out. This is an interesting thing right here, why she gets defensive when men call them out. Here we go. Why do women get so defensive when they're, what, called out on something? Because you don't want to be honest. You don't want to deal with the truth. You don't want to change what? We just don't want to deal with it. Exactly. Why? Why is that an issue? Because we want to, we kind of want to do what we want to do, and we don't see you guys. Men complain about things that are just sometimes just why, why, why are you upset about it? You do, and I feel because like there's something for wrong me, for me. And the only way to communicate and fix things is to address. I don't it like to be told and deal that with I'm, it I, and fix it. I don't like to be told that I'm wrong. I just want to do what I want to do. And no, it's not always right. But that's, I just want to do what I want to do. And when you call me out, it makes me defensive because I don't even understand why you would be calling me out. It's not that serious. Nah. Why? All right. So only the things they're serious about, it's an emergency. But when they're called out and they have to make a repair about themselves, they don't want to hear it. All right. I don't want to hear it. And so they basically just did. This is why, again, I don't let just people get it in contact with me. Um, I don't let randoms just get in contact with me because this is what their life is about. When you, they need help from you, they want to talk. When you need help from them, they want to just ignore you and say, I don't want to deal with it. I'm defensive and blah, blah, blah. So there, there's another example of how some women participate when you're in a relationship. Just, hey, I don't want to do it. I'm not. I'm wrong, but I don't want you to tell me I'm wrong, and I don't have time to deal with this shit. Right? But it's kind of par for the course. Uh, but uh, this is why you can't let these people lead in your life. They can't be that important in your life. And there's a lot of people that are like that. There are a lot of people that are children with breasts, not only women, but men. So you got to treat them accordingly. All right, I'm going to just be delusional about where I'm messing up. Don't tell me about it. And I ain't correcting it. So that's that. And a lot of guys, you give up your leadership in your relationship for people like this. Here's another one, a, um, a straggle right here. And this woman's going to say something similar uh, let's hit it. Explain to you why I'm beefing with my husband. All right, this man looked at me and he's telling me about this football game that he won't go to on Friday. And I asked him, I say, do you want me to come with you? And he was like, you can come if you want to. That's not what I asked. No, 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 no. Because I know I can come if I want to. What you gonna do, keep me out the car? I asked, do you want me to come? And he then, I repeated the question, like maybe he didn't understand. And then he looks at me, because we were in Walmart, he's pushing his buggy and he turns around and says, if you want to come, you can come. I'm like, oh, okay. So I said the question twice. So you heard the question and you still didn't answer the question I asked. So I looked at him. I said, babe, I didn't ask you if I can come. That wasn't the question because I know I can come. My question is, do you want me to come? And he was like, he looked at me and he was like, I mean, if you want to. 
Three times, y'all. Three times. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And I'm like, you know, standing on healthy, healthy communication, right? And then I'm like, but that's not what I asked. And he says, yes, Haley, I want you to come. Are you going to come? And I told him, no, I didn't want to. And uh, there you go again. Um, this is like the 50,000th clip that I've showed. Yes, one clip can represent a lot of women. After 50,000 clips over, what, five years? Yes, these are the head games that some women play. By the way, she said she was married. She said, this is what me and my husband. This is, again, an example of what I talk about of minor distractions. Minor distractions. I cannot deal with people like this. Like, even if people are in my house and they act like this, I'm done. Right? That's it. So, if I'm, met, if I'm dating a woman, I'm messing with her, she's at the JUCO, or, or you're out. I, I'm not, I don't have time for this stuff. I really do isolate myself against this type of cancer. However... Normies think this is normal. Oh, that's a normal part of a relationship. That's what you have to put up with. That's what you signed up for. And I always tell you, no, I did not, and I do not have to do this. I draw a hard line in the sand on people like this. Because this is all waste of attention. It's, this is minor stuff. Now, she can make this major if she's my wife. And now I'm screwed. Now I have to domesticate myself. Now I have to put up with this shit. And some married man has to put up with this. There's a married man. We know there's one. But there's millions of married men that have to put up with shit like this. At the end of it, she just this is just a child with breasts. No, do you want me? And then when you, he finally says, okay, she says, I don't want to go. Mm. This is what happens when you allow this type of nonsense to go on. You have to put these fires out earlier. And this is why I always said, if you lose leverage in your marriage or relationships, dump her. I know people are like, no, nah, man, you need to fix her. You don't. I'm not in the fix a woman business. <laughs> All right. You, I, I give the rules and the boundaries and you follow. If you don't want to follow, I dump you. I mean, and that goes for people or whatever it is. I don't care who it is. Right. I have my boundaries. You have your boundaries. All right. We're, we're going to treat each other fair within our boundaries. But what you ain't going to do is try to knock my boundaries down and then make me put up with it because I have some sort of legal attachment or we're dating or you, your feelings. No, you're not. You're not going to do that. So um, you got to protect yourself. A lot of people don't want to protect their peace. I see that. You call it hiding. I'm protecting my peace. All right, it's not. And this isn't new behavior. I've been behaving like this for pretty much my entire adult life. If you're on the outside, you're on the outside. All right, but um, people don't protect their peace. Your peace is number one. Your peace is number one, all right? That's the most important thing you got going on. Anybody that, that you're just letting people come into your life randomly, begging, doing all these things, this is not appropriate behavior, all right? You're, you're, yep, pets too. If my dog acting up, into the crate you go, all right? I ain't got no time. My dog, Nova wants some too much attention, get in your crate. No, 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 you got to love her, and she's needy. Okay, uh, you too needy. Get in your crate. All right, I'll come to you when I come to you. <laughs> mm. All right, but people don't protect their peace. All right, your peace is numero uno. Uh, Straggle and Snickle Theater. We have this woman here, I'm supposing. You see her on the screen. She's going to say that she went to her child's high school, and she went to, uh, I guess she was confused as a high school student. Okay, let's continue. Oh, my God. So I came to the school to get my son withdrawn to go to the new school, right? So the lady at the front, I have no idea what they're talking about. The lady at the front tells these two boys, they're in 10th grade because I asked them, to walk me to a building or whatever to get the paperwork and all that. Anyway, long story short, he turns to me, he goes, you in gym? And he was like, we're supposed to be in gym right now. I'm like, dude, I'm old enough to be your mother. I am here to withdraw my son. And literally, I was dying laughing. I was like, oh, my God. I literally had just posted that I look like a whole high school student today. See, again, uh, this is what I do. I call this bullshit out. Now, first of all, first of all, number one, number one. You lying. Mm. I'm going to tell you. Number two, look at this person here. She looked like Frankenstein's monster, a.k.a. the miracles of modern science, 
aka a hatchet job, aka you look like a dang, you, you, you don't even look human, first of all. I mean, look at this. You see this. The plastic surgery is out of control. The filter on the app is out of control. The duck, are you serious? That You got no, you look like a high school student. Somebody, she says, I look like a high school student. Now, I'm going to call out the hypocrisy in this. If you look, because people, and listen, and I'm not, I'm not that, but if men are attracted to high school, I mean, if men said they are attracted to high school girls, and you're trying to achieve a girl that looks like high school. This is the, the hypocrisy of women trying to look young to the point where then they call you a metaphile for being attracted to young looking women. You're trying to push that you look like a high school student, but you would call a man a metaphile for being attracted to a high school student, which, which is rightly so. Now, what is it? What do y'all want out here? See, these women are out here cuckoo. All right, they're, they're, they're saying you shouldn't date younger women, but then they want to look like one. All right, this is psych. This is psychotic behavior. Now, I want you to notice this. I want you to notice this. This video has got a lot of views. But you know what it ain't got? No comments. Oh, she turned them comments off. She turned them like counts off. Ain't no like counts in there. What happened? Where them comments at? Well, I know where them comments at. Them comments at deletion. Okay? Them comments got deleted. Why? Because ain't nobody buying this bullshit. Ain't nobody buying this. You're telling me somebody confused you for a high school student? Not only did someone confuse you, you went in there and you said I look like a whole high school student. So that means you are trying to achieve that look. Because that's what you said you are trying to do. You said, I look like a whole high school student. And then you said someone confused you. Ma'am, ain't nobody confused this stretched out face with no high school student. Mm. Nobody. <laughs> not a single not a single one has confused this Botox forehead with no high school student. And that filter. Nobody. I'm just letting you know nobody them comments is gone. All right. No comment. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what? You don't even look like a college student, ma'am, at all. This is crazy. What's wrong with these people out here? <laughs> all right. Thank you, man, for that. Let me get in there. All right. Straggle and Single Theater here. We have an old commercial from the 50s. Uh, for the people who want to go back to traditional relationships, here's the 1950s television commercial. Uh, this is an interesting advert. I think we might need to bring this back. I bought the fresh stick, just as you told me. You're absolutely right. It's neat and quick, and it goes on dry. It did make me feel cool and sweet, just as you said. I did everything you said, but my boss still hasn't asked me to lunch. In matters of vaginal odor, an unpleasant aroma down there could cast a shadow on the grandest of romances. Shouldn't you prioritize those little steps to ensure pure, delicate allure? Oh. When you think of it, that's quite a lot. Oh. Oh, the humanity. Yeah, um, uh, vaginal odor sticks. Vaginal odor sticks. Yes, this is a commercial. Uh, you're not fresh down there. <laughs> not fresh down there. Ladies, when you want to get fresh... Get your vaginal odor sticks, all right? You know, y'all out here, my pH bag, my peace leave don't stink, all right? They got rid of the douche. They got rid of the vaginal odor sticks. And oddly enough, she trying to get the boss to take her out to lunch. <laughs> this is the days when women got jobs to marry up, all right? They had affairs with their boss and became the second wife, all right? My boss hasn't asked me out to lunch. Like, that's where you catch a date? Yeah, back before sexual harassment. But as you can see, sexual harassment is a myth in, at work many times because these women trying to catch a mate at work. They trying to move up the economic food ladder. All right. I'm trying to get the boss catch my attention. Maybe it's my vaginal odor sticks. All right. I need to get that punani fresh. Like, <laughs> what a world we live in, man. I bought the fresh stick just as you told me. You're absolutely right. It's neat and quick, and it goes on dry. 
It did make me feel cool and sweet, just as you said. I did everything you said, but my boss still hasn't asked me to lunch. Oh, no. In matters of vaginal odor, oh, an unpleasant please. aroma down there could cast a shadow on the grandest of romances. Shouldn't you prioritize those little steps to ensure pure, delicate allure? When you think of it, that's quite a lot. Yeah, man. Think of it, guys. Ladies, ladies, think of it. You got your vaginal odor sticks? Anybody? Ladies, you got your odor sticks going on? All right, maybe, maybe. All right, that's Dragon with Sniggle Theater for today. Hey. Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky, come get high with me. That's a deal, right? Ride. We definitely live in a different time, right? All right. Ladies, like, I ain't care about your my odor down there, all right? And I ain't trying to find no man. Let me catch up with some super chats. I've been far, far behind. Uh, and then we're gonna get back to the show. Next subject matter, Elon Musk's custody arrangement shout out to the contractor said not the bangs coach i'm paying end of the year taxes and social security for for employees he says i'll catch up my debt with you shout out to you this week was fire thank you to the contractor south of the border shout out to you <laughs> jamie hoffman says hit the like button coach what requirements to get money on tiktok what's requirements are there to get money on TikTok? I don't know. Um, I'm not monetized on TikTok. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but uh, they got rid of their creator fund, their initial creator fund. They have a new fund, but uh, you have to have different qualifications uh, to do it. But in order to get paid on TikTok, Ninja, you got to need to post five videos a day. All right. I ain't got that type of patience to make a dime off of a million views. <laughs> All right. So you better got, you better start dancing, Ninja. And put a woman's booty in your pictures. I don't know. All right. But if you want more about that money mindset on Sunday night, coach, uh, patreon.com backslash coach Greg Adams. All right. But I'm demonetized. I was demonetized. I was, I had, again, we were talking about this earlier. I had a whole TikTok page wiped out. I've been, I've been, I've been targeted on every social media app. All right. They deleted me with 80,000 viewers. Now I got one with a hundred thousand, um, hundred thousand subscribers or followers, if you will. And it's shadow banned. I put a video up. I ha I used to get millions of views on my videos on TikTok. Now I'll get 5,000. Shadow banned. All right, so I don't even try many times on these platforms. All right, so I'm I'm not. Hey, private investigator. I'm demonetized on TikTok. I know y'all just think I make money everywhere, but I don't. All right. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Shinku says, angry women always tell you get deleted or go to hell. He says, bitches are straight evil. Talk to them. For real, shout out to the regular dude who says, darn, they really be playing with y'all numbers. They do. You saw my numbers at one point, 6,000 people, but they be out here just, they, I have, they have a cap, man. My cap is like 2,600 people. Like, it'll never go over that. I, and I know it's over that. So, I mean, I know it's completely over that. They really just squash me over here, but um, it is what it is. That means, that means what I'm saying is it's dangerous to not you, to someone. Shout out to ACDC says, damn coach, your McCain Institute NWO file must be thicker than a grande gordita. He says, keep Siggy close always. We know this. Marriage causes divorce. Men and women are incompatible. Is incredible game. It explains why the divorce rate is 50%. It explains men are for Mars and women are for Venus. It explains peace for men and drama for women. All right. Some women do come into your life and not all. But some of them, because they're bored. But I made the point, and I did in a stream, a stream called Men and Women Are Incompatible. And people will argue me, but the data shows that we're not really compatible. I mean, I don't even want to go through it again. But the fact is, many women get into your life because they're bored. They're bored. People won't accept, men won't accept that. Now, not all men, not all women, but most of them are bored. They ain't got nothing better else to do. <laughs> right? And if you are a man of means, you will have women that actually have resources to do things, but they don't have no one to do it with. And so they'll reach out to men that are on the higher end rung of the ladder and won't make demands of you. They just need the company. I mean, I'm telling you, man, I know way too much. All right, I know way too much out here. But a lot of, a lot of people were like, men and women are certainly compatible. So explain the divorce rate. Explain why 80% of men are invisible to women. Explain why you have to work on your relationship to keep it together. I mean, stop. <laughs> it's just like, stop. 
what we are are transacting each other in a variety of ways. It's kind of give and take. Sometimes it's ridiculous where you're giving and she's taking a lot. Sometimes it's the opposite, and I'm going to read a, a, a question related to that where the guy is taking and the, the woman is giving and the guy is just taking, and she don't like it. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, anyway. What are we doing here? Shout out to Brown Three One Zero says, "What's up for the weekend, Senor No Trabajo? We back in here. What's up, What's for up the nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? All right. Anyway, uh, somebody says, uh, "Why don't cute girls walk around anymore?" Yeah, because they're monetized online. Cute girls don't got to go outside, ninja, and they can go. Cute girls are like cats. <laughs> Do you ever see cute girls just aimlessly walking around? I'm, this show is this show is going to be off the rails. Do you ever see attractive women aimlessly walking around? I'll ask you this: Do you ever see attractive women at the bus stop? Now, if you're poor or male, every woman is attractive. I'm talking about attractive on an international scale, not in not because you're in Memphis and you're attracted to poor women because you're broke. We're talking about on an international scale. Do you ever see? Do you ever go somewhere and just aimlessly walking around are attractive women? Nope. Attractive women are like this. <laughs> They're like kittens. They're in their house, and when they go out of their house, this is what they do. They walk outside, and then they skedaddle to their car. They skedaddle to their car. They get in their car, and they drive to Starbucks. They drive to Starbucks. And when they drive to Starbucks, they get out of their car, They run in there, they get the order that they ordered on the app, get it, or they order real quick, and they aimlessly pace. They get their order, and they run back to their car. (laughs) Whole Foods is not aimless. That is a purpose. We're talking about aimlessly, just walking around. Whole Foods is a purpose. They go in there and shop, and they skedaddle to their car. (laughs) All right. Now, the only other, they, they go to the beach. All right, they go to the beach, but they get their beach blanket and they they little cheese and wine. <laughs> All right, they in and out. They moving around here. They there. They get there. They go to the front of the line. They get entered into the club. They at the VIP section. They just go from here to there. They ain't aimlessly just walking around like, I'm looking for people to talk to. Nope. <laughs> you only see old, ugly, short, Oblong, cockeyed, knock knee, buck tooth, black, uh, uh, busted women at the bus stop, aimlessly walking around, not no purpose. They always got shit to go. They go in and out of Pilates and yoga, in and out of the uh, Starbucks, in and out of Nordstrom's, in and out, <laughs> in and out of the VIP section, in and out of the drive through, in, in and out. <laughs> Yo. It's, it's how they operate. They got shit to do, places to be, people to do, and all of that. All right, but when you got average-looking women aimlessly run around, average-looking women kind of just be out there eating out there on the stump. <laughs> We're talking about average women. Average women are out there and available to you. Anyway. He said hookers. <laughs> hookers are busted. They're not attractive. <laughs> hookers that are on the corner are oftentimes busted, broke, and disgusted. These are not attractive women. All right. Anyway. Yep. You be seeing club foot women, women with guns and ob- uh, out of shape women, average women. You guys don't. <laughs> Man. You know, you guys have to know what attractive is. When I say attractive, I'm talking about on an international scale. Not the attractive women in Cleveland. Not attractive women in Cleveland. You're like, I live in Cleveland, coach. I see women, attractive women walking around all the time. There are about 10 attractive women in Cleveland. 10. On the international scale of looks, there are 10 attractive women in Cleveland. Come on, man. Stop arguing. Average women are not on the international scale as attractive. So when you're in Target, when you're in Target, 
Those are not attractive women. <laughs> All right. People in here are mad. Look at Memphis ninjas is mad. Cleveland ninjas is mad. I'm telling you, man, why do I have to argue you? Remember, I'm not arguing with you. My man said I'm basing everything off materialistic, superficial Orange County. It's not reflective of the country. This is correct. In fact, that's why they call people in LA six. Do you guys know that ugly people stay, ugly and average women stay in ugly and average places? <sighs> ugly and average women stay in ugly and average places. That is a fact. Big fish, small pond. If I, if, if I use Kansas City as the marker of what I'm talking about, there's only 10 women that are attractive in Kansas City. But you're in Kansas City and you don't understand because you're in North Dakota. You're trying to blame me for saying the attractive women. And you're saying, I see attractive women in Kansas City. There's only 10 in Kansas City. And I'm pretty sure you don't bump into them on a regular basis. You see average women. <laughs> because Kansas City is the average American city. I know you want to disagree with me, but really you agree with me. But what you're saying is you're in an average place. You're a Kansas City 9. Let her go to anywhere where there's more attractive people. She's a six. She's not on the international scale of beauty. When I'm saying attractive, and I'm not talking about decent looking people that are somewhere in Midland, Texas or Boise, Idaho. She's a decent looking woman in Boise, but she's nowhere in the attractive category. Do you see what I mean? We're just saying take the entire world and use that as the scale. You can't just be. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, guys. You guys got to travel. Please travel. Please move around. I'm tired of these Midwest ninjas trying to challenge me with all of their snow cows. Trust me, by the way, I've lived all across the country. I know I represent Newport Beach. I only lived there for 10 years. I lived across the country. I lived in every time zone. I've lived in every region of America. I've lived in the South, the Midwest, the Northeast. I've lived in the mountain regions. I lived in the Southwest Desert. I lived in, the, I lived in Northern California, Southern California. Please give me credit. Please give me credit, man. I lived in the flyover states. Please give me credit, man. I'm just, my life was just not in Newport Beach. That was the last place I lived. And I've lived many, many other places. I lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Can I tell you something? If I take Baton Rouge and then I take a, another place that I lived in, Salt Lake City, Baton Rouge, most women are extremely ugly in Baton Rouge compared to Salt Lake City. Now, that doesn't have anything to do with race or preference. That's just a case. I can tell you I've lived in both. <laughs> it's not even that to do with race or preference or just the two locations in itself are extremes. You have extreme, it, 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 most of it kind of economically. You just have a lot of poor people and poor people outmate a lot of wealthy people. That's going to make more people in your area ugly and poor. And not able, again, a woman's going to say this. You're not ugly, you're poor. Some people have access to things that make them look more attractive. And they tend to have a better economic position. That makes them more attractive. But people got to travel. You got to move around. I mean, I'm telling you guys. People in your area that you think are the shit, they're, up, they're not. You, as soon as you move away or run away or move to another area, <laughs> it's, it's what it is. Anyway, he says, I live in New York City. It's a fashion show every day, for real. For real. Now, if you go to New York and you leave and you go to uh, Mississippi, you go to Jackson, Mississippi, then you go to New York. 
I mean, you're going to be like, it, it's going to make sense. It's going to make sense. And by the way, Las Vegas, in my mind, has a lot of ugly people here. And I'm one of them. But I'm just telling you, I lived in San Jose, California. San Jose compared to Las Vegas, people are ugly here in Las Vegas, comparatively. Like, I walk around, there's not many attractive people here. But that's based on, I know, in San Jose, the women that are sevens and sixes would be hot as hell right here. And they don't even know it. They, the, the, here's the funny thing about it. The women that are in San Jose that are average, they could be in Vegas and be an eight. And they don't even have a clue. They don't have a clue. <laughs> they, like, they don't even know. They're like, oh, damn, it's hard for me to find someone here. They can leave San Jose as a seven and be an eight and a half here. <laughs> that fast. Just a move. Just moving. Just moving. But Vegas is, oh, <laughs> I call people desert rats. San Diego, you know, they can leave San Diego here and be on the top of the scale here in, in Nevada. In Nevada, the entire state. But anyway, yep, I don't even go out to look for people in Vegas out here because out on the outskirts, once you leave the tourist areas, there's nothing else out here. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Where are we at here? Let's get back to the show. Oh, I was doing super chats. I need to catch up. Mr. Albert says, I, lo I love looking at the disappointment in women's faces when I tell them I don't want to get married. He says, I love looking at the disappointment in women's face when I tell them um, I don't want to get married. Um, the funny thing about it is, have you ever been do I want you to do this here. Have you ever been having a good vibe with a woman? This is going back to the compatibility argument. I'm kind of, I'm going to prove my case because it's Friday and I don't have an evening show. Have you ever been talking to a woman and you hit it off and everything was good? The, fl the flavor was good. You guys connected. You were compatible. It was like you were finishing each other's sentences. She smelled good. She looked good. She was excited to see you. You were excited to see her. Now, have you ever done this? You were perfect for each other. And you said, no, I'm not getting married. I don't believe in marriage. Or I'm not getting married again. I don't want to get married. What happens? What happens? This will tell you what relationships are. What happens when that happens? She going to immediately... She going to dry up like the Sahara Desert. Done. Now, why is that? That's going to prove my point. The compatibility was not important to her. It was about the transaction. She wanted the transaction. She's like, oh, okay, well, listen, we was having a great time, but that's it. I'm gone. Now, she's rightfully, she's right, she's right for doing that. She doesn't want to waste her time. She wants to marry. But what does that tell you? Is marriage about love? Because she had the love. Nope. She wanted the transaction. I need the transaction. This, that was all good and dandy. And we had some good sex and we had some good love. Most of it was her love bombing you. Most of it was her love bombing you, giving you access to sex, giving you access to love, saying she missed you acting like she was loving you and around you, and then the minute she wasn't going to get a game, she bounced. What, what do you call that? What do you call that? But you guys will argue me up and down that men and women are compatible and shit like that, and nobody pays, and that is, she basically said, this is a transaction. I want the love. I want the marriage contract or nothing else. Now, she was in it for a business, and she used what she was giving you as a means to get the transaction in the end. Once the transaction was not there anymore, she bounced. Tell me. Tell me. And not only did she bounce, she shut you smooth the hell off. <laughs> she didn't try to fight it. She didn't try to give you no better sex. She didn't try to say, okay, put it up, the, put the banana up the tailpipe and maybe you'll reconsider. She didn't say, maybe I'll be a better woman. She didn't fight for your love. 
She didn't try to change your mind. She stepped off. And not only did she stepped off, he said she rage quit. Not only did she step, step off, then she won't return another text message. She won't take another call. She won't walk outside the house and meet you for dinner ever again. It's over. Well, what is that? What is it? That's called a transaction. That person's looking for a transaction. And she probably was selling you what she wanted you to buy, right? She wanted, she wanted you to eventually buy her. And she was using that as a means to get you in. I'm telling you, man, listen. If you think I'm wrong, let me know. I'm, I'm proving my case. <laughs> yep, somebody said she'll marry anybody. At this point, she's looking to sell herself to someone, anybody who's willing to do that, whether it's compatible or not. She's looking not for compatibility. She's looking for, boom, transaction. What? Am I wrong? I know there's somebody in here straight up. This ain't right, and I, I, I can only tell you what it is. All right, look, man. <laughs> the regular dude says that ninja had wisdom to surgery. Okay, shout out to you. But day days, but day days, is that what it is? He says, Coach, uh, how would you bring women back into your life if you don't have looks and have become awkward after rejections? If you don't have looks and have it become awkward after rejections? Let me, I'm going to get back to that. I'm going to get back to that. Somebody said, Hi, it's bitter. It's, it's quite obvious. I mean, it's quite obvious. But again, I also know on her side why she would do that. I'm not trying to say she's wrong for doing that. I'm just, my message is not to women. And it's not to correct their behavior. I just, I just expose what the real is to men. It's not a, this is not a profitable thing, though. I could be way more profitable lying to women. All right, but I, but I can't do it. But I'm just trying to tell you. Call, I call a spade a spade. I'll come back to that other super chat in a minute. All right, but uh, let me come back to the show here. But you, you got to say where you'd be like, no, that's not true. I, I, I just don't see it. But you would have to make your case, by the way. Elon Musk's custody battle, right? Elon Musk's custody battle. Oh, damn, Elon Musk going through it. Henry, Henry, Elon Musk drags Grimes, I believe, is that her name? Claire Grimes. He drags his ex-wife's tweets into increasingly nasty, nasty custody battle. You simply hate to see it. All right, so for everybody going through some bullshit with custody battles, man, you're not, you're not the only one. Even Elon Musk is going through it. And Elon Musk, at some points throughout the calendar year, is considered the richest man in the world. Not only is he going through the bullshit, he dealing with it in the court of public opinion, just like your monkey ass. Nobody, no, yeah, nobody's different, guys. I mean, this is why I, I rarely, I really try to make this about me. I don't, I don't want to make this about me. I'm showing you the real. So Elon Musk is going through a nasty custody battle. Now, when you hear what his battle is, it's quite common to what a lot of people are going through. It says California love. Uh, the custody battle between Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, and his ex-girlfriend, Claire Grimes Boucher, I believe it is, is heating up as the dueling Canadians duke it out over whether or not the latter lives in Texas. According to court filings viewed by Business Insider, Musk has cited several of Claire's tweets in his case against the electronic artist for custody of their three children. Now, he's had some really, really difficult problems with his children, and I'm not going to pronounce these children's names. But what happened was Elon Musk lived in California. He moved his business to Texas. And I think they split. The woman stayed in California or maybe came to Texas with him, but then decided to move back to California, keep the kids with her, and then he wants to move the kids to Texas, and he wants the jurisdiction of the custody battle in Texas. Instead of California. And if you know, you know why. And it's going to explain why. Again, I'm in a similar situation. And you can see, it don't matter if you're the richest man in the world or poor or middle class. It's the same battle. It's all kind of pay for play. So right here, it says right here, um, for months now, months, the pair have been fighting over legal jurisdiction with Grimes insisting she and the children 
have called California home since the beginning of 2023, while the billionaire ex the billionaire ex claims that the case should take place in Texas. For each party, these jurisdictional choices make sense. California implemented implements much higher child support payments, whereas in Texas, Musk's payments for all three kids will be capped at just twenty six hundred per month, twenty six hundred and seventy dollars per month, which isn't even a drop in the basket for the world's sometimes richest man. Very little love has seemingly been lost between the two following their four-year relationship, three kids in four years. Musk's uh, latest legal play is to have the case decided in Texas, and it is a doozy, and if the judge and the judges in this complicated mess rule in favor, the woman may be shit out of luck. So this is a legal move for both of them, not just Musk, but the baby mama, because the baby mama's like, hey, we moved to Cali in 2023. So let me get that Cali child support. Mm. Yeah, the government is the problem. Remember, you got to talk about not only is the government the problem, the lawyers and the system. It is the system. So are women the problem here? Well, you can't fault the woman in this situation. You cannot fault the woman because if she gets child support in California, we would probably be looking at ridiculous maybe a million dollars a month I'm, i mean possibly five million dollars a month that's how it works in california this is going to be i mean then he would have all his legal documents open or they might have a discovery or subpoena stuff the lawyers are going to get major paid they're going to probably make a million and two million dollars if this case is hurt in california maybe even more and uh you're talking about for years because these kids are young so you're talking about $5 million a month for years. Obviously, Elon Musk doesn't want a part of that, and she does. She's just using the system. Elon wants to get that cap child support, $2,600 for everybody a month. Now, California is a damn gangster out here. It's gangster. So you can see this is why what's complicating the battle. Now, the sad part is these kids are the pawns. These kids are used as the pawn. Right, she's using the kids to extract money from Elon. So what is she doing? She's moving the kids strategically to certain places, and she's not the only one. Britney Spears' ex did the same thing to Britney Spears. So this is the system. Britney Spears' ex, Kevin Federline, moved to Hawaii, where child support is paid till the age of twenty-three, and he left California, where it stops at eighteen. So he was like, "Hey, I'm moving to Hawaii." Right. And then he got custody of the kids. She did not contest it. Now she has to pay child support until the age of 23. So you see this going on here. And uh, I shared this with you is because when you're going through this, I don't want you to stress yourself out. Yeah, it's effed up. But this is the system you volunteered for. This is messed up on a lot variety of ways because the system, the children are getting used. The children are getting used. And most of the time, it's the mothers doing this in order to capitalize on you. But guys, this is what this is what I warn you against. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just telling you, you should know about it before you do it. That's all I'm doing. Shaq's wife moved to California when he had a house in Orlando. She stayed in Cali. She got that Cali child support. Guys, it is, it is a system that is really ugly, but then... You know, you guys are saying, uh, again, it's not just me. You got Elon Musk <laughs> is even can't get around it. And he's the richest man in the world. So, guys, the, and this woman is basically a nobody, which in many cases, a rich man's wife is a nobody until he marries, until she marries a, a rich guy or at least becomes impregnated by one. And the kids are the pawns. This is sad. This is sad. Rich, and he getting his pockets watched. Man, this is crazy. My man said two taps. Um, Yeah, man. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I certainly wouldn't suggest that to go along. Uh, here's another one here uh, going on the Elon Musk argument. This guy in, I believe, Texas, maybe the, sto- the poster is from Texas. He found out. This is from a divorce attorney. Okay. He found out that the child he was paying child support for for four years was not his child and then a 
a an attorney is going to tell you what's up. All right, here we go. Where's the where's the where's the volume? All right. Um, for some reason, I don't have a volume. Come on, come on, give me some volume. I've been paying child support on this man for, for what four years, five years, and he telling me it's not my child. Yeah, this not your child, but I thank you for everything you're doing. But you know, oh, baby, we ain't, we ain't, it ain't going down like that. Why is not you want to know something that's funny? And it's not going to make you laugh? In the state of Texas, if this man found out that this child was not his, he could petition the court, have a DNA genetic test done on him and the child. And should it show that he, in fact, is not the father, he would have no further parent-child relationship with the child, and he'd have no further obligation to pay child support in the future. However, all the child support he had already paid and any outstanding child support and interest for unpaid child support would still be something he has to pay, even though he's not the father. This is not your child. What you mean? This is not your child. I've been paying child support on this man for, for what, four years, five years, and he telling me it's not my child? All right, and so we're going to show you two stories in which the attorney is pretty much correct. This is why we want to encourage the gynocentric court system and the lawmakers, which they'll never do, to do mandatory, mandatory DNA testing so we can prevent this sort of fraud. This is child support fraud. This is economic fraud. This is fraud. And she knows that the child's not um, is. She knew it, but she allowed this to happen. Luckily, he only got four years in. Now, in the case where you can do not have mandatory testing, you should always insinuate or ask that you get a DNA test upon every birth. You will find that women will object to this. They'll fight you for it. And one of the reasons why is paternity fraud is very rampant. All right, there's statistics on this, and I've done shows on this one. It's almost at 11%. And in some cases where paternity is in question, where you go to a lab, it's up to 30%. And some people said that said that's a low number, and they work for the labs. They said it's up to 40 and 50% in contested cases where the person says, show me and prove me. It's like 30, 40% of paternity fraud. So uh, the nationwide stats in America, we have one of the middle range to lowest is 11% confirmed paternity fraud. Okay, prefer, per, confirmed paternity fraud. 11% of births confirmed are paternity fraud, where the person, the father is not actually the father. All right, that's confirmed. I've done a, done, I've done a title, an entire show, and pulled the data on it. Now, in this case, if you did not get the DNA test, what will happen is, like he said, you'll have to pay for all of the arrears up until the point where you contested it. Sometimes, sometimes, you might still have to pay forward the child support. Now, that kind of is going out of style. But sometimes you might have to pay it even going further, especially if you live in a place where they really do do's dirty, like Detroit and Milwaukee and Cleveland. They do dudes dirty out there. So what they'll say is somebody got to pay for this kid. And they'll say, since you established a relationship as a father, you'll continue to pay. But those cases were very popular in the 80s and 90s when this system was being abused by these judges to actually um, to actually get the their buildup of their coffer of the Title IV D judges retirement fund. So the child support system inevitably is not what people believe it to be. It is, but it is basically a it's a it's a rating of funds and a matching fund system for from the federal government in which these states scheme to make someone responsible for these hoes out here and the women you're penetrating. So I mean, you guys got to really take this into consideration of what you're doing. In the case of Elon Musk, let's say he got a five thousand five million dollar child support per month um, obligation. Do you know that the federal government will give the state a matching funds for every dollar that Elon Musk pays? So the state benefits not only from the transaction from parent to parent, but they also get a matching federal government fund. And not only that, whoever the judge is presiding over that gets possibly a commission. The lawyers get paid and the judge's funds get money pushed into it for these retired judges to work part-time as commissioners and magistrates. It is a very, very dastardly system that people have a misconception about. 
They think it's just about trying to get dads to pay their obligation. And in some cases it is, but most of it is kind of getting these women an incentive to destroy families. And then they say, I can get money off of him and I don't have to listen to him no more. This is some sort of kind of human trafficking and basically putting a price on people's head, AKA via the social security administration, right? Social security number, which is what you need to have to build a case against someone. It is really, really a despicable, disgraceful system that they do against us. It's a form of chattel slavery or social institutional slavery because there's ownership and it forces you to work and get taxed double. It's really a system of a, yes. And it's a very, very dastardly system, but, um, but, but it's the system that we have one way you can, one gate, one way you can control it is the fact that um, you don't participate in it. Now, here's the funny thing here. Somebody's mentioning this, and I'm going to read it. How do you not consider this human trafficking of what people do to children? Say a mother moves a kid, or say a mother prevents a kid from moving with the father, and this could be considered human trafficking because Face Fact says 304s are vile creatures trafficking children for money. If they ended child support system, 97% of 304s would give up custody tomorrow. Does Elon have to put that spaceship on his financial affidavit? How can, how can you not consider this human trafficking? Where the kids are held against and kidna- kidnapping at the least. Kidnapping at the least. Where the mother flees, takes the child, and moves here to get a financial gain. That would be human trafficking. That would be that would be some sort of kidnapping. But, you know. But, you know, we allow this to happen. And then we don't check on the child after 18. So after 18, the child ends up becoming destroyed in the app in the way because the mother used the kid as a as a financial system, a tool. But did the kid get any benefit from it? I mean, come on. This is a form of human trafficking or kidnapping at the least. All right, but the, what I'm going to tell you is the system doesn't care. They, they don't care about this, and they have not your best interests at heart. You have to really control how you participate. I'm one of the only people, and I've been marked. I've been marked. I'm one of the only people willing to tell you this. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. This woman here, this woman here, there, there she is right there. Uh, this woman, <laughs> As you can see, she's on the Gordita list. All right. There she is right there. Somebody's Gordita. Uh, let's go ahead and find out what happened here. 5050 dad on Instagram. Rina Aragon insists Nicholas is the father of her 15-year-old daughter, and he's the only man she slept with when she conceived. Inevitably, we know that's not true. Marina says Nicholas made it clear from the start that he wanted nothing to do with her or her child. So she's eager to prove the truth to him today. Yeah, I'm here because we petitioned the court for a DNA test in regards to a 15 year old child to find out if and determine an established paternity if I'm the biological father of. Um, I am recently paying for full medical and paying child support up to date. Um, due to the past in 2001, late November, I had ran into Mar- Marina at her job, indicated that there was gonna be a party. Um, she agreed to come over to the house, which was actually out of town. Um, she brought a few friends with her um, yeah, at that party. Yes, um, there was multiple people. And at that party that she was involved with multiple you encounters. About dancing? Uh, there, it was a hands? party for Shaking like their yeah. hands? It, it was a party for a, It was like a party get together at the same time I wanted to invite some females over and she was willing and obligated to come through with her friends and she did so. But you say she was involved with multiple men. She was Shaking involved. hands? Uh, dancing? Sir, sexual encounters. Playing cards? Uh, she was in sexual encounters with. I well, was there. Many? I witnessed seven individuals. <laughs> seven individuals. Three oh, Mexicans, sir. a Puerto Rican, and three African Americans. All right. So it was an orgy, all right? Somebody was an orgy. Trying. All right, let's continue. That's no. the nationality. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, man. Yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> At that party, she did ask me if... Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's really, man. 
that got to do with it? Three Mexicans? Yeah, right. <laughs> Three Puerto Ricans or two Puerto Ricans yeah, and yeah. two black. There were no Irishmen there? Uh, none of those. No white guys? No, no white guys. Trying. Filipino? None of them. Indian? Chinese. Chinese? Trying. All right. And I don't know. Let me hear from you, ma'am. Let me stop him in his tracks and go Your to Honor, you regarding I... this party. Your Honor, I have no doubt that Nicholas is my 15-year-old uh, daughter's father. All the humanity. In 2001, uh, we did used to hang out. And then we had a one-night stand. Yeah, that brother's starving. Yes, sir, brother. Um, I did inform him that I was pregnant, and he didn't want nothing to do with me or the pregnancy. He's been going around acting like he's a detective trying to figure out who I slept with. Trying. Um, who, um, if my daughter looks like someone's mother. Do you even know that such party occurred where you came with a bunch of friends and um, he was at the same I did party? not go over there with a party. He he did pick me up from my mother's okay. residence, took me out there, and we wind up hanging out. Um, there was other people there mm -hmm. when I arrived, but... It wasn't like a sex party No, it was not. Like... Trying. A sex enough. party. Okay. No. Just a regular party. It was just a regular hangout once I got there. And, I, and he's been going around uh, calling me a slut. And so, how did we end up here today? Because he's adamant about wanting a paternity test and saying that she's not his and it all has to do with the child support how long has he uh, been uh, paying child support for the last two years all right uh, it says right here cliff note he went to prison which maybe jail received the default judge oh he went to prison and when he was in prison he received the default judgment for missing the court date which is what happens when you don't show up to court they'll issue a court date but unfortunately he's in prison I don't know why the prison didn't let him go to the family court. That's weird, but he missed the court date and they made a default judgment, which possibly it was the child is 15, but she probably could only go back two years. But if she would have, she would have been back 15 years. A little confused on the details. He's saying 15 years of child support, but I'm not sure yet. Here we go. Okay. No. And so that's what He's you believe the reason is. Yeah. Uh, you want to go and get the results for me, huh? Her birthday's May 20th. Well, I'm sorry, sorry I'm going to let that. you read this yourself. We'll get past all of that. You can go ahead and read it. Tell us what it says. Shoo-wee, baby. You are not the father. Oh, let me show you that. Can I show this to her, sir? I am not the father. 15 years I've been paying for a child that ain't mine. Now, watch this, guys. This is what you have to know. When it comes to women like this, he's not the pappy. No, you the pappy. I'm the pappy. She knew she lied. Women like this know they're lying. Even women who know the father, they're lying. He don't help. He don't pay. And they go in there and they ask and beg and plead with a straight face lying. She knew she was lying. She knew she put the child support on the wrong one. And she can't even admit that she was getting gang banged. But there it is. There's no penalty for this. There's no jail. Guys, there's no, as I told you in the previous clip, there's no reimbursement. So in the previous clip, we had the attorney say, whatever you paid in, you ain't getting it back. There's no credit back. There's no remorse. There's no guilt. She don't care. And she'll still ask this ninja for a favor and still ask, well, you should still take care of her because you've been taken. She knew. So there's no penalty for this. This is why they don't care. They can use and abuse this system. And if you were waiting for them, a woman to ever care about you, like this, I'll preface it like this. If you're ever waiting for a woman like this to care about you, you'll be waiting till you're dead. Watch. I think it's time that you go find the individuals that I did give you names of and find out the, the real father of this child and cut me loose from this child support that's putting, putting my family in a burden. She don't care. Now, you're going to say those are fake? For 15 years, my family's been going through drama. I'm shocked. All right, so she in a wheelchair, maybe too many. Trying. All right, she had too many orgies, and she got put in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh, no. All right. And, oh, I'm shocked. I'm very shocked. Um, this could have been all taken care of. 
Long time ago. Regardless of shocked or not shocked, you know I've been asking for these DNAs for a long time. It's been a long time coming. And hey, you know what? I'm not trying to bash you or anything, but it is time for you to step up to the plate and not only release me from child support so I can get my life back together, but you need to go find that, that girl's dad. She's missing out. She's going to be acting it's, out it's, and it's, missing it's, out until she a gets a father. Ago. Of course, Now she blamed him. You see that? She blamed him. She said, you could have taken care of this a long time ago. She blamed him. You could have taken care of this a long time ago, a.k.a. you could have got the DNA test to prove I was a liar, but you didn't. That's basically what she said. Did you hear that? I can't rewind it. She basically was like, yeah, I was lying. You could have got the DNA test a long time ago and proved, but too bad. Now, I wanted to let you guys know something. You know what's effed up about this is that um, Judge Mathis show, those cases, they might be legit, but they don't handle the court case. They don't handle the judgments. That's kind of just for, for an act for the most part. Like they, those cases are out of jurisdiction. It's just for a TV show. So sometimes they, whatever he decides is not the actual judgment. Okay. Like they can't probably in many cases, but you know, what's funny. She still has to go to child support. He would have to still go to his County child support. He would still have to go, uh, have her go to the County child support and hear that case there. And or she would have to go down and release the child support from him. He would have to go petition his area, his state, his county. And then he would have to get her to show up. He would have to have the same argument in court. It probably would take months, months. This probably would be on a docket. It would take three to six months of proving this new paternity test. She can deny it. She can say, no, he's still the dad. Because that's just a television show. She has to go to the county. She can say, no, that paternity test was false. And he would have to take another one, which she can make him do, or child support will make him take another one. He would have to pay out of pocket when she can literally go down there and end the case. But she won't. I guarantee you she will not. She can go there and say, take him off today. I can get, I'll bet you a steak dinner that she won't do it which means he has to reestablish the case, file it, pay for another paternity test, and, oh, by the way, he'll still be paying child support in the meantime. Mm. Right? He'll still be paying child support in the meantime. Even though they decided this on the television show, that's not what will happen in the real court. Right? He'll still be paying. And so he asked her there, release me from the child support. That means she still had control over it even though Judge Mathis proved that he wasn't the father. That was just for the TV show. Remember, all men pay. That, that's not a real court. All they did was decide paternity. He had no power to release him from the child support. All right, sad case, but I have to tell you all the truth here. Here's another one here, and then we'll move on. This woman says, let me refresh it here. This woman's going to say something similar. The so, look, Be careful who you're impregnating out here. Okay. Honestly, like that's a good-ass question. <laughs> The question is, how many baby daddies? So obviously I have three kids. I have a total of three baby dads. But like for my first kid, like two people think they're their dad. So I get two child support incomes. <laughs> and I have them both blocked on here. So I don't even got to worry about them seeing it. But like, can you mind your own business? Like, always in somebody else's business. If that's the life I want to live, like, what's the problem? What is the problem with six baby dads? Honestly, like that's a okay. So three children, three baby dads, but she's saying there's really six baby dads because two of the children, there's two men that think they're the father of uh, of each child of the two children. So she's scheming. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, you got to. And she's sniggling. I'm telling you, man, I, the one thing men have to understand is women will never care about you. If you find one that does, you might just have hit the lottery. But just give it time. If it's not that, they don't give a shit what they're doing against you. So there's really five to six men in total. There's three different baby daddies, but there's two men of each of the of two of the children that believe they're the father and got them on child support. Oh, no. 
good ass question. <laughs> so obviously I have three kids, I have a total of three baby dads. But like for my first kid, like two people think they're their dad. So I get two child support incomes. <laughs> wow, man. Wow. So two, uh, I think she said the first kid, there's two men that think they're the dad. I don't think she has them on the child support system because that would be discovered. So what she's doing is she has a deal with them. Now, I won't put you on child support, but making him pay the child support and, as a means to say, oh, wow. And she's laughing, guys. Boy, I tell you, man. And I have them both blocked on here, so I don't even got to worry about them seeing it. But, like, can you mind your own business? Like, always in somebody else's business. If that's the life I want to live, like, what's the problem? And so women think money is free. All right. So women think money is free. They never really realize that you worked for it or the tax burden the tax burden on the systems, right? This is why people have continuously said, I'll go down and manipulate, uh, manipulate the system. So they're using the system, but the system has uh, holes in it. The system is being corrupted and manipulated by people like this who don't care. So they say, I'm gonna go down there and get that money, it's free money. I don't have to work for it, but it's not free money. It's money that the man worked for. It's money that the taxpayers have paid, right? But they don't, guys, I'm gonna tell you, in the woman's mind, I understand that they don't care about any of these things. That's why they're always asking for stuff. Why don't you pay for this? And why don't you pay for this? Because in their world, that's free money. That's free dinners. That's free rent paid. All they had to do was open their legs or pay with their puss or bat their eyes. And this is where the system is being corrupted. So anyway, enough about that. We're going to get on to the next subject matter where a woman says, um, you're not ugly, you're just poor. And she's talking to women, though. She's talking to women. You're not ugly. You're just poor. Now, this also probably can go for men as well. All right. Most men are struggling out here in many ways, not because you're ugly, but because you're poor. But we live. We live in a messed up. We live in a system. This is the system. This is the system we live in. All right. So here's the woman right here says right here. You see it right there. You're not ugly. You're just poor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you're not ugly you're just poor so i gotta turn down the volume because she has music and as you can see she got them saggy waggies pressed all right sloppy yogurt at best uh but let's play the video uh right here oh my god you're so pretty i wish i could look like you you're a 12 out of 10 and i'm a four these are comments that she probably hears from women i'll never look like you i'm ugly compared to you and this is where she says look plastic surgery ten thousand dollars okay Botox and filters, $2,500. Hair, $2,000 for the cut and color. All right, this is nails, $300 per month. Personal trainer, $100 per session. All right, so in this situation here, I know this to be true. I lived in areas where I lived in the plastic surgery capital of the world where people, you know, if you went there, you would be like, these women are so beautiful. Guys, them women cost a lot of money. And most of the money they cost, they're not paying for it. They have a, they have a, a successful husband paying for it, right? And a lot of these women, if they didn't have access to this money, they would be average to ugly. But be, you would never see it, though. You would never see it. Now, me living there for a long time, I kind of grew upon me to realize that this was what was going on, that I could see women were not really that attractive, but because they could get the cut and color, the maintenance, the right haircut with great hairstylists, their nails were done, they looked good. It's kind of like they kept, basically they kept, they kept, Great care of themselves. This is why self-care is important. We talked about this for men. As we age, you got to take care of yourself in your 20s and 30s so you can get to 50. They're also on um, HGH, uh, testosterone. And she also says, I even forgot about the, I forgot about the implants. She says this here in the comments right here. Oh, I forgot to add my booby job that I captioned to the caption that was like $6,000 10 years ago, okay? So Miami, New York, this, this is what's happening. And so again, when we talk about international scale of beauty, typically women that move to these areas tend to have to lean on plastic surgery and then they tend to look way better than normal women in Boise. Boise women aren't getting any of these things. They got wrinkles on their foreheads, thus looking aged. So here it is right here. She's basically said, I'm manufactured. I don't look good. And here's the nose. I mean, as you can see, this is the average Millie Mouth muskrat. But very common right here. So, yep, 10K for that, 6K for the boobies. Uh, the, the, this is 2,500 probably every quarter, 
every quarter, maybe every, and there's the cut and color. All right. But most of the time they're average in the face. Anyway, there's the nails, nail salon. And this is why I say women are expensive. Personal trainer, yoga, Pilates. All right. She probably got liposuction too. I want to read what she got. Uh, it says right here, personal training, gel nails, bleach in town. Oh, extensions, extensions in there to match the hair color. Uh, Botox. Did she say however much right here? You know, I, you no idea what. Okay, here we go right here. Rhinoplasty. Nose job in Turkey. I don't even know what that is. Fixing the turkey neck. This is Miami, New York. So these are the things, even when we say the international scale of beauty. Well, if you live in a place like this, esteem-wise, to be able to put yourself up in higher rank, compete for higher tier men, some, a lot of women do this. A lot of women do this. And this does stem from a lot of insecurity uh, to the point where even uh, if you ever start dealing with women that are doing this or like this or Instagram baddies, has anybody ever experienced this? These women are very insecure. Very, very insecure, especially if they do multiple surgeries, right? Even when they get the surgery, they'll be like, yeah, but it's still, oh, I see a little dimp right here. Like they're very bad, almost to the point where it turns you off on beautiful women. It turns you off. It's like, oh, because they're, they're, they have a lot of low, they have a lot of esteem issues, self-esteem issues and insecurities. Um, and they're not really fun to be with. Like they're not fun to be with. They're, the only thing they give is that they look good and they're out with you. They're quite quite annoying, desperate, needy, and also in bed because they have these surgeries. Like they won't, they won't sweat their hair out. They won't, they won't, you know, smear their makeup. They won't, don't want you to pull their extensions. You know, they're quite uncomfortable with you laying on top of them because of their breast implants. They're like, oh, oh it, it's pinching. Oh, that hurts. Like, stuff will start hurting. Like, you can't just lay on top of them and, you know, go to town in child support position. Then they'll be like, you can't, you can't smack my ass because it's going to put a dent in it. I've, I've experienced a lot of that. And I'm like, and so they kind of just lay there so they don't want to mess up their hair and their hair extensions. It's, it's some sad shit to see. It's sad. And it's a real turnoff. Like, I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with this. Give me some natural saggy waggies. Give me a woman without all that. But you can't be rough with them because they have all of these things. I just got my, I just got my toenails done. I don't want to. Mm. <laughs> yep, they stiff. The titties all stiff. Sitting up on his like laying on top of softballs. It's really like, it's really like a turnoff, right? So it's really one of those things. But of course, in this situation here, she actually brings up a truth. A lot of women that are in good situations where they're well kept and they have good self care. A lot of them really aren't as attractive as they look. So we'll take that into consideration. We'll take that. In. We call them manufactured beaches. All right. We have another woman that's going to say the same. Here we go. Another woman here. Take, take this. Take a look at this one. Take a look at this one. I mean, come on, man. Oh, Lord, man. Look at this. Gosh, this is a horrible way to pause this. Take a look at this one here. Uh, how much how much surgery do you think this woman has had? By the way, we're in the element of where surgery is normalized. And a lot of women with low self-esteem can afford surgery or they'll sell some puss to get it. All right. How much surgery do you think this woman is at? You're, if you don't think any, because she looked like an average gordita. All right. But I'm going to tell you, she probably 10 times more uglier than she is if she wouldn't have had as much surgery as she had. I mean, she would probably look like a three. And she does with these glasses. All right. But this woman has had so much surgery. It's, a, it, it, it's mind numbing. Here we go. Okay, so my BBL actually got it on sale. Oh, <laughs> it was thirty five hundred, but I did cell saver and thigh lipo, so it was like forty one hundred. But then I lost mad weight, so I have injections. I paid nine thousand dollars for injections. I did my boobs with implants, which was six thousand dollars. I have like filler in my lips. I did a labiaplasty, which I cut off my lips, and um, I did filler, oh, in my and then I've done pee tightening. Hold on. Yep. I didn't know about the last three. <laughs> you just said like yeah, lips. Yeah. that's that's new. You can yeah you okay. So I mean, people can Google it if they want, but it wasn't bad. Like I had like it looked like a little heart, like a little creepy lips. It was like a little heart, uh -huh. but I didn't want it because in this industry, everybody has like that baby look. So I had my lips cut off, mm. and I put filler on the sides, so now it just looks like a little 
Like a fat poom poom. Poom poom. No. Like a, a macaron. Okay. Oh man, man. I tell you, man, you guys should be surprised at this at some particular point. Uh <laughs> All because she has an OnlyFans, I'm pretty sure. She's trying to... This is the monetized woman. Oh, the humanity. This is the monetized woman. Remember, we're telling you this. It's not just you have to pay. It's that they're paying to be in the system. A lot of guys get this out of, out of order here, what I'm saying about the monetized woman. So this is a normal... To me, she's normal average looking. But she probably was worse looking without all of this help. But she probably didn't need all of this. All, of to, all to either sell herself or to sell content to other people and or to attract low grade, probably low grade men. That's the only people probably paying to clap this. She's too fat for me, but that's neither here nor there. All right. She too kind of anyway. All right. But look at this. BBL is to attract low grade ninjas or maybe to attract the baller because ballers might be fascinated by a woman like this. They, they tend to be young men with money. Uh, but, uh, yeah, man, I tell you, man, boy, she even had the labia, the, uh, the vagina rejuvenation surgery, cut off the vagina labia, and then plumped her punani with injections. Now, here's the thing. This is what I'm going to tell you. A lot of people that are like this, they're not that fun in bed. I've been trying to make that point. I'm like, when you get that woman in bed, it's going to be, she's going to be like, well, you can't, you can't slap this. You can't touch that. You can't. <laughs> like uh this is sensitive you can't mess it up because you can't bang me hard because i got injections in my to make my punani fat and here's the thing a lot of women are doing this more than you know more than you know i mean it's out of control then you add the tattoo this is the monetized woman she literally has taken the regular self with money somehow given to her or earned or get uh, taken from men economically by selling herself in some form or fashion and then trying to keep this game going for as long as she can. I mean, insane. Insane. So my BBL actually got it on sale. Oh, <laughs> it was, was 3500 but I did cell saver and thigh lipo, so it was like 4100 but then I lost mad weight, so I have injections. I paid $9,000 for injections. I did my boobs with implants, which was $6,000. I have like filler in my lips. I did a labiaplasty, which I cut off my lips. I'm sh her lips look ridiculous as is on her face, but I'm pretty sure her labia lips look ridiculous now. And um, yeah. I did filler in my And then I've done piece tightening. Hold on. So piece leave tightening, she tied it. She tightened her piece lead. By the way, I was going to show you that there was a customs issue recently where there was some tightening gel that was, I guess, the, the government seized a bunch of tightening gel. I've never heard of this tightening gel, but apparently there was a millions of dollars of worth of tightening gel that was seized by a government and not allowed to be able to go be put out here. I'm telling you, women are doing shit like this and you have no idea. You know, a lot of women who are ethnic, ethnic, and not this excludes black women, meaning like uh, uh, Greek women or Jewish women or Middle Eastern women. Uh, a lot of them have nose jobs. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them have nose jobs. It's almost like a, a gift at age 16. Okay, they got nose jobs, uh, especially the young women of Gen Z and millennials. The, they, them faces of those specific ethnic groups, sometimes Italian, them women got nose jobs almost definitely. If, especially if they're attractive, like especially if they're like, wow, and they're ethnic, they got a nose job. Mm. <laughs> they got a nose job for shiggity. All right. And you're like, oh, you, you're, you're Greek. And she like, yeah, I'm Greek. She definitely got a nose job. If you think she hot, like Eastern European women, they come over here. They got nose jobs for certain. If they look, if they look like they're like, oh, you're from Iran. Yeah, I'm from Iran. You're like, oh, you don't look like you're from Iran. She certainly got a nose job. Armenian, yep. Somebody said Jewish ain't, oh my God. Oh my God. <sighs> Let me continue. We got a Greek and Jewish is not ethnic. Oh my 
I just, you guys pain me sometimes. You guys, let me, let me continue. I, these speed bump ninjas. Let me, let me continue. Let me continue. I, I, I don't know why, man. Do, do, you, do you really just look for me to say something and then just come in with your Jewish is not an ethnicity? You guys really be doing shit like this. <laughs> Does this make you feel better? You make you feel better? Is this, is, is this what you want to argue? I'm making a grand point. This is what you got. Let's, let's continue. I, I wish people like them didn't exist, but there's some people that don't have shit going on. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is me too here. Let's continue here. Let me get, is that the last video? Oh, we got one more. We got one more. Let's see here. Uh, is this the next segment though? Yeah, this is another one. Okay, we got another Chica. All right, I forgot. We'll get to the Super Chats. <laughs> yep, he called about, oh my Lord, speed bump ass ninjas. Come on, man, really? You have to type that in. You could have let, you could have let that slide. You don't have to type that in, bro. Because we ain't arguing that. We ain't got to type that in. <laughs> That ain't even part of the discussion. You can let the shit slide and keep it moving. But no, bird chest and then just, just got to be the one. All right, here we go. <laughs> we got another one right here. Here we go right here. Uh, this woman certainly, what do you think? What do you think here? Look at this. This woman is ethnic. <laughs> All right, here we go. I don't care what she come from. If she ain't Native American, this is an ethnic woman. Immigrant ass woman. All right, let's continue. The entire time like you're fucking, you're not thinking about the sex. You're thinking about like... Oh my god, my rent's getting paid. Bag, shoes, clothes, fuck. Oh my <laughs> lord. Only whores. I had a lot of OnlyFans people like get offended by this shit. Really? Yeah, a little OnlyFans bit. people. They're whores. Why are they mad? How many bodies do you have? I would say probably it's like a hundred. A hundred ever. Over? Two hundred? No, I think it's like one God. But it's like crazy because I got the hundred and sixty and I was like eighteen and nineteen. Okay, um, I be I be trying to prove these points. Somebody's gonna argue me. Eighteen or nineteen? Again, eighteen or nineteen year old women are legal adults. Again, I told you the story about the eighteen or nineteen year old son, a uh, man, young man, clapping his teacher's cheeks. Everybody said, "Well, he's eighteen, so no problem." But when it's an eighteen, nineteen year old woman, y'all guys are like, "Wow!" Well, they're adults and they're fuckable. I'm just that's what it is, <laughs> All right? People. People do it, and some people pay for it, and some women sell it. Some people don't. Some women are stupid at 18, all right? They feel like they're 12, all right? But here we go here. Certainly a manufactured woman, certainly a woman that has been sold, all right? And not only that, monetized, and she's, look at her. Come on, man. She's paid to monetize herself. I think she's the OnlyFans girl. She said here, while I'm having sex, I'm not thinking about the sex, which is another point that I made that women don't use sex for pleasure. Not always. They're using it to get something. They can almost be in another place. They can disassociate. I'm going to show you that point later. I've been making that point. So she even says, this is not just her. Wives do this too. Where they use the sex to get something or to reward or to apologize or for pleasure or for to connect to you. I've been showing you men this. I want you to understand that. She says, oh, and yeah, they've been giving up since 14. You don't just turn 18 and start doing this, right? You've already have to do this to lead up to when you get 18 and start getting paid. Some of you probably getting paid before that. These are things that people don't want to discuss because in their world it's not possible. So she's mind shopping, sound as joy. She's mind shopping while getting throttled. Don't think she's the only one. Don't think she's the only one all the while telling you, oh, you're great. You're doing good. You're the best daddy. I miss this. I wish we could do it more. Your wife does this too. Okay, come on, man. Come on, brothers. 160 body. I don't know how old she is. Somebody can probably find out. She's probably in the area of 22. But here we go, man. Here we go. The past, Hold like, on, wait a minute. The Pause. past, like, two years. I've you had hit sex. 160 at 19? Yeah. No, no, no. I would say, like, probably, like, the entire time, like, you're fucking, you're not thinking about the sex. You're thinking about, like, oh, my God, my rent's getting paid. Bag, shoes, clothes. Fuck. Your rent's 
do, motherfucker. All right. Now people are gonna say, how does this one wh- how does this one clip represent all women? I just tied the knot. I just tied the I just what do you got? I just tied all the loose ends. Your girlfriend does this. Remember the woman that says, Oh, we love we love each other. We're great. Okay, and you tell her, I don't want to get married. She done. She's gone. Why was she having sex with you? She was trying to lead you to marriage. That's a form of transactional sex. Soon as you say, I'm not trying to get committed. I'm not trying to be in a relationship. I'm not trying to get married anytime soon. I don't want no kids. She leaves. She cuts off communications. She doesn't work to better it. That's a transactional sex. So while she's having sex with you, she's like, if I have sex good enough, I'll get married. If I have sex good enough with them and often and make them think I love it, I'll, be, I'll get a commitment. <laughs> Come on, man. I'll try to help y'all. If you guys, don't, if, if you guys don't think I'm tripping, if you guys think I'm lying, you're going to have to prove that I'm lying. Right, and I did the whole sex thing for myself. Oh, uh, here we go. The sex you're thinking about, like, oh my god, my rent's getting paid, bad shoes, clothes. Fuck. Oh my! Oh man! Oh man! Man, man, man! Y'all, but the ego. Here's the thing about it. It's an evil world we live in. Yeah, it's an evil world. But with with it being said here, men's ego is not your amigo, right? Your ego is not your amigo. This is why I tell you, you kind of have to, in order to survive women, you have to detach your ego. This is uh, Not a lot of guys will do this. Their ego is t- uh, wrapped in the women. But I don't think you have leverage that you believe. You have to detach your ego when you deal with women. That is the only way you survive. Once I started doing that, it gave them less control. It kept, it kept the leverage in my side. So I don't care how ugly or attractive the woman is that I'm dealing with. It doesn't matter. It's inconsequential. I might say I can use her for her attractiveness. Okay, you're not really that great in bed, but I can keep you around and use you, maybe for networking, for appearances. Okay? So people can turn their head and look at, so she looks good in the 9 11. There's reasons I could use her. But to keep your um, uh, ego attached to them, she will ruin you, bro. She will ruin your ass by engaging your ego and using your ego against you. And then what you'll do, what you'll do is I'll find that once men become hurt, this is what hurt men truly do to women. If women want to understand what a hurt man does to women, a hurt man tries to get revenge on women. That's what a hurt man does. And a lot of guys that their ego is attached to the woman and he finds out she don't care about you at the end or she becomes ruthless against you or she does you dirty, a hurt man tries to get revenge on the woman. Thus taking his mind off the prize and the goal to where he's not trying to be a better person for himself. He tries to get revenge on the woman. And now he's taking his, because his ego's fractured. You see, pimps do this. Bad pimps do this. They'll go get the broad and beat her up and get revenge and hurt her ability to become an income producer. His whole mind is to get revenge. Now, what men, what women do is they get revenge on us. They get revenge on us. That's how they do it. When we don't get what they want, some women get revenge on you. Now, that is a female mindset. It's no point for us to get revenge. My ego wasn't in it, and you didn't get what you want. You might have got a couple of dollars, but I'm, you're never going to be where I'm at. So you lost me. I didn't lose you. I used you. You didn't use me. Or in a sense, my ego wasn't in it. We used each other, and I realized we were both using each other. So my ego isn't in it. But you, on the other hand, went, if you're a man and you lower yourself to the point where you're in an emotional battle with the woman to get revenge on them, you just lowered yourself to her level, which is the, what I call the emotional playground. You should never try to get revenge on your exes. It's, you got to let it go. You got to walk around, charge it to the game, and keep it pushing. Focus on the majors, not the minors. Ain't nothing personal. This just business. That's how you remove your ego, right? You see the woman with a better man, it fractures you, it kills you. This is a hard thing to do because this is not what you're told to do. You're not told to do this. You're supposed to put your love, emotions, and ego into the woman. You have to remove that 
and it's a it's going to be a better way for you to focus on the majors and not the minors. Okay, mm. women focus on the minor and not the majors. They'll they'll divert all of their attention and energy to try to get revenge on you. That's why they're petty and they do things and they do they use the system. You can't do that. It is not. He's most of the time just take the L. It's not that big of a deal to get revenge. By the way, most women don't really like themselves who they are, as we showed and demonstrated with all these manufactured women. They hate God and hate you. Why would you get revenge on her? Are you capable of getting revenge on her? That's the real question. Somebody says, what if the opportunity to get revenge presents itself? It shouldn't be that, much, it shouldn't be that important. The biggest revenge you can give them is removing attention and watch her destroy herself. Ninja, she going to destroy herself by you ignoring the shit out of her. Mm. <laughs> That's the biggest revenge. Becoming successful is the biggest revenge. While she watched that ship sail in a way and stuck on a deserted island. That's the biggest revenge and you didn't even have to focus on her. <laughs> you didn't have to focus on her. Success and ignore and watch her destroy herself. She'll destroy herself trying to get your attention. And you'll spend money trying to get uh, fight this battle. This is money well spent. Watch her destroy herself. She'll get sick. <laughs> I'm telling you. She'll destroy her own self trying to get to you. Trying to get you to hurt yourself. Or her to hurt you. Watch her destroy herself, man. This is, this is next level mindset. This is the after pill. We ain't out to destroy women. They'll destroy themselves before they get to you. <laughs> Just keep moving, become successful, and watch her get sick. You ain't even have to do nothing. Anyway, mm. let's get to these super chats. <laughs> All right, here you go. And you can tell her, man, you don't, you don't have to do this. <laughs> you don't have to do this, man, but hey. Yep, they hold spleen will go crazy. They'll lose kidneys trying to destroy you. They'll pull their hair out. Let them do it. <laughs> here we go right here. Ignore them. And she'll do everything she can to destroy herself to try to get your attention. All right. Anyway, never rage. That's their stuff. Let them do it. All right. Anyway, shout out to our brother. Kevin G says, coach, that's a fact. I'm 37 and I'm a future legacy ninja. I've been grinding like crazy and super close to freeing myself from the matrix. Matrix. I think TLA and a lot of us singles, childless, successful ninjas understand we're going against how we're raised and feel some sort of societal pressure to have kids. And um, guys, if you want to have kids, I know what people want to do. You want, you know, shout out to you. Men want to have a love child. I understand. Listen, I have kids, so I cannot tell you what to do. I never will tell you to not have kids. All right, I'm going to tell you what you up against, <laughs> right? And I'm going to be completely blunt and honest. And I showed you the good stuff. If you saw my yearbook, I sold you the good stuff. And none of that was free. If you think you're having free kids, you're an idiot. Kids cost a lot of money. Especially when you care about them. They cost a lot of money. Um, but um, I'm going to tell you this. A lot of you want a love child. You don't want kids. You want a love child. Meaning that you want a kid. Let's say you're curious and you're like, but coach, I really want to have a kid. And I say, okay, have a surrogate. Have a kid outside the country. Um, you know, uh, have a family. Uh, uh, adopt, adopt. No, I don't want to do none of them. You want to bust a nut in a loving manner and produce a kid. That's all you want to do. You want to fall in love. You're, you're trying to fall in love and using creating a kid as an excuse to fall in love. That's what you're doing. And you know the consequences to this. This is pretty much high risk activity, but go ahead. But when I present the other options, you don't want to do it. That tells me you want to fall in love and have a love child. Well, go ahead. Roll the dice. <laughs> That's what you're trying to say you want, all right? But you're trying to use that as an excuse. Go ahead. You can hire a surrogate and avoid the bullshit. Nope, you want to have a love sex and go deep inside her bottom, reach the bottom, skeet in her guts, and you want to have a, you want to have a love child. That's what you're telling me. At that, in that case, roll the dice. That's all I can tell you. Some, most men fail in this endeavor, statistically, meaning that, we're getting to the point where more households don't have a father 
let alone a father that has seen their kids go from zero to 17 into their 18th birthday and out the door. Most men don't even do that. If you're a melanated man, you have a slim chance of that happening, meaning you have a 20% chance of raising your kids from zero to 18 out the door. You have a 20% chance. Okay, that's a that's a big gamble. I'm not telling you not to do it, but I'm just telling you that's going to be an uphill battle and it's going to stress you the hell out. All right, you're probably going to be on child support if you're a melanated man. If you're a regular American, if you want to say, not, not that melanated people are not regular, but you know what I mean. If you're any other economic, uh, ethnic group, including whites, you have a 50-50 chance. It's 50-50. If you're a Latino brother, it's a 40% chance. If you're American, white, you have a 50% chance. If you're Asian, you do have a higher chance. If you marry an Asian woman, you have a higher chance. Your, 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 your chance is 80% that you'll be there. So, <laughs> it's, he said 20% is too generous. Yeah, that might be true because it's a very low percentage, especially if you knock up a young strag. All right, it's... <laughs> Anyway, uh, it's a it's a thing. It's a it's a reality. I just want to paint the reality again. But twenty percent in the grand scheme of things, we're talking about still millions of people that do this, right? So twenty percent of the event, what the one hundred million people. I mean, you still got a there's twenty million people doing it. So it's not like it's a small percentage. Of, it's not like it's a small amount of people. But again, the percentages are percentages. <laughs> All right, here we go. You got to have to really get lucky to make it work. Dr. Thunder says, like laying on softballs. Yes, I messed with this chick who had breast implants, and her breast implants were so hard, they felt like softballs laying on top of her chest. It was quite non-arousing. <laughs> it was not arousing at all. It kind of made me got get not aroused. Shout out to... uh. The Vorke David says us beggars got to eat too. And man, let's get together here after uh, the calendar year. We got some ideas. Juan Primeras, replay gang yang all week while I'm on my grind. Shout out to you, coach. Shout out to you. Thank you, brother, for being here. Um, Shout out to Terrence says you're so right, coach. I don't be at home mostly out working. So there you go right there. Mostly people just doing shit. Do real shit. James Davis is in the building. Appreciate you. Renz Cash says paying my dues. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, brother. Uh, Craig Coleman says, G. Carlin. George, oh, George Carlin said it was a big club and you ain't in it. Facts. Jones G., 90% of people are born to be prey. Let them perish. <laughs> That's doom and gloom. Right? Oh, the humanity. However, <laughs> I love it. He said 90% of people are born to, pre, born to be prey. Let them perish. I cannot disagree with that all right wow did i get uh steliano says people try to stop me at every turn cga they can't yep ninja you focus going away bruh uh wow he says 90 percent of people are born as prey let them perish wow and that cannot be uh further from the truth i mean that's that's actually true i mean the mighty bull says my astrology my astrological sign is taurus the bull he says new york thank you coach shout out to you Henry Resilient XQC spent 100000 on legal fees and still has to sue to get his car back in California. She's not giving up the McLaren because her name's on the title. <laughs> yep, survival of the fittest. Predator prey, apex predator. There's a hierarchy at all times. And you lucky that humans discover gunpowder, even the white devil slave master, <laughs> right? Of it was because the white devil slave master got gunpowder from Asia. We live in a somewhat a first world system. Had it not been for those sequence of events that caused people a lot of trauma and strife, we would be running from buffalo, alligators, there'd be snakes, we'd be in huts and teepees, we'd be fighting each other, scalping each other. <laughs> it just would be. Ninja think there's a utopia. We be living off the fat of the land. Ninja, we be running from herds of buffalo, coyotes and shit. 
saber-toothed tigers, woolly mammoths, wild elephants and boars, uh, javelina. Gunpowder was a great invention, although it did turn to people to do some dastardly shit. We wouldn't have running water, nothing. Mountain lions, bears, like that would be outside. We would be like, you know, there's bears and coyotes and cougars and shit. Like that would have been it. And that would have been nothing we could do. <laughs> we wouldn't have no recourse. Ninja would be out here with our bow and arrow getting eight. Women would be having a shit gnawed off all the time. Women would be in check real quick. <laughs> right? Rattlesnakes, cobras, coral snakes, king snakes. We would be out here all day, all day, just going outside like <laughs> gunpowder. Gunpowder changed the world. Now, it did, again, there's pros and cons to shit. But uh, we would not be out here chilling like we chilling. You wouldn't even have time. We wouldn't even have time to create a building. Ninja, the Cougars would have been out there. Rawr! By the way, we probably wouldn't have been able to move across the United States continent. We would have to stay over there on the east side of the Mississippi River because the people who crossed the Mississippi, they had to face all of that shit. <laughs> right? That's the American story, but the Mexicans had it under control. It was like the chupacabras out there. And the Havelina. These people wiped all this shit off the earth so we can live in the desert and have air conditioning and flowing water. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. You got to look at things. There's a, there's a price for freedom. There's a price for freedom. Some people got to pay and be on the wrong side of history. <laughs> all right, but that is he, neither here nor there. All right, drunk history with CG. Oh, by the way, this was 170 years ago, Ninja. This is 170 years ago. All right, anyway, it wasn't that long ago. We could have just been out here all messed up. All right, let's get in here. <laughs> all right, here we go right here. Uh, they got rid of people too, but that's neither here nor there. A lot of people got rid of. That's a sad story. All right, anyway. Mm. Yeah, not everything's a perfect system, but I'm here. All right, shout out to Deshaun Rose. You mentioned my city again, coach. Detroit, Michigan. All right, what do we got here? Face Facts says 304. I already had that one there, but you're right. You're right. He's going to go to Mars to avoid that, that spaceship, that, that child support. All right, Glenn Ponce. Glenn Ponce? He says contributions to the most account stream on youtube but i'm gonna tell you the best account on stream on youtube shout out to you all right uh sb 57 says facts he says i have a flat back love bomb me i had a flat back love bomb me trying to speed things up and move in with me i told her we should take things slow and that i wasn't ready for that long story short she ghosted me yep oh by the way um a lot of older women uh, a lot of older women are steeped in the ability to manipulate via love bombing. I know a lot of guys, they say, well, older women are better than younger women because they don't play games. You guys are fools. Older women are very, very good at manipulation. They, they are, they're tactical with it. And all you have to do is ask her her history. She was married, divorced, married, divorced, two baby daddies, baby daddy, single mother for 12 years. What do you think? She just sitting there and you fall in the gold mine? She know how to say the right things. She know how to give you that punani without, she know what to do. She know how to squeeze her insides when you bust to make you, <laughs> she know how to do all this shit. She know how to, it's a family show. I can't talk about it. And they are good at love bombing. They got this shit down to a science. Now, what they cannot do is get ninjas to commit because you run around and get them guts up and then she progresses fast. The next step is, and they'll buy shit for you. And old women buy you stuff. And they give you the sex. They don't withhold. They just go right to it. You don't have to wait. They come naked to the door with their saggy titties in a robe. I mean, I, I get it, man. I, I understand. That's all manipulation because what's going to happen is as soon as she does that, 
she gonna within six weeks she gonna you either gonna move in with her she gonna try to move in with you she texts you on say all of, she never argues with you everything's easy cool she spend money she pay half of the chili bills she take you to Applebee's I get it she bought you some Jordans I got it but these women are master manipulators at love bombing as soon as you cut that shit off you ain't gonna hear hide nor hair or see hide nor hair of that woman she out you don't give her that commitment you don't bring the salami Johnson on delivery she catch you out with other hoes you don't want to have moved her in she don't move in with you. She cutting that shit off. You think these women are just nice to be nice? Jesus. She playing game. Why you wanna play your games on me? She a master at this point. <laughs> she a damn Jedi master at manipulation. They don't play no games. Are you crazy? <laughs> they know how to play games without looking like they playing games. Mm-mm-mm. But anyway, they masters. And the reason is, just look at their track record. Print out the whole facts. <laughs> Yo, but I, I see videos of guys like, man, you know, older women. I'm like, okay, they look nice. They cool and all that. Yes, they good at sex. And they'll swallow your true serum. Then They'll do some stuff these young girls will never do. Right? They come right off it. But print out the whole facts. Print it out. You're going to see. She collected all the child support. Her child support ended two years ago. Her lease about to end in four months. Um, she about to get laid off her job. Uh, her, her, her teenage son, her, her adult teenage son and daughter still live with her. Um, <laughs> she just got money and, and time. She's love bombed 50 ninjas on Tinder and Bumble. She got, she had sex with all of them ninjas and tried to get the commitment and they dipped. <laughs> Why you wanna play your games on me? But she wanna text you all day. What are you thinking about? And what would you do when you see me? I can't wait to see you, baby. Uh-huh, come on, sugar honey, baby. All right, man. Yep, she got student loan debt. Come on, man, ninja, please. <laughs> yep. Ninja, please, man. Yo, you work for UPS. All right, anyway, let me get back in here. Let me get back. And she ain't been able to get one ninja. She, you're going to take the deal that not one person is taking. You're going to suck her up and take a commit. You're going to commit to her where many other men have never taken that deal. They were smart enough to take it. And here you are. Man, I found the one. <laughs> okay, yeah. Good luck with that. Did you go ahead and take that deal? Nobody else is taking that deal. Not a one. Look at her Instagram posts from the last five years. You're going to see memes of her getting her heart broken and stomped on. She love bombed the ninja. He left. Look at her memes she posted for the last 10 years on Instagram, fam. This woman been doing this shit for years and decades. Please. You, got, you taking a deal nobody taking. Ain't nobody rushing to marry her. Ain't nobody rushing to move her in. Ain't nobody rushing to be stepdaddy to her snotty nose ass eight year old kid. Ain't nobody trying to. Nobody nobody but here you are man they don't play no games i got lucky okay mm. <laughs> yep our car about to get repossessed yep nobody taking that damn deal they gonna beat her guts up but she's gonna be like i just want to know where's this going and you know i'm not the type of lady to mess around out here and okay oh it seems like it's time to go <laughs> i know people hate me man y'all hate me Yep, Larsa Pippen. Who was about to marry Larsa Pippen before Marcus Jordan took the deal? Let me tell you. Nobody. Not a one. But here come Marcus Jordan. <laughs> it's always a ninja. Nobody was about to marry Larsa Pippen. Everybody in the building. She walks in the restaurant. Ninja scatter. She walks in the restaurant. White people scat. White men scatter. All right, they don't even, they like, uh-oh, here come them. Like she a damn loose cougar. Like she a cougar off her leash. <laughs> Everybody with common sense run. Here it is, Ninja. You show up with your scraped sexual ass 
and your homeless ass and you need a PS5 having ass. You see Larsa Pippen and you see gold. <laughs> when the previous men pumped and dumped, busted, discarded, and properly just put her in her place. But here you are, thinking you got something special. <laughs> All right, you took the lob anyway, Pippen the Jordan lob. All right, anyway. All right, here we go right here. Come on, man. I'm trying to teach, man. I'm trying to teach. Shout out to uh, AC says, that lion Gordita looked like Danny DeVito and Batman and Ninja still hit. All right, um, JC says, the mere fact you need DNA tests to tell uh, tells us the truth about women. Facts. I'm, I'm way behind. You're true. The dictator says, mm-hmm, coach. Coach, tag me in on the last three I'll be the step dummy for the wheelchair Gordita. Yikes. The regular dude, the whole, the hoes in Cincinnati got BBLs and come right back to the hood. No reality shows, no script clubs, just right back to these streets. The BBL is the international symbol of attracting low hanging ninjas. I mean, I don't even know why would you do it. You would do that to yourself. I mean, you really trying to attract poor men. Anesthesia boss says last night, my mother said in law, um, the in-law grew up in an Italian Jewish part of Long Island and admitted in the late sixties, she thought her girlfriends were getting black eyes from abuse, but realized it was from nose jobs. There we go. So there it is right there. I've seen this. I've seen this way too many times. I grew up with this. Uh, the real fit style says, guys, please don't interrupt the show with your dumb ass comments. Coach is trying to help us. Right. And I'm also doing four hour shows. If I say something that is really minor to kind of speed through the point, it's kind of dumb to, to type in something like that. It's, it's, it's more disrespectful than anything, right? You know what I mean. I'm just trying to speed through the point, all right? But we ain't got time to be, like, accurate like that. Well, they're ethnic. We don't have time for that. Thick Anime Thigh says you are doing God's work and saving men from self-destruction. Keep it up. One of the only ones, JC. I had to throw in a tip in the change bucket and on watching women destroy themselves statement. He says, walking away completely is good for overall mental health and productivity. I don't wish them bad, but I know my growth is killing them. All right. The biggest factor that men have, the biggest weapon you have is walking away. To the point, if you walk away, you'll get ridiculed for it. And I'm talking about everybody, not just girlfriends and shit and wives. I'm talking about everybody. Turn your feet 180 degrees and get the dipping, and watch the bullshit. You left, and I can't believe you left us like this, and you should have did this, and you should have stuck it out. I'm going to tell you, in theory, they're right. Sometimes this could be a family member, and in theory, this is right. But in practice, this is wrong for a man. This is absolutely wrong. Because what they want to do, they want you to do is major in the minors. I'm not a major in the minors guy. If you're having a crisis or a problem, many times I can't help you. You're refusing my help or it's a waste of time for me to help you because you're not going to get helped. If you are blaming me for your crises, wouldn't it be best that I'm not around or to sit there and let you get this bullshit to try to rule me into your personal crises and what people are having are personal crises. Right, It could extend from trauma or something that you've done, but they're having a personal crisis. Can this get solved? Is there an end game? What are you trying to do? Most people are trying to manipulate you or blame you or be lazy or they're trying to do a variety of things. You have to do the, I got to walk away from this. It's a, but people will tell you, no, nah, you need to get in there. You need to get in there. Nah, I ain't getting in there. <laughs> right, that's on you. All right, that's a you problem. And you're going to find out this major factor. Once you bounced on them and walked away, you're going to find out that nothing changed. They still fucked up in the head. And it ain't your fault. They still going to be fucked up or they going to claim to be. And I'm like, and I ain't even around. So obviously I wasn't the problem. <laughs> See, if I was the problem, you would get fixed once I bounced. <laughs> right? I mean, wouldn't you get fixed? I'm not there to fuck you up no more. You, you're fixed now. But you find out that they're not fixed. They don't fix themselves. And you're like, ah, so you still messed up. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, man. So you're having a personal crisis. Fix it yourself or get work done. All right, I'm out of here. You ain't about to get in there. And one more thing for you young men. If you meet a woman that is like this, depressed, they're anxious, they're stressed, and uh, you think you can fix them, I'm going to tell you, do not do it. Don't do it. Don't try to fix them, fam. I love a lot of young dudes. I used to do that. And the woman would be like, well, I'll do it. And then then you're like, oh, baby, well, I'll never do that. I'll never disappoint me. And then you'll stick in there and try to help them. What you're going to do is you're the next blame victim. You're the next blame. Because this person has unreasonable expectations of people and others and themselves. So what will happen is you think the other person that they're talking about messed up and didn't help them, you, they were just the next person that stepped in line to blame for their bullshit. So then you just going to get the next blame. That's all you're going to get because you're going to try to fix, and then you're going to realize, oh, damn, she had unreasonable expectations of me. And then guess what? Then you're going to be like, oh, and then, and then you're the other reason why they fucked up in the head. Oh, hell no. Mm. Nope. Do not do it's a waste of your time, ninja. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. If they're claiming for all their lives, every man, their daddy, their mama hurt them. The teachers gave them F's because they hated them. They coach cut them from the team because they didn't like them. If you run into a person like that, let them alone. She blaming she or he is blaming everybody on she or he is blaming every one of their problems on somebody else their boss didn't understand them their mama thought they was a hoe man you better leave them bras alone they ex every ex-boyfriend harassed and abused them ninja they ex-husband uh, uh didn't care man please, you better run away from that broad do not Pass go. That is a you. She's a useless human being. More than likely at this point, she needs some fixing. Let him go. Let him go. Do not. I had to learn this. I had to learn this. I I walk smooth. Okay. All right. I see what this is. Get away. These people are. Yep. They have no accountability. And you just gonna be the next person. You're gonna be the next victim. Leave them alone, fam. It's not. It's not gonna be a pretty sight. All right. We got a couple more. Uh. Shout out to our brother here. I can't pronounce this. Oh, first sin says your success will burn them slowly. Discipline is the best attribute cultivated. Cultivated. One more point on this. Um, if you ever get blamed for an issue, best thing you can do is walk away and maybe fix something about yourself so you don't hurt other people. Don't stick in error and be the person, the reason why. Oh, you did this to me. Okay, all right. Well, I'll leave and work on that. I'll work on that so I don't hurt another person, but go get some help. But I ain't about to stick in there, all right, and fix myself so I can fix it. No. It's just so most people need to just separate. And people refuse to separate. And that's a sign of weakness. For some reason, they got to hold on to this person that, that violated you in many ways for a lot of time. Women typically do this, but there's some men that do this. This person is toxic towards you, and you guys are going to work it out together. Ghetto love, and love will conquer all. Man, we're toxic, okay? Best thing to do is to, I'm over here, you're over there. I work on myself, I heal, you work on yourself and heal. But y'all try to work that shit out on it. Or if you could just be less abusive, and then you like, if you could just give me some more sex and attention, man, no, walk away. Weak people keep attachments to other people. Weak people stay attached to other people. To try to work that shit out. There's way too many things to do. And more people on this earth. For me to stay with a person. That either believes I'm toxic. Or who is toxic to me. A sign of not abundance. And a loser as if. And women typically do this. They stay with toxic people. Like come on man. Mm. How you staying with. Struggle of. You ain't got nowhere else to go. Bitch you homeless. What, what What's the problem. Why you stand with struggle love? <laughs> but people do this, and I, I think that's a sign of weakness. And they'd be like, well, it was, uh, what do they call it? Stockholm Syndrome. If you don't shut up, <laughs> you, 
you know sh- Stockholm syndrome. No, you're a lame and a weak person. You're either weak or strong. You're weak. <laughs> <laughs> right you're weak okay because there's no black or there's this is black or white you either strong or weak you're a weak motherfucker all right that's what it is just say it what it is all right ain't no stockholm syndrome you weak <laughs> all right it's crazy man y'all wild y'all wild Y'all be trying to blame everything on some terminology because somebody came up with it. Okay, weak link. You weak-minded ass. All right, uh, nobody got no guts out here, I see. All right, I think I got to move on to the show. This might be a long show. Sheldon says, Coach, immigrant men new to the country and naive are prime targets of older women in love bombing. Facts. Naive, they're, they're, they're going to be love bombed. You guys got to watch out for love bombing women and men. Ladies, watch out for love bombing men. This is a poor quality, but what it is, it'll appear like the person likes you, but they're manipulating you. All right. Men who are, why are men frustrated? Damn. Is this the main event yet? I'll speed through this, I suppose. Maybe I'll skip it. Let me see how many skits I got here or any videos I got. Oh, boy, men are frustrated out here. How many things do I have here? I might save these for the next show. Oh, my goodness. Boy, there's so many. There's so much good shit in here. Y'all want to ride with me or what? So much good info in here. God dang. Uh Uh-oh, something went wrong on this YouTube channel. All right, so that, uh, did they delete it? Am I still live? All right, there was a clip missing. I don't know what the clip was, but it's no longer there. All right, ride with me real quick. Here we go here. Let's speed through it right here. It says men, men's real problems. All right, why men are frustrated. Here we go right here. Oh, hold on for a second. Where's it at? Trying to build a life with a woman who's only good for two things. These women today have no interest in building a life with any man. It's not on their mind. It's not on their heart. It's nowhere on her radar. She has no interest or desire in it at all. Okay? She's only good for two things. What are those two things? Those two things are looking good and feeling good. Looking good to your eyes and feeling good to your doc. That's it. So you're trying to do something serious and you're trying to build something serious with someone who's only meant for fun. They don't care about building anything. Look. Pay attention to the attention that a woman has throughout her life. Her attention is on looking good. That's it. And intensifying your lust for her. You know what the problem is? The problem is that too many of us are out here trying to build a life with a woman who's only good for two things. All right. uh, This guy got his sweater from Express. I know an Express sweater when I see one. Not trying to diss. Looking at the first two comments... Should tell you all you need to know. This woman says you should have picked one yesterday. Okay. And this woman says right here, I want to know who hurt this man. All right. I'm sorry she hurt you. I'm sorry she didn't work out. I'm sorry. But you can't translate that to everyone. Of course, it's the who hurt you syndrome, which is women acknowledging that women hurt men. But, uh, you know, you're, you're just too weak now because you allowed her to hurt you. So hurt people hurt people. That's basically what that means here. And those are the first two comments. That's because people have responded to them and they're at the top. All right. So um, the guy is just talking about his venting, his frustration. And no, not all men have talked to all women. So now he's frustrated with the current state of the monetized marketplace. Some women are like, hey, uh, sucks for you, which is an indicator. I, I'm just letting you know women don't fit. They don't care about your feelings. As long as we're expressing good feelings about them. All right, then they care. If we're emotionally uh, intelligent and it can allow them to be heard, they care about feelings or your feelings. If their feelings are to do what? As this, the person said earlier, where the, the woman said, I don't want to be called out for my, for my bad things here. Where was the woman here? This woman right here. She was like, uh, no, I'm going to go on the defensive. You call me out. We, we don't care. I'm not working on me. All right, work towards me. All right, come to me. So in this situation here, frustrated men are only 
valuable if they work on themselves to get back into the marketplace and 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 help women along. If you're not going to do that, go away. Don't be heard. Don't care about your feelings. You got hurt. All right. Big big deal. Hey, you didn't get the girl. Sorry, it didn't work out for you. All right. Pay your child support. All right. You a deadbeat. I mean, this it becomes the name calling situation here. Shame shame um uh, sign language, if you will. I can understand why men are in this position. One of the reasons you're in this position is because you're being priced out. A lot of people don't understand this. Not a lot of people will be able to get priced in. But this guy's ego is attached to women, and he thinks women care about him and his ego. They'll destroy your ego, amigo. You're getting priced out. So you think there's some mythical woman here that you're going to meet somewhere in Cleveland or Cincinnati and you're going to fall in love with her and you're going to have this loyalty and these days are over ninja I'm just I I hate to keep saying it even old women that ain't the case even women at church that ain't the case you're getting priced out it's okay though um it is what it is this is going to be Mr. Abba Daba Daba one and two this is Chad Ochocinco and Shannon Sharp listen to grandmotherly advice from Chad Ocho Cinco's, um, yeah, he's broke dating. That's what's happening. Uh, Chad Ocho Cinco's grandma. Grandma always told me you're gonna meet women, and women gonna come into your life, and they gonna always have somebody from their past that will always have access to them. One person, yeah, one special you, person. There will always be one person that will always have access to her, no matter what she says to you. And another thing she said Damn. was, every time you date somebody, you always have to remember you are really not the one she want to be with. The one she really want probably just wouldn't get his act together. Damn. Yeah, eight of them two things is stuck with me forever. My grandma always told me. You're going to meet women and women going to come into your life and they go always have somebody from their past that will always have access to them. One person. Yeah, yeah, one special you, person. There will always be one person that will always have access to her no matter what she says to you. And another thing she said Damn. was every time you date somebody, you always have to remember you are really not the one she want to be with. The one she really want probably just wouldn't get his act together. That's uh, this. Uh Oh, we have a woman in here. That's a lie. <laughs> she said, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's not true. She's loyal. <laughs> There's a loyal woman in here. Guys, this is a fact. All right, this is an absolute fact. In fact, I've actually tr- challenged you guys. I've actually challenged you guys. I want you to do this. Go to a couple. Your grandma, if your grandma's still alive. For you young then, just go to your nana. Go to big mama. Go to the person that you think has the most loving relationship possible. Go to the woman. Go to the woman. Ask that woman before you marry Papa. Were there any other men that you dated that you were considering marrying or asked you to marry? You're going to be floored. You're going to say, huh? When you hear the answer. Because your grandma. The one that has the relationship that you want is going to say, yep. There were one or two other men that were in the picture at that time. Yep, your abuela. Because I know people are going to say no, but I'm going to I'm going to bring it on home. Yep, there was another dude. that I was talking to dating, fucking, having a kid with thinking of having a kid with. There was two other guys that were in the picture. One was singing doo-wop outside my window. One I was with and I left him to be with your pawpaw. My high school sweetheart, but he went off the war. I still eternally love him. And that was at the time your meemaw was about to marry your pawpaw. Now they've been together for 30, 40, 50, 60 years. But in the background, before they got together, there was somebody else. Percy Earl, right? Percy Earl was in the picture. It's the truth. And the reason why it's the truth is that's in our situation. We're no different than our grandma and grandpas. In our situations, this is our life. We think grandma and grandpa lived in a different time in in Pleasantville where one people paired off with one people and were together forever since high school. 
and nobody cheated. Traditional. Now, our grandkids are going to listen to our stories and they ain't going to even believe it. Now, my grandkids, unfortunately, are going to see me on the show talking like this. Hopefully, that's not your grandkids. My grandkids will get confirmation that I was out here at the junior college. (laughs) However, your great-grandma, there was another ninja at the juke joint. Da-na-na-na-na. 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 Your grandmama was a whole flapper. Your grandmama was out here in these streets. In these streets. Your mama was in these damn streets. <laughs> your mama, when your granddaddy went off to the Korean and Vietnam War, had another man coming over, Percy Earl, taking care of the kids and the family. I got money. And today, we're in the same boat. So we are someone's grandma and grandpa that they would be like, oh, grandpa and grandma, they such in love. They belong to each other. They have the love I want. Do you guys want them to know what you really was like out here? You hoes and skeezers. You at Jody ass ninjas. You clap cheek ass ninjas. You pump and dumpers. All of y'all. All of y'all. You jerk off ninjas to prawn. You are your grandparents. You, you just don't know the shit that they were doing. So in essence, yes, every woman has always, before they married, they had a one guy, maybe two, that they wanted. And they, uh, I'm going to give you the ultimatum. He said no. She went right over here. (laughs) Your grandmama, your mama, before she married your daddy or procreated with your daddy, there was another ninja. And she said, well, this man's about to uh, marry me. He, He gave me an engagement ring. You want to try one more time? And he said, no, nah, man, fuck you, bitch. And then he went, she, okay, you give me no choice. And then she went on to the guy that got married. You know how many people that is? Please. Mm. You know how many people that is? I just want to check on you and see if you, one last time. Man, please. This is an absolute fact, but people don't want to talk about it. Let me go on to this one right here. <laughs> we are our grandparents. We forget. Your grandparents didn't fall in love and stay together for 60 years, please. All right, I mean, you guys crazy. Somebody said even a fat woman can do, yep. All right, anyway, this woman says, uh, this is men that are frustrated. It says uh, financial analysts on CNBC implied that legalized sports betting could be blamed for young men not getting married, not dating, and not having sex. <laughs> All right, I'd love to hear that. Uh, so legal sports gambling. You notice they blame it all on men, but I'm going to bring it on home. And it's all Jermaine Fox. It's always Jermaine Fox. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. NVIDIA and its performance this year, DraftKings has doubled that performance. And um, you understand why you have this massive secular wave behind it. So the negative impact is that it's all young men. And I parallel that with or dovetail that with Pew Research, which says that 63 percent of young men are single. And that's the highest it's ever been. And 50 percent of those young men have no interest in dating, not even casually. And 30% of those men, or 30% of young men, say they have not had sex in over a year and don't seem to care. So the point is... Because they're getting pleasure out of sports betting and sex. No, no, no. They're not getting pleasure out of sports betting. Women aren't getting money from men. All right, that's basically what's happening. That's what she's saying. Men are on here dating and getting married. They're putting their money in sports betting. Now, again, sports betting is not the healthiest thing to do. But we're blaming men not getting married on betting sports. No, if they didn't care, they they care where that money is going. All right, she tried to explain why DraftKings is going up and Bitcoin and XRP and all that shit going up. These men keeping their money and not giving it to us. That's basically what she's saying. Let me continue with this. 
Here we go. A sports bet. Well, it, sports betting now be, be, through technology is as easy as buying something, ordering a pizza online, or shopping online. And what you see is uh, young men who've grown up with gaming are used to doing everything on their phone, and now they can do all sorts of betting on their phone. You can do uh, you know, real-time parlays on, on their phone during a game, and it's been explosive. So if you look at um, the growth in, and so, so DraftKings says that-, that <laughs> I don't think she believes what she's saying, so I'm gonna give her this right here. I can do some shuffling too. Look out, man, what you gonna do? Look out, boys, it's coming through. Yeah, man, yeah, man. Now, before I, I before I go back, I, I, I this is the funny thing about this. I mean, I have to kind of defend men here. Not many people are defending men. My question is this: Why is it always men's fault? Right? It's and it's all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine. And I want you to listen because because while yes, men are out here, they're they're walking away. They're not cooperating. They're not as easy. Yes, there's available porn, prawn. There's available video games. Yes, we heard it all. There's avail- Now we're sports betting. And that's the reason men aren't getting married. But what about this? Is, could this be the reason why men aren't getting married? Because young women that age are out here. Only fans. Instagram. Attention on a TikTok. Dancing. Ninja Day for sale. Sugar bake. Let me, let me go back. All right, they out here distracted by Facebook. They out here botching themselves with surgery, selling themselves to the highest bidder, riding a carousel until 25, 8, 28, 30 out here. Wait, let me play this woman right here where we can get to it right here. Not that ninja right there. All right, of course, they paused it right when this ninja got a long tuck. All right, manufacture. It, it can't be that. It, th- th- it can't be that where this guy, of course, I... They pause it on this guy right here, too, when they going back and forth here. But I don't want to see these guys. That's who I want to see right there. It can't be any of this. Girls just traveling, living their best lives, shaking their ass for the Internet. It can't be that. No way it's that. All right, who are, who are men supposed to marry? This is who they supposed to marry. But, of course, they too busy doing the splits and shit on Instagram and hoeing and getting flued out. It can't be that, though. It's because of sports betting. <laughs> like, it's because of video games. Why men ain't getting married and set up. It can't be the economy. It can't be this shit. Nope. It can't be her doing the splits on the floor for everybody to see. Millions. That can't be it at all. It can't be OnlyFans. It can't be strippers. It can't be out. Women out here don't want to go to Cheesecake Factory. It can't be that. At all. It's ninjas betting on sports. Right? <laughs> it's men betting sports now. It can't be because of OnlyFans, where they mil- girls are making $50,000 a month. It ain't that at all. That ain't it. That ain't it at all. It's sports betting. <laughs> Yo, what? You know, they've doubled revenue every year, expected to double revenue over the next three years. But that's just on the existing states. So the most populous states don't have legalized online sports betting or sports betting, and that's California and Texas. So if those come online, you've got double, triple the type of revenue um, uh, adjusted EBITDA. So, but what this means for housing then is um, you have the lowest household formation growth rate in over 60 years. It could be longer, but that's as long as the data has been com- uh, comprised. And so you have young men who don't want to date and young women who are spending their time really with with Instagram moments, going uh, to the Taylor Swift concert. Yep. Yeah, okay, say it. Yeah, they, they want to pay their own way to go to Taylor Swift. I don't know if you've been to them. It's all yeah. filmed about yourself at the Taylor Swift con- uh, concert. So, so they're not getting married and building so homes. Mar- so, so it's men's fault? That's men's fault? Because women got going to Taylor Swift? And Beyonce and shit like this. Beyonce and Taylor Swift robbing them blind. All right, to go to these concerts. Man, this is wild, isn't it? All right, let me see. I got some more here. We're speeding through it here. Why men are frustrated. Is this one, this is why women are frustrated. What are we doing here? Uh, let's, let's play this one here. Let's go to this clip. We got a clip of 
this clip says Michael Jordan's daughter, but I don't think it's Michael Jordan's daughter. I don't want to say it is, but it says Michael Jordan's daughter exposes Max Christie. And if you don't know Max Christie, he's a rookie for the Lakers. All right, but why men aren't getting married? Now, this doesn't represent all women, but young women want to have fun. Headphone guys, protect yourself. Here we go. We have an hour. Can we get right into it? And I said, we have a time limit? I said, I'm not going to come then. You can't fun for an hour? No. He said, right when you get here, can we get right into it? Like, sometimes he expects me to, like, just fuck me. Like, no. That's what he expects. Like, so what? You wasn't going to do that? No, I didn't do that shit. Was I like, like and then he added me on Snapchat because I didn't come. Wait, who was it? You didn't come? Nah. I'll tell it. Who was it? Max Christie, fuck you. Because you got a girlfriend, you be adding my bitch back to fuck her. Yo. Even though you're not getting any pussy from her. Because she's more respectful. Max, I never even heard of you, nigga. How the fuck, how the fuck you a basketball player? I never even heard of you. You're a fucking rookie. Mm. Nigga, your ass. You're fucking, fucking ass. Like your personality, bitch. fucking ass. Oh, he saw we <laughs> Men aren't getting married because of sports betting or could it be because young women are out here being skeezers in these streets on snapchat and they're being talking to blue check marks and all the all the blue check marks swooping up these women by the way this is definitely a what knows job or a future knows job but again we got this clout chasing we got this young women who are I guess nobody's what you would say thinking there's somebody because uh, somebody is trying to date them or fuck them. And men are the problem because of sports betting. And the dude, the simp hating on him, he in the NBA ninja, you don't have to hear about him. He one of the what? How many NBA players are there? 350? He one of the 300 best at the moment, 50 best basketball players in the United States. All right, come on. But men aren't getting married, but these hoes is out here hoeing. Come on, man. Clout chasing, talking to every ninja on Instagram. All right, come on, man. What are we doing? We have an hour. Can we get right into it? And I said, we have a time limit? I said, I'm not going to come then. You can't fun for an hour? No. He said, right when you get here, can we get right into it? Like, Sometimes he expects me to, like, just... Fuck me! Like no. That's what he expect. Like so what? You wasn't. Yeah, like- yeah. The carousel is wild, man. The clock, the cloud chasing is wild out here. But me- this is why. This is why. Uh, men, men are frustrated as well because they're seeing this and they're hearing this and all of that stuff. Uh, let's see here. Man, boy, I got. I'm, I had so many clips here. This is too much. Let me see if I can add this one right here. Okay, this is for you guys on the marriage or dating girlfriend sex. Let me know what you think about this. We roll in the day. It says right here, I'm disgusted with having sex with my boyfriend. This happens. I, I tell you, this is going to be happens. And I, it's gonna, you're going to see why. You're going to see why. My, and it's not that she's entirely wrong. My boyfriend always wants to have sex with me, even if we don't really have a place to do it. Recently, he has convinced me that if we're quick, no one will notice. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Honestly, though, after a couple of minutes of him doing his thing, and me not feeling much but pain, I just have grown to hate and resent him. He always guilts me into it. He says, like I say no, but then he'll ask again and again, which I always say pressuring is not a good thing, to the point where I just give up. This woman seems young. He says, sometimes he has to leave right after we have sex. Okay, well, boy, this might not be your boyfriend. And once I'm alone, I just start bawling my eyes out like an idiot. All right, so this is kind of what men and women are going through. They do sound young and stuff like that. She says, I'm ashamed and embarrassed that I don't have a backbone. I will try to be better based on our answers. She says, when it's good, it's really good with us. We have a similar interest, and he adores me. Though, when it's bad, we both shut down and kind of just wait till the other one reaches out. We have been together for a while in school, but ever since we started having sex, I felt like an object to him. All right, so... What do you think is happening here? All right, this this is a young couple. This is a young couple. I don't think this person can be older than 22. All right, this is an example of the good women right here. So it sounds like the guy, she's making sex available, and he's getting it. She's not, well, let me stop there. And then also, he's also leaving her afterwards because he gets it. He busts his nuts, and he gets out of there. 
and he might have other stuff going on. He might be cheating. I don't know what's going on there. And she doesn't know how to process this. She doesn't know how to say no and stand her ground. And so she's trying to work through this trauma in this bad relationship. She said it's good, but then when it's bad, but she's sticking around. She doesn't have a backbone. She admits it. Okay. Now, somebody said she has. I'm going to tell you what she's, what's happening here. And I mentioned this the other day. What's happening here is she's not getting a transaction for it. I know it. people will fight me on this. She doesn't get. She's not getting a return on the investment. That's where she's pissed. I mentioned this the other day. You move in with your girlfriend, first two months, you'll be banging like jackrabbits. After that, she's going to feel like, what am I getting back? She doesn't feel like she's getting something back, a.k.a. transacting. So he getting his nut. She don't want to do it. She's kind of shutting him down, and it sounds like they weren't having sex initially, and then they opened up but she's not getting something back in return. And that's where she's mad. She ain't getting the aftercare. She's not getting the cuddle. She's not getting the love. She's not getting the extended commitment. She's not getting his presence. Then she's not getting, she's not getting something back. That's why she's mad. And this is called grape now. Yeah, it's now, now it's grape. Now it's a sexual assault. She's even acknowledging this is a sexual assault. He busts his nut, get up, put on his white Ewings. He's out the dough. All she might get is a rubber on the flow. Because he's ready to hit the road like Mario Andretti. And now he got it. She's opened up that sex picket. He uses her. He is using her. He bounces. She's not getting anything back. So she's now pissed about that. That's what she's pissed about. And I'm going to tell you, I'm breaking it down for you. That's the transaction is not there. So therefore, she's getting used. And she can't cut him off. Which again, a lot of weak people can't do that. And she acknowledges she has no backbone. So now she's stuck with this non-transactional sex and she doesn't like it <laughs> right and consent revoked yep consent revoked that's what's happening here all right i'm gonna skip these right here and go to the next subject matter which is uh don't give her your energy gentlemen right here this is kind of the main event why men why men what is the title of it why men should not work that hard to get women no this is going to be tough that might have gone with that segment why men should not work hard that hard to get women. By the way, did that man work very hard to get that woman that he's having sex with and bouncing on and leaving her there? No, not really, but she cannot leave him alone. Let's go to the next one here. This is a guy. Uh, wait till you see this kid. This is from Israel Padilla. Shout out to you for making another appearance on the CGA show. It says right here, when you go on a date with your friend, this is a, a friend. These are another young couple. So we've all been young. Let's pay attention to this video. You like her, like find her physically attractive? No, we, we co-workers, bro. We were ex-co-workers. So, but still, like, to answer, do you find her physically attractive? Yeah, of course. Do you find her physically attractive? Obviously. Now, how come, has he ever asked for your number or anything? We have everything. Have y'all kissed? No. no. I'll fix this, no problem. Well, since I, I feel like y'all like each other, would y'all go on a date with each other? Sure. I would. My nigga. <laughs> well, tell him, tell us his face. <laughs> ask him. Usually, usually it's the guy I can't saying it. ask you. Let me stop this right here. This is a young couple. We've all been young. I've been young and dumb. And yes, I've been, you know, there's been times you've been uncomfortable. You didn't have no game and all of that shit. This guy needs some game. So what's happening here? They were coworkers, they're friends, and they're kind of just innocently patching themselves up to them. And they're standing around here. He don't know how to open his mouth. She don't know how to, what to say I, either. And they needed Israel to put this together or it gets worse. But how hard has he worked? How hard has he worked for her? Only, only really just in the friend zone. They talked, they hung out, and innocently these young people, they, they haven't really worked that hard. This is good love, young love story. But they haven't really been able to cross the line, and it's kind of more frustrating than anything. But he hasn't done a lot. He's just been him. All right? And in that friend zone, and probably watched her get throttled by Chads. But here we go. Let's let's hear this part right here. This is crazy. Yeah, she got somebody said it. She's got a roster. She's definitely got a roster. Here we go. Why not? <laughs> hey, this is supposed to be a guy thing. This is supposed to be a guy thing. All right, just say it, bro. Just say you want to go on a date with you me. You want to go on a date? Where to? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, never, I'm not from around here, so I don't know. You got a name place. Say I don't your, know what's around say here. Say your bro. car, bro. <laughs> 
My car is in oh. College Station right now. I actually, I drove him here. Y'all yeah. wanna hang out? You wanna hang out with her in her car? We, she drove me here. Oh well, yeah, but like, but one on one time, somewhere else. I'm about to leave. I ain't like what? This got to be the no game having ass ninja. Now, this is where I say you need some game out here. This ninja got no game. And both of these people are dumb. Please don't procreate. We don't need these two creating any kids. This ninja game is on empty. He on E. Oh, my. And he been set up with the whole ninja. You set up with the damn Unbelievable. You set up like you can't be set up with a better setup than this. <laughs> oh man. Oh, he's slow. Would you like to hang out with her one-on-one -on -one in the car with her? In the car? Yeah. What? Why not someone? Why else? not just one-on-one? Oh, one-on-one, -on -one, but you have to pick him up since his car is at college. We can go back to my friend's apartment. One-on-one. -on -one. That's where we came from. Alright, would you like to hang out with her one-on-one -on -one at the apartment in her bed? Short hey. Kings matters. I like that. Would he be down? Sure. Would he be down? Yeah. All right, give a kiss. He's in this. And that is how it's done. Do you like her? Like, find her physically attractive? No, we, we co-workers, bro. We were... Oh, man. Sometimes you can be goofy out here. You don't need to get... Sometimes you can be a goofy and win. <laughs> sometimes, you can, sometimes you can make no effort and win. And... Uh, guys like this, obviously he's tall, so she might have a thing for tall guys. Whether the fact that he's skinny, broke, or any of that, and at that age, tall, he's a really tall guy. He gets his foot in the door, and he gets to get in there. All right, get the green light, absolute layup. And he made no effort, and he probably ain't ever going to make an effort looking at his ass. He dumb, so he ain't going to make no effort, but he got the girl, right? Now he's going to lose in a lot of things in a lot of areas he's going to have to learn. But you guys are out here working for attention, working for this. You hoping the whole see you. You trying to get your game right. And she over here with Goofy. Mm. <laughs> All because he tall as a motherfucker or whatever it is. Or they at an association. You don't got to work that hard, Ninja. And he going to bust real quick as soon as he get in them little guts. All right. But anyway, uh, in this situation here, in this situation here, she wanted him more. Then he wanted her. And that's how that dynamic is going to be forever. All right. Anyway, he just stumbled upon some cat. Let's go with this one right here. This woman's got an interesting rant. Let's pop it up here. Probably why I'm going to be single forever. Not really by choice. It's not about being insecure. It's about staying the fuck in your lane. Because honestly, when it comes to the whole finding a wife thing, a lot of men want women to cook and clean. And I'm just like not going to fucking cook and clean. Cook. Like I've been eating canned fucking tuna for the past 15 years of my fucking life i'm not cooking for myself why the fuck am i gonna cook Damn, for you so I get why you would not want to choose a woman like me to be your wife i i don't really look like a wife either I'm, I'm pretty i get it thanks to mom and dad shout out to big g but like i am not prim and proper I'm not gonna be a trophy wife okay uh my hair highlights yeah that's the most type of upkeep that i do i don't even shave my legs i go months without shaving my legs so i don't i I am a DJ, okay? Travel the world. I get paid to party. I'm around men. No one's gonna fucking take me seriously. No man that wants an ambitious woman. They lie. Women with ambition are women that can't be controlled. You have a voice. Your voice gives an opinion. Men don't like women to have opinions. So in conclusion, amongst a lot of other things, I just feel like I'm gonna be single forever, not because of me not choosing men, but because men not choosing me, because clearly, I just don't make the fucking cut. Uh. Yeah. And unfortunately, she's a nice, pretty Puerto Rican chick. She has a receding hairline, but that's neither here nor there. But she too mouthy. And what you'll do is, I can make it work, coach. But she's making no effort. She already told you she ain't going to do nothing. She ain't shaving her legs. She ain't shaving her armpit hair. She ain't giving up her career. She ain't getting her, not stop being around ninjas and partying. She's a DJ. All right, she got a six head. She ain't going to lose weight. She not going to cook nothing but make tuna. 
All she gonna have is that tuna in between her legs. Right, man, please. She's 5'11". Somebody said she's 5'11". Now, here's the thing about it. She's not talking about, she's not talking about some men. She's talking about a specific man. You guys, she ain't talking about. So she's like, I'm going to be single forever. And at the same time, she's talking about the guys that she sees out here in her element, her orbit, the top tier men that are not willing to put up with her. And also, she's not going to do make any extra extraordinary effort, even for those men. Even for those men. She's like, don't expect shit from me. This is why we tell you. This is why we tell you. Yeah, she's around music artists, entertainers, and bouncers, and security, and club promoters. And she's not talking about you. <laughs> she's not talking about you. So if you show up, she ain't trying to discipline herself for you. Basically, she's saying, if you're a regular Joe Schmo, you ain't getting a damn thing around here. That's what she's saying there, okay? <laughs> she ain't talking about me. She ain't even talking about me. She looked me up and down like, uh-uh. Okay, she's talking about billionaires and shit like that or whoever that is, uh, R&B artists. And she was like, I ain't even going to work for them. So a lot of guys will try to make that work. You'll come into her life. And she's like, mm-mm, mm-mm. I ain't try, I'm not trying to do that and change my life for you. This is why you don't give up your energy for her. Indeed. We got another one here, a married woman. She's going to put perspective on what? The things that I tell you about married people. Okay, coach, one clip doesn't represent all marriages. Well, I keep showing you 100 clips. Here's another woman that's going to tell you exactly what I tell you happens in most marriages. Let's go. Some of you guys out there want to be with a partner for life, which nowadays is a really long time. And yet you are terrified of the idea of things being really bad for five years out of the duration of your potentially 75 year long relationship. If you plan to live a long time, even in the duration over a 50 year long relationship, you think five years is really, really bad. My husband and I have been together for 12 years and we had a period that was five years where we did not like each other and we did not want to have sex with each other. And during that time we would schedule things. Let me stop right there. Let me stop right there. I warned you about this, right? Matter of fact, this falls on the timeline. I'm going to have to start pulling the timeline on the marriage wheel. This falls exactly on the timeline of the marriage wheel. She said we were together for five years and then five years and they've been together for 12. That falls right on this timeline. Right here. My partner were together. We connected. We invested. We got bored. We didn't know what to do. The attention was off of us. We had a five-year drought. <laughs> yeah. Five-year drought, a.k.a. bait and switch. We didn't like each other. Even Michelle Obama, whether you think whatever, even they experienced this. Look it up. I presented it. There's all marriages going to go through this. Most men don't and women don't know what to do. There's going to be miscommunication, um, you know, avoidance, no sex. You'll have to schedule routines. You'll get busy with whatever you're doing. People will have their own hobbies. People will just, oh, we're married. Hi, hi, hon. Here it is again. But of course, the way I say it, people lie. Oh, you, you ain't right. And then I show you this is this is it. This can happen to the average, normal, regular person. Now, she's going to say how she got out of this, okay? Because most people end up getting divorced right here. And you know she was getting her, th her tonsils buttered by another ninja during this year. Because look at her, all right? She got the sex appeal haircut. You know she was pulling her ponytail back. And they went through their affairs, they cheated, and they end up just staying together. Most married people are in this boat. They ain't loving each other all the way through 12 consecutive years. It's impossible. You're going to go through a point where you're both annoyed with each other, and you're like brother and sister and arguing and not having sex and not touching each other and exploring. Five-year, seven-year itch, blah, blah, blah. Kids are, this is the reality of what it is. It ain't no fantasy, no fairy tale. At all. She don't have clear skin. That's a filter. But that's neither here nor there. But nobody got no, no sex for five years? <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. 
Um, before that, things were awesome. After that, right now, things are awesome. Things have been awesome for many years. But there was a period where we were both like birds that were molting and we were not sexy and things were ugly. And a lot of people in my position would have left and I wouldn't blame them. And I just happened to be very glad that I stayed. So I'm glad that we stayed because they, in my opinion, this is what I'm going to tell you about marriage. The people who can survive this, they get the reward of what marriage is. Most people are too selfish, men and women. What they want is this fantasy and this constant state of happiness or euphoria or, or the, fa the fantasy. And then when it's not there, everybody quits. Year five, year seven, year 12. But the true reward of marriage is to be able to have your family extend where you raise productive kids and your kids have kids. See, that's what marriage is about. Then when your kids have kids, you can enjoy your grandkids. That's the reward of marriage. Not this fantasy bullshit. Not this, we should always be having sex and love each other. We're always going to agree. We're never going to argue. One person's not going to mess up. Your wife's going to mess up. You're going to mess up. You're kind of supposed to survive that because that's what the vows are for better, for worse, for rich or for poor, for sickness and health. But what people are doing selfishly is, oh, it ain't going my way. I ain't happy. Cut. Now, she's actually right. But y'all want to sit up here and think marriage is about monogamy and nobody going to touch. I guarantee you both of them were cheating on each other. In that five years. Yeah, they want to graduate from the marriage. The true reward of a marriage is a lifetime of sacrificing and risking and reward and and disagreements and somebody went bankrupt and your husband cheated or your wife spent all the money up you supposed to survive that that's what you supposed to survive unfortunately because that's all marriages but what people do is and he did this and she did that and he wouldn't and then y'all break up the whole legacy and lineage and f your kids up but they was having sex, just not with each other. So she is right. But I'm going to tell you, most people hit this and they were like, what? This is wrong. This is not supposed to happen. Bullshit. And who's pulling the plug? Women. 80%. The marriage is supposed to survive that. It's literally built in the vows. Now, nobody wants to deal with that reality. But again, I'm only here for the facts. The vows say you're supposed to go through the bullshit. But y'all want a fairy tale, right? Y'all want a fairy tale and keeping score. And he did, and he did, and he didn't, and she didn't, and he did. All right, and now you blow up the legacy. So in essence, what happens is a lot of guys don't want to give this up. My women don't want to give this up. All right, anyway, anyway, let's go up to the next one right here. Five years not touching each other. Y'all better, yep, he says year seven and 11 are the worst. Really year five through 15 are not pretty. Mar year five and 15 of most every marriage is a damn dumpster fire, right? But that's neither here nor there. All right, anyway. Now, if you don't want to get married and deal with this, there you go. That's the, hey, look, this might be the, and we have to not shame her for telling the truth. She told the truth about the realities of marriage. Most people are going to deny it. And I, for me, I wouldn't want to do it again. I wouldn't do it. All right, but she told the truth. That, that is what marriage is. It's a dumpster fire. It's hard work. It's a mess. It's putting up with shit. It's not really liking each other. You really don't like each other. There's going to be a point. Michelle Obama even said it, okay? And I know a lot of y'all people who are against me, even Michelle Obama said she did not like Barack for all <laughs> conspiracy theories. Let's put him up for rest. But, he was the president in <laughs> this bitch. I didn't like him. She said, I couldn't stand. And he's the president. Ninja. Hey, hey, guys. Guys. Ninja, it don't matter who you are out here. The way women work is they're very selfish or women who are definition women. I don't care how you want to say it. She couldn't stand Barack for 10 years. Much of this was when he was the president. I'm going to let you know, Ninja, marriage is impossible. Women are impossible to please in a marriage. I would not even put that as a top priority, right? 
he Barry, I mean Barack. <laughs> new, 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 new world order. Barack was the president, and she up in here monkey wrenching him. Throwing a monkey wrench in it, and he's the president. Guys, you guys have no chance out here. Why? Because their fantasy, their fantasy is never the reality. You can't win. Their fan. <laughs> she got tired of him. Never mind. I ain't gonna say nothing, Ninja. I'm on the watch list today. New, 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 new world order. Yep, compromising is always fun. But guys, you're putting your energy into people who cannot be pleased. Let me get through with this right here. We got a couple more. Got a couple more here. All right, damn, what happened to my clip? All right, here we go right here. Let's go with this woman. No one wants to feel like a like free game because no one respects her man. I don't know what the hell that's talking about here. But here's a woman here. Obviously, man, these women are not marriage material. I don't know what's going on here. Like, like the, the American woman, you guys got to start doing something here. Uh, who's who's going to keep these people serious? Who's treating these people serious? This this woman is on Instagram with her in a bathrobe with her titties. <laughs> I can't take these people seriously, man. But of course, because we are in the simp epidemic, she gets attention, right? You know, she gets paid and, you know, she's a legal hoe. All right. And she also wants love, too. Let's see what she got to say. I'm saying this for myself, and I think I can speak... For all women, when I say this, women want somebody that's respected. I have to be with somebody that has some type of respect. I don't need nobody feeling like they could play with you and they could try to talk to me and it ain't going to be no consequences. I need to feel like no one's allowed to talk to me. And I mean, when you're considered attractive, it is going to be people that's going to try it, but... I want them to feel like they got to scatter like a rat when, you know, they find out I deal with you. And you don't got to be this big gangster or anything that's terrorizing the city, but you got to have some type of respect. Like, you got to be a, a solid, good person that people just know not to play with. No one should feel comfortable trying to talk to me. Women don't want that. I'm saying this for myself. Now, I, I want to just acknowledge this. Somebody's going to say this doesn't one clip doesn't represent all women. This woman said, I'm going to speak for all women. Just take that in consideration. Mm. Now, we know she can't do that, but she certainly said it. I'm going to speak for all women. So don't at me when I break her ass down like a fraction. First and foremost, this is how y'all niggas get killed out here. Because this bird brain. And she's manufactured, too, because she definitely look at her skin and her lips. And we, we know what it is. You're supposed to be the big bad wolf out here. <laughs> While you putting your life on the line. Yeah, you supposed to be the big, you supposed to be, uh, you supposed to be Sugar Ray. You supposed to be El Chapo. You supposed to be top dog out here. So that you scare away ninjas. As she's naked on the internet. Mm. The Bible has warned us about women like this. Yes, will we ski? Yes, will we pound? Yes, will we clap cheeks? Yes. But you're, su yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be, in her world, the woman's supposed to be so secure, feel so secure and safe with you, that you're going to chase away men all day while you out here and she getting felt on and hit on and yeah you supposed to be Suge Knight with these women while she's out here scantily clad broadcasting across the internet and she spoke for all women just so you know what this can't be real you can't get listen Tukey Williams with a PhD. The Bible says, do not give your strength to a woman or your ways to which destroys kings. This is Proverbs 31, 3 through 7, and I'll repeat. Do not give your strength to women or your ways to that which destroys kings. 
this woman is a king destroyer and she ain't the only one. You supposed to be out here. You supposed to be out here with all of these women that right. You supposed to be out here shooing away ninjas, but she out here hoeing. What are we doing? You can't do this, but got simps are going to overlook this. Somebody says, stay away from ones who think like this. This is unrealistic. C says right here, it's a combo of unrealistic expectations and boredom that will get a man hurt. You trying to get killed out here with this skeezer and she must be a night person. Are you kidding me? But a lot of guys will do this. This is what the sip epidemic is. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to, no. No. She's a king destroyer. And she's already probably got a graveyard full of ninjas. <laughs> right? That she done destroy with this mindset. And guys, this mindset is very prevalent just along the way of the, look at, look at this. These are destroyers of kings. I ain't going to do this and I ain't going to do that. And I just, and I, destroyers of kings. One clip. Wait a minute here. Where's the other one? Destroyers of kings. Now, there was a five-year period where I was getting my tonsils buttered and my insides pushed to my esophagus outside of my husband, but we made it. Glad I stayed. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad I stayed. Destroyers of kings. Clout chasing. Calling you out on the internet. And they all got these duck lips too. Destroyers of kings. You guys got to realize where you're putting your energy. All right. So when men like this stop, stop, uh, talk about it. All right. That what he's realizing is that he's dealing with destroyers of kings. And you're put destroyers of kings. We're putting our hope that the destroyers of kings are and we put our energy into them. We're hopeful that these women are going to love us and, and protect us and protect our ego. But guess who we're they're worried about protecting themselves. All right. And you supposed to put your life on the line for her. Are we kidding? Are we kidding? By the way, she said, I spoke for all women. And I think I can speak for all women when I say this. Women want somebody that's respected. I have to be with somebody that has some type of respect. I don't need nobody feeling like they could play with you and they could try to talk to me and it ain't going to be no consequence. Man, please, I wouldn't be caught dead with this woman out in public. Man, she going to get me killed in my car jack. <laughs> Are you crazy? What do you think this shit is? Uh, 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 chivalry? What do you think this is? Uh, 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 unhand my female. Unhand her on guard. All right. Walk 10 steps and paces and turn around. What? <laughs> you going to get your throat sliced. I need to feel like no one's allowed to talk to me. <sighs> By Justin, like, man, please. Thank you. Thank God for the internet, man. All right, we got a couple more here, a couple more here. One of my clips is gone. All right, this is the woman here. Don't give your energy to women. This woman is named Jazzy. She's been featured on this show quite a few times. Jazzy is the girlfriend of Cam Newton. She's a woman that was probably saying, I wouldn't do this, I wouldn't do that. She, Jazzy is like this woman. Before she met Cam Newton, Jazzy would be like this woman. All right, I ain't shaving this and I ain't cooking nothing. And, and then she met Cam Newton and she changed her shit. And she's going to even admit that. This is why you don't give your energy to women directly. You actually work on yourself. And then sometimes women, most times women fall in line with you. Now, it ain't going to be the most attractive women for you. It ain't going to be the baddie. It ain't going to be the duck lit girl. It won't be the girl with the best ass. It's going to be a woman that falls in line. It's none fall in line and you, you ain't losing. But then Jazzy has switched it up and she's become more submissive. She allowed, she, remember, she was on J, uh, something, Shan Booty's podcast, Body, whatever her name is, Shan Body, and talking about I'm feminine and I'm in my soft girl era and I met Cam and I cook him bacon and eggs at three in the morning. Listen to what she says here. Listen to what she says here. And again, when I play these, I'm not saying she's wrong. I want you to listen to what she says. So y'all don't know, I'm the third one and this is his sixth child. Mm. Someone said, ooh. <laughs> well, it couldn't have been me. All right, so Larissa put that pressure on you. I could never, 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 I
it's hard to hear. It's hard to hear. But I'll translate it because she's talking in, in the menstrual uh, circle here. What do they call it? The menstrual show? She's doing the menstrual circuit, you know, only talking to people like her. All right, but anyway, most people do this. All right, she's a menstrual comedy comic. I don't even know what she's on the stage here. Be seen, not heard. Be gone, my thought. All right, but uh, anyway. She basically said what I just said she, she would say. All right, so essentially, she was this woman. And I won't do, and I ain't going to do this, and I'm not going to do that. Okay, she said, I, she said this was me prior to meeting Cam Newton. Then she said a lot of women say they wouldn't do this and they wouldn't do that with these guys out here. So she then acknowledged that other women say the same thing, a.k.a. like this woman. I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to cook tuna. I'm a DJ. I got a career. Then she said, you're going to do it. The chitlin circuit. That's what I meant. Thank you. The chitlin circuit. Then she said, yeah, you say that now until a $100 million man put pressure on you. Mm. What? Again, you guys don't, you guys are fighting the battle or trying to get these women to get in submission and blah, blah, blah. And a lot of them are for sale. Transactional. She said, I was like that. Until the highest bidder came up and he bought. I would never be the sixth. I would never produce the sixth child for a ashy, dusty ass ninja. So she was on the internet prior to this, before she met Cam, talking that shit. I would never do this. I would never do that. And then she said, yeah, but a hundred dollar man, hundred million dollar man showed up. And here I am. Now, here's the problem with this. (laughs) The comments roasted her. Yep. Here's the problem with this. This is now what we call the, yep, hypergamy, highest bidder, transactional love. Uh, uh, did he, guys, is he paying for this? Yes. This is, is he tricking her? Like tricking, ninjas be like, he's, he's tricking. This is tricking. This is what you pay for. You get what you pay for. She was for sale. She said, I wasn't done it until the highest bidder came up. Mm. And then I'm going to have his baby. I'll be the third baby mama. (laughs) Now, the problem is, what's going to happen here? Give it some time, and she's going to then revert back. Revert back to her original self. Three years, four years, five years. She examined the cost. Hey, what is this? Okay, uh, uh, where's Elon Musk, uh, the Elon Musk thing right quick? Because then, when that shit runs out and it wears off, then she's going to be dragging him in court like the previous exes have. It's going to wear off because when you pay for something, the shit wears off. It's going to wear off. And she's going to be back in here dragging a $100 million man back in the court. And she knows about the $100 million, don't she? She sure did know. She sure did let that hmm, marinate in her brain. And she said, well, if it don't work off, Work out, at least I'm going to get on some good child support. $10,000, $20,000 a month. Boom. For sale. Transactional. Relationships are becoming transactional. And women are waiting out here. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that until you show up. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, it's for you. Okay, all right. All right, what? You got a good car? You got a good house? Okay, I'll do it. For sale. Thotting and plotting. Now, this is the frustration is the frustrating frustration is a lot of guys are wasting a lot of energy trying to prove me and themselves that this ain't happening, <laughs> right? Hold on for a second. I don't know what happened. All right, over here, I messed up my screen. You're trying to prove that this is not happening, and they're out here admitting it. They're out here trying to tell you what time it is. They're out here, right here. And so shout out to the women who don't be on Instagram. I'm not like them, coach. It ain't like that. Here, here's another one. I need you to be somebody out here. I need you to be Suge Knight out here in these streets. You can't just be regular Joe. AKA, this is a pay, this is a transactional. Safety, security, and all of that shit. Right? You gotta be that nigga out here pushing weight. All right, you gotta be the ninja out here. You gotta be Frank White. <laughs> you gotta be Frank Lucas ass ninjas out here. Come on, man. You gotta be Tupac with a degree. 
All right. As soon as you show up, well, I guess I'll do this. And you're out here trying to waste your energy, trying to some, please these people and all this stuff. And in the back of their mind, they got what they they're looking for out here. This is getting tougher and tougher. It's getting tougher and tougher. Um, you know, you, you guys want to tell me that this is not happening. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you here. Uh, let's see here. Last one. And then we'll get to the super chats here. Way over four hours. This is a little ling ling here. This ling ling says, I'm going to tell the truth, the brutal truth. I'm going to tell simps the brutal truth. And uh, this is a woman that men, many men pay to watch on Twitch, I suppose. Let's play the clip. When it comes to finding women, I'm just going to tell you guys straight. Um... Oh, no. Maybe spend less time on Twitch. Uh Uh-oh. And on female streamer chat. Oh, no. Oak. (laughs) She said, Oak. Oh, no, man. She's like, she knew she was losing a bag right there. (laughs) She glitching. And her thing is going crazy. Bad advice up here. Look at this right here. Her Twitch, she like her Twitch simps. Her Twitch simps. She like, I'm about to lose a bag. (laughs) Maybe spend less time on Twitch. Oh, no. Oh, no. And on female streamer chat. Oh, damn. She said, oops. Oak. (laughs) (laughs) She said, stop chasing, Ninja. Why don't you go be somebody? See, a lot of people go, a lot of people ain't going to hear that. She ain't saying don't watch me. She said, go do something. Stop simping. Stop trying to be in here, trying to win me over. When I'm out here, use, I'm out here using motherfuckers. All right, you trying to win me over with love. <laughs> All right, here we go right here. Oh, <laughs> oh. Why don't you go be somebody? She didn't say, go chase other women. She didn't say that, did she? She like, but you out here simping on me. You out here simping, trying to win me over with more, more, more gifts, more cash, more, more Twitch cash or whatever they do over there. She said, get a damn life. Go be somebody, create somebody, go get some hobbies, be who you need to be. All right, go get some goddamn money and stop giving it to me. <laughs> all right, no ling ling in the background. Okay, all right, I missed an opportunity. All right, go find some peace. All right, because simping ain't it. <laughs> All right, here we go right here. She basically saying, she basically saying, the money you're giving me, you're getting nothing back. You're getting nothing back. Now, if you're getting something back, that's a different story. You're getting something back or you're avoid getting something, that's a different story. But she like, y'all ain't getting nothing from me, so, (laughs) oops. (laughs) Anyway, man, go be somebody. Don't give them your energy. All of that attention and energy she getting, she like, it's a waste for you, man. You wasting y'all life out here, wasting your money. You giving me attention and energy and all that shit. You can put it into something else and be somebody, but you out here. Oh, I want to hear her say that one more time. And then we'll do all the super chats. I don't even know who this little woman is, but this woman got to be goddamn 95 pounds. And she probably four foot 11. Okay. Just my type. Time on All right. And on female streamer chat. Oak. Oh, no, not Oak. <laughs> and they're going to be right back. <laughs> Try to talk about these hoes. All right, here we go. <laughs> What's her name? Code Miko? Code Miko. All right, shout out to Code Miko. Anyway, 
it's not even it's not even throw take out Tuesday. It ain't sorry, take out I always say take out Tuesday. It ain't even take out Thursday out here. And we giving her Ling Ling some props here. All right, so don't give her your energy, guys. To what's happening here? That's the that's the ultimate point. Anyway. <laughs> she looked at her income going. <laughs> All right, let me get in here. Shout out to uh, Tony Terrell. He says, just a gift for you, coach. That's all it is. That's all it is. And it's a donation to the baby. It's a love gift. Todd C says, and that's you. And that's you. All right, Dewanis Alexander said, for the baby mama terrorist fund. Appreciate you. Shout out to Valet Waste Disposal. He says, thanks for speaking on ego when it comes to sex. Thank you, man. Shout out to you, and that's a co-sponsorship. Hey. Uh, ladies right here, ladies, um, ladies, I wish they, they wouldn't do this. It would be kind of like Ling Ling snitching on themselves. Most of the women you're having sex with, most of you ain't doing nothing. You're doing nothing. Women aren't going to tell you this because it would be similar to Ling Ling telling you the truth. But if most women told the truth, your ego is connected. I'm throttling her and I'm here. Be, what, what do they, what y'all, what, what do y'all need to say? Y'all be beating it up, and I be doing, I'm going to tell you, and women aren't going to tell you this, you ain't doing shit in there. Now, there are rare exceptions where they get off, but it's it's not all the time. Now, you think you doing something because she ouchie and uchi, she acting, right? She acting, but if you ain't seeing no squirt, <laughs> if she dry up in the middle of it, this is a family show. She dry up in the middle of it. She seemed disconnected. She laying there like a Carl's Jr. star. You ain't even touching that bottom. If she ain't busting three, four, five, six, seven, just. just. <laughs> she should be busting before you even just. Never mind. This is a family show. Before you slide in there, she busts as soon as she get up in there. I feel it in my belly button, daddy. You a monster, daddy. You beating the brakes off of this, Ninja. If she can breathe, you ain't beating it up. She need to be, she need to fall asleep after you beat it up. She need to be on the bed laid out like this. That's beating it up. Toes curling. Curling toes. That's beating it up. If you ain't doing that and she just letting you two flip her over here, you sh you doing this, You she trying to, <laughs> let me get, hold on. She like, let me get on top. She, you ain't doing nothing. But a lot of guys ain't taking a woman there. You ain't doing a damn thing with them strokes. Anyway, <laughs> it's crazy. But dudes be like, I'll be in there. If you done put her through 45 minutes and she just like, <laughs> all right, this is a family show. You need, she need to go to sleep. That's beating it up. But you be like, yeah, here we go right here. And you bust. As soon as you finish up, she tap you on the shoulder. Good job. She run to the bathroom, take her piss, come back out, start doing stuff. She got her book out. She got her, uh, she got her uh, Amazon tablet. She put her glasses on. She just started reading again. You didn't do nothing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you the perfect fit, baby. It fit just perfect. Oh, I like it. Please. Yep, you need her. <laughs> Just rise back. In. She should look away from you so you, she, you don't see her old face. But if she just staring at you, looking at you, and you, you on top of her with the beads of sweat coming down your eyeball, and she just like. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to tap out. Essentially, she needs to tap out. Anyway, she didn't got she didn't finish with you and got on the Peloton or the treadmill. She like, let me run this off real quick. After she done, she get up and she start mopping the kitchen floor. Oh shit, I forgot to mop the floor. You ain't did Nathan. <laughs> All right, anyway, Ghost J, a revelation. X X's use your ego against you. Three o four facts, and they're they're trained to do this. O'Neill. Says, I called the 9-11 George Jefferson. You moved on up to the east side. <laughs> All right, shout out to, did I get Dr. Thunder? He says, like laying on softballs. I got Dr. Thunder. We're going to get everybody brought here. 
And uh, can I can I tell you one more? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you one more. This is a family show. If she don't, if she don't, okay, this might be too much. This might be too much. If she don't grab, okay. If she don't grab her legs back and make sure you get in there and reach that bottom, she should grab her toes back like this and wrap her legs around you and inch up so you can start to get that bottom. You ain't doing nothing. You ain't doing it. Like she, she's trying to, you should reach another, you should reach another level in that tunnel. I'm trying to be a keep it a family show. She should try to let you reach the other level of that tunnel. You should feel another level that should bring you there within seconds. <laughs> she going to wrench around. She going to grab back like this and crawl and pretzel child support. The dig the child support position. Cause you about to give, you about to pass some DNA. You about to pass a DNA. And now, this right here ain't gonna do it. That that right there, that's all for fun. That's all for show. That clapping shit, that's some rookie pornography stuff. Y'all been watching too much prom. The real is when she get close. She, you're close, and she get close as close as possible. And you go all the way down to that bottom. That right there is what she wants. She don't need that. Now, some women need the cheeks clap and all of that stuff. In the bit. Some women, but that ain't it. It's the child support position. That right there is when she got it. That's it. It ain't going to be much moving. You ain't going to be able to move much. There ain't going to be much stroking happening. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit where you can barely move. That's when you got her. <laughs> right here. She go right here. Yeah, balls deep, balls. Yep, that is the real. That's when you know that's your girl forever. You can access this woman anyone right there. Anyway. Anyway, let me see here. All right, uh, anyway. Let's keep right here. Ninjas at work. This is a family show. I'm going to have to cut this out. I'm going to have to cut this part of the stream out. All right, where are we at here? But ninjas be like, I'll be giving her the monster stroke. She'll let you. She'll let your ego. She'll let your ego. She'll let your ego feel that you're doing something out there. You really getting it out here, daddy. You really taking care of it. Yeah, daddy. But that ain't it. Anyway, it's crazy. All right, we going too far here, man. We doing. Hey, yo, chill, son. Hey, yo. All the young men and the virgins are like. <laughs> All right, here we go right here. I didn't say it, YouTube. I didn't say it. Ladies, if you want me to, tr if you've never been there, ladies, because ninjas be getting in there trying to punish you and damage you. They're like, I'm a damage to Puna. All right. But if you want me to show you, what I'm talking about, because I know you haven't had it. Let me know after class. Uh, form a line in the back of the class, and we can show you what we're talking about. But anyway, all right, let me stop here. All right, anyway. But you're going to bust in relative short order if this happens. You're not going to be in there long. All right, anyway. <laughs> all right, here we go right here. You reached another tunnel of depth. You didn't win in the submarine. You didn't win in the submarine. You didn't hit another or you like, where's this at? Roar! <laughs> anyway, here we go right here. Let me stop. All right, you didn't reach another depth. You didn't went down there in the deep blue sea. Yo, little man done went down there. He was like, oh, it's great in here. It's so comfy and cozy and moist. And then he gonna reach an area. He's like, where is this? I've never been down. Roar! Mm. <laughs> Let me stop. Now you on child support. Now you having a baby. 
Now you want child support, and now your whole future is ruined. Because <laughs> you, cause you're going to be like, pull me up. And you can't pull up fast enough. You're gone. Anyway. <laughs> you in the trench. You in the trenches. You done fell down. You done fell down. He said, hey, this is Dylan. You down there. <laughs> oh, let me stop, man. I'm done with y'all, man. I'm done with y'all. I need to stop this, man. This is terrible. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, you also, you the pappy now. Did you just say? I'm the pappy. All right, where we at? Thick thigh, thick anime thigh says you're doing God's work and saving men for self-destruction. Keep it up. JC <laughs> says, I had to throw in the tip. I got that one already. Well, I threw in the tip. JC says, Lions versus Bears this Sunday. Coach, what's up for the weekend? What's up, nigga? What's up for the weekend, nigga? All right, shout out to Dewa- uh, Dwayne Rose. Says, CGA, very, very practical. He trims the fat. Yeah. Man, I try to make life simple. Trim the fat. Some things I can't worry about. Shout out to Random Thought. Says, my nana had her last born from another man while she was married to granddad. Protect your meat. Free agent lifestyle for life. Yep. I mean, guys, y- your grand is out here doing some stuff. Shout out to JC says, I'm sure Max already clapped that big mouth friend. Uh, yep. And D, shout out to Catfish Tales. Ladies, it's not a dad bod. It's a father figure. All right. Cali West Miami. But coach, did she say short Kings win the Israel? She did, but she was trying to distract him. Okay. Uh, Callie West Miami, she said, uh, like, short kings matter on his shirt. I felt she was trying to lob him the punani since tall, goofy guy couldn't seal the deal. That could have been possible. But I think she was uncomfortable, maybe, possibly. All right, Dennis B says, the no, the number of simps is too damn high. All right, and people do think paying money is simping, which that could be your own particular thing. But again, I say all men pay, and sometimes you can – Sometimes sometimes y'all doing way too much when you could have paid, but that's neither here nor there. Again, I don't I don't tell everybody to do that. Right. I've found a way to find out. I'm like, boy, there's a quick even even girls, you don't think so. You're like, because y'all ninjas to be out here don't want to pay 50 50 for the dinner. I'm out here like y'all, y'all wasted y'all energy with these women. Because this woman will open up like a whole flower in, in June or in, in April. This woman will open up like a whole flower in April if you pay a dinner. I mean, it's just, all right. But you want to argue with a bitch. All right. Anyway, drinks on me. Here we go. And she done opened up. <laughs> I'm like, y'all, y'all wasting too much time and energy going back and forth. Well, man, don't have to pay. And y'all equal. Uh-uh. Here we go right here. How's that? How's that chicken fettuccine? Good. How's the spaghetti and meatball balls at the old spaghetti factory? Just like that. Two drinks, back at the crib, in there. Out, done, go home. Here's another $200 in the Uber. Bye. Mm. <laughs> All right, anyway, gone. But you done wasted 50% of the money for you to go home with a dry whistle and a head pack. Talking about you held it down. <laughs> You didn't hold nothing down. You got nothing at the end of the day. All right. Anyway, Jesus. It don't take much out here. Y'all did just try to save money on some little shit. Come on, man. Spaghetti factory. Where we meet? Spaghetti factory. Yo, spaghetti factory. Here we go. Order anything you want. Here it is right there. Have some wine. Right to it. (laughs) The bar is low. But, you know, if, if, if that's not where you are financially, if that's not where you are financially, you have to, you have to get over that hump, because that hump, that shit is that hump is a my, it's an eye opener, it's an eye opener. But y'all ninjas can argue on the internet about who's tricking. Have at it. Why, why you arguing? I'm balls deep. Quit. Mm. She didn't open up like a flower in 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 the uh in the flower rose garden. But you over here, these ninjas out here messing the game up. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Mm. All right, they making it souls. We can't talk to them. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Mm. <laughs> I love them old pimp ninjas. All right, I got some time today. Them old ninjas and everything stems from pimping. No, nah, man, what you do is you keep the bra broke and don't let a hoe keep a dime. All right, okay. Mm. All right. 
Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you keep the bra broke, desperate, desperation on your ass, and then what you do is you progressively give her less and less and less because she don't deserve a damn thing. All right, and you keep that bra begging for your, okay. Mm. I'm like, them ninjas be cracking me the hell up. And I'm like, just say you broke. Just say you broke. Enough said. Just say you ain't got no damn money. That would be an easier conversation. Then I can help you maybe point you towards some money. <laughs> All right. But what you're doing is making it cost me less and less on the other side because your broke ass don't want to pay. All right. Okay, good. Ninja, now it's $50. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mm. Now the woman is like, where's the next 50? Okay, it's 50. Here we go. And now next week, you talking to the same broad. Good luck following me up, sir. I already hit the deep blue sea. I already hit that abyss. Go ahead with your pound strokes after five and six conversations and all kind of conversations and texts and all kind of meetups where you come up dry. Have at it. Mm. <laughs> all right. The bitch, she, she should get part of the check and slip me a 20. Okay. Because my game tight. Just say you broke. And maybe we can have a real discussion about where the money at. All right, let me stop. Because the money out here, Ninja. But you out here chasing these bras around trying to get it on the cheap. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, these old pimps got to go. All right, shout out to JC says she red-pilled her entire fan base in 10 seconds. Indeed. Uncle Mel says squishy, squ squashy real quick. Real quick, Sam Prince, did I get you? Damn, I'm far behind. Sorry. It's a five-hour show today. It's Friday. It's Friday. All right, shout out to Sam Prince. Oh, sorry. El Santo says something for the pot coach. Thanks for the extra content. Rent is due. Goat out here. Shout out to you. Your rent's due, motherfucker. Uh, Sam Prince, coach, the power structure doesn't like you because you're creating winners. The scariest thing for them is when men opt out of the illusion. I got rid of TV and all subscriptions. You're teaching. Your teachings are one of the only things I watch, and I know I'm not alone. Shout out to you, man. Yeah, man. I'm I'm ruining the fantasy for a lot of people. Um, It says right here, Macaroni Tony, brother, you are with it. You are describing the butterfly effect. Change one thing in the past creates an entire different future. One thing. One thing. All right, one thing. And he says right here, uh, title was true. Even in service, the repair shop clerk told me I can. T okay, I, I already got that one. All right, PayPal is probably crazy right now. All right, shout out to y'all. All right, I got canceled on it. Oh, I guess. I got canceled on it. All right, but y'all lowering, y'all really making the game messed up out here. I, I know these women are wild out here, but y'all messing up. Y'all making it too easy. Kevin G says, uh, Coach, that's a fact. I'm a 37-year-old, and I'm a future legacy ninja. I already got that, brother, right here. And I got, like, 10. So, so stay, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So, ooh, this is crazy. All right, shout out to our brother, JL, says, if Coach doesn't go through his trial, if Coach didn't go through his trials and tribulations in the past, he wouldn't be here today to lay out the traps and the blueprint, Coach, in the future. He says, would you do a video reminding the fellas how they benefit from feminism socially and financially? Yep. I mean, at, at some point, you'll realize that it freed us. You guys got to think about it a second. But what, 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 what you want is a fantasy, right? Men, men want fantasy. It's sad. Shout out to Marlon says, as a mental health therapist, I can greatly, he says, I greatly appreciate you preaching the truth out here. You are the therapist to the therapist. Keep grinding, brothers. And it's good to hear the therapist, the real therapist that are out here that can see what I'm saying. And uh, sometimes they can't say it. They might lose their license. All right, so I can be able to say what they want to say. Warren says, Coach, I recently had two SBs ask me if we could be in a relationship after we clearly establish boundaries and guidelines up front. It's so funny how they always try to change it up. That's a bait and switch. After reiterating to the first that I was not looking for exclusivity, she said, it's okay. She'd rather keep me in her life than not. He said the other one sent a long message wishing me well and says I sh if I should change her mind, she'll be there. I told her good luck and bye. I'm not changing my mind. 
He says, don't let these women try to switch up on you. All women bait and switch. And matter of fact, uh, we might talk about that on Sunday. And join us on Sunday on Locals, CoachGregAdams.Locals.com. Funny Mindset, Patreon.com, backslash Coach Greg Adams. Link's in the description box. But the bait and switch is what women use. So even if she establishes that, it's not about the money, or it is about the money. They're going to switch it. KT King, good morning, CGA. There's a difference between a woman who was married and a woman who was a wife. There's a difference between a woman who wants kids and a woman who wants to have a family. Discernment and knowing your value is and your worth is vital. That's a great point. I wish we can repeat that. You're absolutely right. Sister Saturday tomorrow. KT says, please consider doing a stream on TJ from Child Support is Fraud. Okay, he says right here uh, to discuss the, how to beat the, I, I can't really do it, but I know what you mean. Um, I can't really do it. Plus, because I don't have guests. So, but in the future, I will. My show is a solo show with my one-man band. Shout out to Nick. Dr. Nick, he says, great video on setting boundaries and standards earlier regarding destiny and male wisdom, bruh. Dr. Nick Purser, the consultant surgeon. The consultant's surgeon. Shout out to Dr. Nick. All right, but set boundaries. Women hate boundaries. They will call you all kind of names when you set boundaries. This is a good thing. Even if you don't want to pay for dinners, set that boundary. That's healthy. All right, but what you don't do is beg and come up with a way around the shit. All right, you find a woman that will deal with 50-50. All right, but, and then come on the internet and complain about the men that have another boundary. All right, boundaries are real. Kayla says women who want, women want to say we have a DNA testing. Well, if a man has a child with a woman who is with a promiscuous past, promiscuous, it says right here, and he asks for a paternity test to ensure the child is his, would she be offended? The answer is yes. She might even fight it in some states. She might even fight it. So she'll say you can ask for a paternity test, but when you ask for one, she might make you thump, jump through hoops and hurdles. Like she'll say, fight me for it. This is abuse. Shout out to Kaylin says, uh, no, Michael, R, just a little tuition from the PhD. You're giving us on 304s. He says, curious if you ever got to look in the Aldarian psychology that dismantles all this trauma victim BS. The Courage to be Disliked book is the best book I've ever read and it goes into it deep. Seems like you kind of lived this by yourself already. He says, Headway app, good too for summaries. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, uh, The Courage to be Disliked. I kind of have that. If you were in the earlier part of the stream where I said, I don't answer shit and I don't do nothing. Then just be like, you hide, you doing something. Ninja, I've been doing this all my life. I'm a ninja. I'm a ninja ninja. Like, I don't have this courage to be light like that. All right, but a lot of people do. Or you got to be like and accepted and answer to everybody. No, hell no. Sizzle says, y'all, Bob, what's up for the weekend? I'll be catching up on the episodes that I missed while pulling in OT salute to you, coach. The courage to be disliked. I'm going to look into that. But a lot of people have fear of missing out. FOMO is a disease. FOMO is a disease. Caitlin says, I feel it. I find it to be insecure on a part of a woman to ask who hurt you when a man voices his criticism on them. Women are not perfect and they need to get over themselves. This is true. Uh, women do hurt. When a woman asks who hurt you, they're acknowledging that women hurt men. They just don't care. Uh, shout out to, oh, Caitlin says, ladies, be selfless and help your man get his nut off. It is important because he can get any woman pregnant, including you. Well, women who fake sex pleasure, that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. They're, they're feeding your ego as to say you're good at sex and you're the only one and it's so big and, uh, you know, it's a perfect fit. But this is all lies. Your girl should be uchi ouchy or trembling <laughs> or she lying. Some women are bad at sex. They're insecure. Some, oh, one more thing. A lot of women are thinking about themselves more than you or other things. Like, um, shout out to Dale Davis says, the extended Friday show. I'm going to tell you a secret. While you're having sex with them, even your wife, it doesn't matter who she is, she's thinking about what she looks like. She, she's not really thinking about you. All right? She's like, do I have a double chin? What, do, what does my face look like? What does he think my face looks like when he's on top of me? Is it good? Does he feel it? Am I wet enough? Um. Uh, uh, what does my stomach look like? Can he see the cellulite on my booty? 
Does he like cellulite on my booty? Is my booty big enough? Is it little? Is it too small? Are my titties nice? Does he like my titties? Does, does he not like my titties? Does he like my A cups? Right? Am I sweating? Why is he sweating on me? It's too hot in here. It's too cold. What am I going to do after this? Am I going to leave booty crumbs on his white sheets? Am, am I period? Am I, am I spotting? Am I bleeding? <laughs> I got to fold laundry. <laughs> Does it smell? Does it stink? Does he think it stink? Why he ain't putting his face down there? I mean, <laughs> yo, they be thinking 150 things. You know what you thinking about? Not trying to bust. That's what you thinking about. You trying to not finish this up. <laughs> like you trying to be like, oh boy, this is the best place I've been all day. I hope I can extend this shit out as long as possible. Anyway. I wonder if he's going soft. Is it my fault? Why is he going soft? Why is he slowing down? Why he ain't going fast enough? How come he ain't finishing? Why he going so long? Why he didn't? Why he finish up? Did he bust inside of me? Where is he going to bust at when he wants to bust? <laughs> Whole time. Man, and you out here thinking about these women. One thing I'm going to tell you. Stop thinking about what they thinking about. If you actually had time to think about what they think about, you wouldn't get anything done. They mind all over the place. Stop thinking about what women are thinking about. I got to leave after this. Wish you would hurry up. I got a bowling event to go to with my coworkers. Why is he going so long? I didn't think it would be this long. I didn't think it would be that short. When he busts, am I going to know? Do I need to dodge it? Am I going to drink it down? Am I going to let him go? Is my rent paid? I forgot to put gas in my car. <laughs> and you out here trying to put your ego in the clap of their cheeks. They all over the place, man. Anyway. <laughs> and a, a woman in here said truth. This is the truth. My work husband, who I really wish I was in these guts. Am I going to make it to my nine o'clock? Ninja, am I going to make it in time for, to, for my husband or my boyfriend to show up? My phone bill. I mean, man, they ain't thinking. They really ain't thinking about y'all. They think about themselves way too much to be thinking about y'all. All right. Do I want to let him bust inside? Do I want to have this man's baby? Why is he going? Why? Why he can't keep it up in the condo? <laughs> All right. Shout out to our brother. Uh. Monstar says that place is called the waters below the waters below the waters below ninja. Some of y'all ain't been down there. All right. I need to fart a lot of that. Why does he, is it, is he, this dude's nasty? Why does he want to bust on my feet? I mean, come on, man. Look, shout out to the coach gang. They kicking me off the stream, man. <laughs> we out of here. Have a good weekend. Have your bell money. Wear your condoms. And also, also, protect yourself at all times, man. And pull out if you don't wear your condom. And keep your money. We out of here. Peace.
It's barbecue in there. 